All right, try not try not to cuss like a sailor for at least the first thirty seconds. Fine, I just won't say anything because they're going to ban us, and I won't get that thirty-five cents in ad revenue. Not say words. <laughs> no, words are dumb, man. I fucking hate words. Yeah. Just oh, words. I just did it! No! I just oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I just told you wasn't not even me. It. Wasn't oh, even me. No, no, no. That's I'm funny. Sorry. Actually, I, I think it might not count because, like, I don't, I don't see that we're live right now. So I oh, think we're, we're okay. Oh, well, that's not uh, I don't, that's where yeah. we're live. Uh, hold on here. Let's I don't see, see it on your on your page here. here. Hold on, let me go back to content here. Okay, it says oh, it says live, but it's not showing up, huh? All right, uh, what did I do? What did I do wrong not, this time? Oh, there it is. Now it's there. Oh, okay. it's showing up. Okay, it just delayed. Yeah, it popped in there now. All right, it says excellent collection connection. I'm we're, yeah, we're excellent speak- collection. Yeah, just just a heads up, we're not going to speak much English today. Just if you guys are expecting, I, yeah, you, man, I was tripping up. over myself. This is a weird day already. I don't know why. Okay, so I'm looking at my camera right now on the previous screen, and the color looks fine. But I look at me, and I look hella oversaturated still. Even uh, do um, I look oversaturated? You guys on the stream? Because I, I know uh, uh, old Ox over there don't see it. But I'm looking at the screen, and his picture looks perfect. Like his color tone is perfect. I look like a goddamn tomato. And don't get me wrong. I know. I know. I'm like a fat ass with high blood pressure and everything. So I'm gonna look more tomatoey than him. But I mean, I don't know. I look like extra tomato. Is it? I don't know. What do I, I don't you know what I could do though? You know what I could What's do? That? I forgot. I have the power of right clicking and going into filters. What? Oh my god! Are you gonna color correct? I had a filter on. Watch. You Ready? Goob. Ready? Wait for it. Three, two, one. Fixed. Wow. Look at that. You see the difference? Look on. Uh, oh, actually, you probably can't see, huh? No, I don't. Well, I mean, yeah. I'll see it on YouTube eventually, but I had a fucking filter. Wah, wah. I didn't realize. Oh, I yeah. Did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I see. Last, it's like, yeah. So the last like wah, 20 streams wah. we've done, I've looked like a, a tomato because I must have corrected for the old camera that I had. Yeah. And then when I put this camera back on, I didn't. I didn't. Really ha. So now we both look like human beings. Wow. Nice. Isn't that amazing? Nice. Hello, Blue Barrow. Hello, Mech what up? Hello, Hunter. Hunter what, how do I say that? Meyer? Hunter Meyer. Hunter Meyer. Would be my guess. Would be Meyer. Meyer. Hunter Meyer. And then we got Jeremy Wolf, uh, Wolford. And Mech- Mechberg was the first person in here, by the way. I think he gets the same right. place for chat, at least. All right. Beep, let beep, me, beep. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Do I got the still? Yeah, I got that one. I don't have the beep, 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 beep thing you have. I well, have mine's just like a cuss. It's like a cuss filter button on my on my mixer. I need that. Hey, what, what do you guys what do you guys think of the new camera angle? I call it uh poor barnacles because I can't afford a third monitor, so I just oh, put the camera good, where the monitor used to be. I mean, hey, good. hey, right? Make make uh, lemonade, right? If if you have all That's you right. guys lemons, make lemonade. So I'm missing the screen. I'm gonna use that space for a camera and a light, and I think it looks a little better. So I have to tell myself that though, because if I don't, I'll I'll be sad that I don't have a third monitor because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I have rage and OCD. And it gets really bad the more stressed you are. And I've never been more stressed in my entire life. I'm not going to tell you guys why, but you, if, you, if you're curious, go over to Patreon if you want to see like why life is failing for me. Anyways, um, I know. Isn't that a hook, right? See, Bar- <laughs> will Barnacle survive? No, That's but right. um, but yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I got that my OCD is so bad now because of the stress and everything in my environment. Like every little thing not having symmetry is like messing with me bad. Like, I'll look at bookends now. And if one is, like, four inches over versus the other side, I have to get up and move it. Like, <sighs> it just drives me absolutely batshit. And I've always kind of been like that, but it's like I can tolerate it. But now I'm to the point where there's certain things I just can't tolerate. And so one that's been killing me lately is I took the dead screens off my desk, put the two new screens up because I couldn't afford a third screen. I'm still trying to sure. figure out if yeah. I can find a way to do it. Um, but because there's a lack of spot for a third screen, I'm like, well, that's great because I can just put my stereo equipment over there. But then I'm like, but then I'm like, fuck, because I have monitor, monitor, and then something that's not a monitor, and I'm sitting right dead center, and it's like seriously, like just all all I can do is look over into the void where there was a monitor, and it's like, (laughs) oh, it just drives me nuts, and it's like I have two four K screens, and they're fifty inches, like I can put everything I need on these screens if I just window them and put them in the right spot. But it's like I'm so used to things being over there that it's just it's throwing me off. I keep looking for shit over here on the monitor, and there's no monitor there. And so I'm trying to get used to like looking over here for it or trying to find it down here. So, but I think it's one of those things where it's just with time, if I just, if I just stick to it and I just force it, yeah, it'll become natural, it. right? It'll just become natural because everything will eventually. All right. Let's see. I'm going to send out our live stream link here. Copy a copy. I'm going to go put it over here. Okay. Apple vision pro hype dead. Dun, dun, dun. By the way, anybody in chat, did any of you drop 30? Well, not even $3,500 after taxes and warranty and shit. It's like 4,000. How many of you dropped four grand? on a vr headset that doesn't have much support for anything and no controllers i'm curious if we got anybody here we're not going to shame you directly we'll we'll do it behind your back 
Thank you, Christopher Rodriguez, for the nine ninety nine. He says, my friend Eli is in the hospital with pneumonia. Can you give him a shout out? Man, I hope your friend Eli gets better soon. That's shitty. Pneumonia is not fun. E- Eli, pneumonia is for poor people, bro. Get better. Yeah, right? Pneumonia is the worst. I used to... You know what? You know what? Fun fact. I used to get pneumonia every year. For 10 years, I got pneumonia every single year. Like, That's literally, like clockwork. Every year, I got it. Like, That's I couldn't right. avoid it. Then That's COVID comes along, and I have not gotten pneumonia since the beginning of covid like like because it changed my habits and how i interact with people and i'm way more conscious of like you know what i do like i don't like doorknobs and go to conventions and stuff and like it's like the toilet seat doorknobs so dude you remember i I don't know yeah no it's just funny you've been to events with me before right like you've gone to a couple events with me yeah and and you've seen like the shit that i'll do just for shock value right yeah like like i'll pick up a 3d print off a desk and just shove it in my mouth like if somebody 3d printed dentures (laughs) i'll stick them in my mouth and be like hey look remember you have a million people like booger touched it yeah. um also be that guy that's like oh a bitch won't lick that doorknob and i'm like bitch i will you know i was that dude yeah. for so long so it's like no wonder i got like a million <laughs> but right. but just covid coming along and scaring the absolute shit out of me like somehow has made it to where i have not had the only serious thing that i had was i got an eye infection um uh that caused me to go get antibiotics and then i found out i was allergic to antibiotics and so it caused me to have a full body breakout of hives and I had to go to the emergency room and they had to give me like prednisone and shit like that. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I've had any serious illness since the beginning of COVID. Like I've, I've had times where I felt sick and down nice. and like I have a cold and I've had like a little temperature here and there, but nothing that I would consider like a serious respiratory thing that required me to go get antibiotics. And I used to do that like every year. So, so I guess, I guess in the, in the world of glass half full, that's that's a good thing that came out of it, right? Is that I'm just a little bit more conscious about my uh, my surroundings, and when I see a surface, I don't run over and like start licking it, right? It's like I look at it, and I'm like, hey, you know, that could yeah. be like like even even uh, like unconsciously, I used to have habits where I just grab my toothbrush and just start brushing. You know, now I like rinse oh, it off under hot water. Oh, what happened? I touched something and it like unplugged How my camera. You? I guess. How dare you interrupt? How dare you interrupt the flow of this perfectly executed show that we work so hard for every week to carry out perfectly with no no technical difficulties? How dare you? <laughs> Here, just wiggle it. Did you try press enter? Well, hang on. It's gonna be broadcast. It's gonna be weird for a second. Yeah, you'll get it. That'd be fine. Just just make sure it doesn't bring up your camera's uh backlog of pictures and there's a whole bunch of weenie pics no, like, no cool. nothing like that as long as you don't do that dude i've i had that did i tell you the co- the close calls i've had throughout my youtube career i mean i believe it I've yeah had, i've uh, had some good ones i had a picture where i full up like posted a video on youtube with my wang in full view didn't realize it and deleted the video after it had like 13 views and wow. nobody said anything Wow. No, no, because i deleted it nobody could leave a comment <laughs> nobody was like on twitch nobody screenshotted it nothing and it was because it was in a reflection. I was in the shower and I didn't realize that you could see my reflection in the glass. And I was holding the camera like this. And it's like, you know, there's a window and then just wang. And so, yeah. so, so it does, you don't see it immediately. It's one of those things where it's like when you're watching it, you have to look for it. But then you, when you see it, it's like it's clear as day, right? It's hmm. like, you're like, holy shit. So only like 13 people saw it. Nobody screen captured it. And I deleted it. And I was like, I could not believe I dodged that bullet. Could not believe it. The other one was I actually opened my porn folder while on Twitch live streaming like Whoa. five or six years ago. No, man. That's, <laughs> that's why you don't ever do porn. display capture. Yep. For and for no, all you no, new no. streamers, don't ever, ever, ever have a display capture for exactly. as your like exactly. stream capture source. Windows. Capture Windows Unless only. I could say possibly, maybe, possibly if it's like no, I can't. I can't even say that. No, just don't do that. Don't do a display capture. It used to be that there were occasionally times where you would have to in order to capture like a gaming, right, like your gaming right. window or whatever. Yeah, like just like, capture the whole buffer. Yeah, because, you know, funny business with like uh, borderless windowed mode or something like that. But totally. man, don't just I highly recommend don't ever use a display capture. Yeah, Period. it was it, that 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 one was a really close call. But the cool thing was, is I was like live streaming and nobody came yet. Like it was like I just started the stream <laughs> and I was still setting things up and I clicked over to it. And then so Crazy, I quickly man. hit stop <clears throat> streaming. I had to go into the dashboard, delete it because it backs it up, right? It backs up the VOD. So I had to go in there, delete the VOD, and I lucked out and nobody watched the VOD because remember, as soon as you stop the stream, it posts the VOD. So somebody oh, yeah, clicked yeah. on it and screen captured it or downloaded it or whatever. But I managed to actually like delete it uh before that happened i was like oh my god man talk about dodging a bullet 
Um, but uh, but yeah, it's like I've had tons and tons of those right. calls like that. So I'm so I've gotten a lot more careful. Like like now when I live stream, oh, yeah. it's like it's like I only capture windows, and even then I don't feel comfortable doing screen capture. Like you'll notice, I rarely do screen capture. Yeah, uh, yeah. because I've also had t times where it wasn't my fault at all, where I actually got like a 24 hour ban on Twitch for shit other people did. So, oh yeah. Like a great example of this is I was reading PC setups Instagram. and I was scrolling Twitter, right? And I said, yeah. use hashtag or whatever, you know, Barnacle's PC setup or whatever, and I'll and I'll go pull up all your things and rate your things. So I'm scrolling through Twitter, and then next thing you know, it's just giant dong, giant dong, giant dong. As I'm scrolling because <laughs> people are just posting, yeah. posting, uh, you know, like the the most offensive porn possible, and and tagging it with that tag so it show up. So I had to really quickly like shut it off, switch over to the other thing. But by that time, it already been captured. Immediately, what does everybody do? Go start creating clips. So there was like a hundred clips within 10 minutes of this. And the thing that sucks on Twitch is as soon as somebody creates a clip, a lot of people don't know if you delete the VOD that the clip is associated with, the clip still survives because they copy yep, that segment of the video to the clip. Yep. Yeah. So, so if you go delete a, if you go delete a VOD and somebody created a clip from it, that clip's still there. Like you have to go find it and delete it. So I had to literally say, show me all clips that were created within the last 24 hours. And then like go through each one of them, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> uh but it's one of those things where it's like yeah the second that happened like everybody's first instinct was like oh god we got to record it we got to we got to record it <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's when i started like learn i'm like you know the people that are online it's like they, they don't always have your best interests at heart right it's like if a yeah. mistake happens they're like this is just so weird they don't connect in their brain that they're actually like hurting you by spreading that and giving the people the people that did it more of what they need to hurt you with but it's just the shock value of it. They feel like they have to. It's like an it's like an instinct, right? It's like I almost can't even blame them because it's like, would I do any different? Like if I was watching something and something absolutely crazy happened, would I not hit the clip button? Like, oh yeah, right. Yeah. So so it's like I don't really blame them for it, but I was like, boy, I really realized quick that man, if shit goes bad, people want to amplify that stuff as much as humanly possible to extract as much cringe value out of it as, <laughs> as they can. And you just gotta you just gotta accept it, right? It's just part part of doing business on the interwebs. Uh, yep. Here, let me post this over on the Facebook group. Um, oh, by the way, my son's birthday was yesterday. Turned 14. Hey, happy birthday. I am now the father of a 14-year-old boy. I cannot believe it. Whoa. Where did the time go, dude? Whoa. Like, I, remember, I remember holding this little bundle of joy. Just, you know, my hand would cover his entire bottom and half of his back while he'd be laying on my shoulder and just snoozing with him. And I'm like, this, this little tiny baby turned into, like, this kid that just runs around my house at, like, warp nine. <laughs> And I don't know how we managed to do it, but it's like me and my wife, we're both overweight people. And it's like, we somehow created a Kenyan child. How does that work? We cannot gain weight. We stuff ice cream chips like the doctors told us. He's like, he's underweight. So we're just now, now he finally caught up. Now he's at least in a percentile where it's like he's in the safe zone. But his metabolism is so fast and he never stops moving from the moment he wakes up, the moment he goes to sleep, he's never still. He will just run up and down the hallway. Like you can see wear marks in the carpet where he just runs laps around the house with his iPad playing race car sounds and trains and his imagination just runs wild. It's amazing to watch. Um, you know, I'll just be sitting in the room watching TV and I'll hear like, doo, doo, like, you know, playing in the YouTube video of a train. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be like, Ch -ch 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 -ch, come, come into the room. They go around the bed to the other side, into the bathroom, around next to the toilet, back out, you know, and then, and then I'll hear him go upstairs and around up on the floor. And then down, he creates like a whole track around the house where he basically mimics what's going on on the screen. And I'm like, dude, this is just awesome, man. I love seeing the world through his eyes. It's like such a treat. Like, and he's not like mm -hmm. any other kids. Like my son's on the spectrum, but he's super mm -hmm. high functioning. Uh, but he's it's it's crazy. It's like people think that like, you know, anytime they hear the word autism, they're like, oh, my God, you know, like, oh, poor you. Like your life must be difficult. No, in many ways, it's way easier in my case. No, I'm not saying that's like that for everybody. I do understand sure. that yeah, local there's different. autism, too, that can actually make it quite the challenge. But with Xander, it's like he does really good with school. He's really intelligent. He reads at a higher level than I do. His retention is amazing. Like he has almost photographic memory. Nice. Um, but but he is just so self-sufficient. Like that kid, he doesn't he he doesn't to throw tantrums. He doesn't complain. It's rare for him to complain about anything. Even nice. when he's sick, it's it's he'll be playing and running around with snot coming out of his nose in 104 degree temperature. It's like if he acts like he's if some if, if you see him being cranky you know something yeah. bad is wrong like like that's that's but he's always happy he's always doing stuff like his birthday yesterday uh you know my wife was really worried because we've been having financial troubles lately so you know we mm -hmm. had to kind of cut back on his birthday a little bit and only got him like a couple of gifts and everything <laughs> couldn't even remotely have even been bothered he got like he got like his little four his four little lego things 
and a couple gifts from some friends and stuff. And he was just like beside himself happy. He pulled out like his little Hot Wheel car yes, and running yeah, down the hallway. And he kept every five minutes, hey, this is the greatest birthday ever. Thank you so much. You guys are so awesome. And it like made my wife's heart just like melt. She because she was so worried. She was worried that like, you know, she was nah. letting him down. And it's like, no, you can give the kid a cardboard box, scissors, and tape. And he would just be <laughs> beside himself, right? I mean, he is he is way more about the act of, of, of giving and receiving than he is about the actual item itself. He's not one of those kids where it's like, oh, I want this toy. And then if it doesn't show up, they get they get mad. Right. Like we've all right. Been, right. I, yeah, I was like yeah, that right. When I was a kid, too. It's like, oh, man, all I wanted was a Nintendo. and You got me a bunch of socks. Um, But but he's not like that. Like, like if he wants something, he'll let you know that he wants it. But if you just say no or oh, no, we can't get that right now or no, it's, it's the end of it. Like he doesn't. Nice. He, you know, he just lets it go. And so I feel I feel really fortunate that, that we ended up with uh, with a child just like him. He's he's absolutely amazing. I love him to death. Although I will say that I'm scared to death that he's going to be driving in like two years. Like, like, <laughs> like that does that does scare me to death because one, I know he's super into race cars and he loves everything racing and he's going to have a lead foot. I can already tell uh. that. Um, <laughs> but but the other thing is is like I just still see him as a little kid. Like when I look at him, I don't see a young man. I see I see my little baby boy, right? And it's like so I start I'm starting to understand mm -hmm. how parents feel. Like that whole thing where it's like yeah. have a hard time letting go. It's like I never had that with my parents. They were like when I was 14, they were throwing my shit out on the lawn and trying to get rid of me. So it's like I never really had that experience. But now that I'm a, a parent myself, it's the other way around. I'm, I guess I'm having the more default parent experience. So it's like I can't ever see him leaving. Like I'm terrified of him like going out and starting his own life and getting his own job and his own house and everything, which uh -huh. he'll fully be capable of doing. Like he's very high functioning. And what I mean by high functioning is yeah. like unless he's really exhausted, like super, super exhausted. You probably mm -hmm. most people wouldn't know. They would probably just think that he's a he's a very excited, uh, just happy go lucky, hyperactive person. That that's what they would see, yeah. about, right? He doesn't he doesn't present with the standard like parroting and stuff. Like he only does that when he's really tired, where he'll start parroting and repeating things over and over again nonsensically. Um, but he can control it all. Like he he can completely like as long as he's not exhausted, he can present neurotypical, which is which is wild. Like a lot of kids can't do that that are on the spectrum, and he does it effortlessly. And and it's it's just it's just wild to see that like so so I think he's gonna be you know he's gonna adapt really really well, but it does scare me like as a parent like the world that he's going into, you know it's because like, I didn't want to send him to public school that's why yeah. I told him to school him right it's like I did not want to send him to public school because he's way too trusting yeah. number one, and he wants kids to he wants other people to like him like that's his biggest thing is it drives him nuts if he doesn't think somebody likes him, and so I know yeah. that that would be used to his disadvantage in school. And at the same time, I'm like, part of me is like, well, yeah, but that'll like him going through that experience will prepare him more for life, which I mean, in some ways it would. But the uh, the flip side of it is like, that really fucked me up to going through that experience. So why would I want to put him through that? So I'm more mm -hmm. of the opinion that I kind of want to I kind of want to take care of the guy, you know, for the rest of his life and be there and make sure that he doesn't have to worry about nothing. I don't think that's going to happen, sadly, because the world is a real place. But but that, that's what I'm yeah. shooting for as a parent. Welcome to Parent Talk this week. <laughs> Ooh, I know, man. Dude, it's it's just something that's and you know, too, because it's, it's like dude, you got married. It's it's like you instantly just have all these grown grown children around. Yeah. You. It's like how, how that's many, a, how that's many a whole, whole, whole different two, two girls, two, right? Uh, 13. Yeah, I think she's turning 14 in May and then 18. Oh no shit! Ugh. Fourteen. Yeah. That's got to be. That's got to be a rough. Both both girls. Yeah. So that's, that's. Which I mean, they're still people, right? But like, it's a whole different. Yeah. Like, well, you grew up with brothers, um, with brothers, right? Like, I I do have an older sister, but like, she's like what six years older than me. So like, the gap there is weird, right? So yeah. most of my like real formative years, she wasn't. She wasn't, you know, around. She was off doing her own thing. Gotcha. She so, yeah, she was. But yes, and there's some of that, you know, when I was younger and growing up and stuff. But like, through most of like my teenage years and stuff, like it was just my brother and I. And so, like, the biggest thing is, you know, one time, like this was years ago, but um, the older one, I can't, say, I can't call it a teenager anymore because now they're both teenagers. But um, the older one, um. Like it was like her first breakup, right? And yeah. she's like devastated. And I mean, everybody is. Let's be honest. Even, even yeah, yeah. Guys, but, I mean, they, but they hide it, but we go through this. Yeah. Like, and so I'm, I'm like, I take, I take my lady aside. I'm like, 
is this is this like a normal thing <laughs> to be for to be this to be this broken up about because like i don't want to i don't want to like downplay it or like like brush away the emotions that that she's having right. at the time right so I'm, i gotta check like is is she overreacting or is like is this like, like is this an appropriate is this a normal thing yeah i don't know yeah like you're gonna because you're gonna have to tell me because like i i don't know she's like yeah no this is like this is a girl thing i got this one like it's cool uh so because like yeah i didn't want to be like hey yeah. no it's no big deal like there's plenty of fish in the sea like you gotta you know i want to i want to engage with the emotions appropriately and stuff like because that shit does hurt i'm fucking man a couple bad heartbreaks and stuff in my time yeah. so like i didn't want to be like but just in general man girls are totally different totally different kind of mindset totally different problems that they deal with totally different social everything yep. is fucking different um people need to realize that man. hormones play a huge part and and oh, yeah. how you perceive the world and how you process things well and like their their social hierarchies and stuff mm -hmm. and like how they deal with each other and and deal with their own oh it's so weird yeah gaming maddie <sighs> rock said i have autism Very... myself and people don't know i have autism i'm high functioning yeah th that's a fun fact is you probably yeah. know somebody you may even be friends with somebody who's on the spectrum oh and never almost certainly it. Because most of them do not share. Yeah, heck, they might not even know it. They won't, they won't share it. Like, I, I knew a guy for 10 years before he felt comfortable enough to tell me he was on the spectrum. I had no freaking clue. Damn. Like, I saw this dude, like, he was literally my mentor. Like, he was literally my mentor for, like, 10 years at Microsoft. Yeah. And everybody thought he was an asshole. But I, I thought he was awesome. Like, he was very <laughs> intelligent. And he'd give me his time. Like, his time was precious to him. You could tell his time was really precious. But he would give me time. Yeah. And that, that, to me, told me that, you know, what he really thought. But he'd say shit like, yeah, you're getting fat. You need to lose weight. You look unhealthy. You know, you'd walk in the door. Or oh, you look out of breath from coming up the stairs. You need to eat better. Like, he'd, he'd just blatantly say shit like that. Well, I found out later he had Asperger's. I didn't know that. I had no uh, idea. He yeah, had rage, yeah. raging Asperger's. But everybody just saw him as, like, this mean person. But it turns out that he he was huge in my career. Like, he taught me a lot of really valuable things. He conducted a lot of my code yeah. reviews. He was the person that I went to to brainstorm things and, like, solve problems. Because he wouldn't bullshit you on anything. Like he was like, yeah. honestly, Asperger's can be a superpower if you leverage it correctly. Like, like if you if you get somebody with Asperger's and you put them in the right position, the thing is they have to enjoy what they're doing. That this is what I know. I'm not Asperger's myself, so correct me if I'm wrong if you're on Asperger's, but this is what I've observed as an outsider. Is it looks like you have to enjoy what you're doing. It's really hard to engage on anything unless you actually feel something from it. Like you have to get something from it. He was he was a All software right. developer and he loved software development and problem solving. So that was like his reward system. Once you have that, yeah. you engage like laser focus, like everything else in the world doesn't matter. It's like that's the thing that matters that you dump everything into. And the other thing is like <laughs> brutally honest. Like if you don't want an honest answer to a question, don't ask somebody who has Asperger's like they will straight yeah. up fucking decimate you. Now, can they can they uh, can they work around that? Yes, I know people who have Asperger's sure. that can completely well, you learn, steal it. Right? like you would never know it. Never, ever know it. Sure. Um, and, and they can hide it, but their natural tendencies and thoughts that you're not seeing that they're circumventing themselves are absolutely along those lines. And so hmm. it's, it's just wild. Hey, Dwarfs Den, thank you the fourteen dollars. Hey, Woo! I will give the seven dollars of that after taxes and YouTube. Oh, wait, oh man! Oh, by the way, Xander had his first coffee yesterday. Oh, my what very first coffee it was a decaf but, but still he, he, oh. he had his very first starbucks uh his, his like a, got him a starbucks card his very first starbucks card oh, so nice get, and get a coffee and he loved it what did he get what was his drink uh it was a frappuccino a little a oh, little nice. uh decaf frappuccino or chocolate mint frappuccino and uh and right he on. really liked it he he really did like it so i was kind of well, wondering yeah. if he would or not because coffee is one of those Hard things where it's like you don't really know if you're gonna like it or not i mean frappuccino is yeah. a milkshake man there's that no you that would never true. tell you could never tell somebody oh yeah there's coffee in there that's not like drinking a cup of folgers in the morning it's yep. totally different yep hey ga <laughs> uh gaming gaming maddie rocks are you uh are are you asperger's on the spectrum or are you pdd nos bernanabus bernanabus nerdogazabas because because gaming matter are correct. Uh, my understanding is that Asperger's is a term on the spectrum due to something dislike due to its historical origins. Oh yeah, now, they, now they, somebody they, mentioned that earlier about the guy being a Nazi or something. So so as okay so so I feel like that's super niche knowledge though. A lot of people IMO. now. Well, I suppose if you're in the if you're in those if you're in those communities, then I guess it wouldn't be. So so the people so I know that are diagnosed Asperger's, they still refer to it as Asperger's. But not everybody does anymore. As a matter of fact, a lot of, hmm. of different diagnoses well, have been like, rolled into autism spectrum disorder. So so now people yeah, like, it's like, identify as being on the spectrum regardless of what their diagnosis is. 
Yeah, like ADD is not a not a, a thing anymore, right? It's not in the ADD DSM is on the spectrum anymore. Now? It's I, I I've heard some ADHD talk that it might they, the they're spectrum. they're so, talking about. I don't know. I've never heard if that was like an official thing, but I do know that they were like sort of investigating it as like a subtype or like along like you were saying like on the the spectrum of it. Yeah, because hey, and if that's the case, if they're going to officially like take that up, I I I believe it because like you know I'm I'm there's a lot of overlap in the ADHD and, and autism like communities and stuff. Yep. And there's some of I'm, I'm not to self-diagnose or, or whatever, but like there are some, some aspects of that, that I'm like, bro, that's totally me too. Like, yep. Like, I just looked it up. It said experts now consider, and this is a, this is a recent development. Like in the yeah, last, I, I would think so. Yeah. So experts now consider ADHD to be on the spectrum as each Makes person sense. can experience varying levels of symptom severity. There are yeah. also different types of ADHD, which cause different types of symptoms. When diagnosed yeah. with ADHD, a doctor will use a set criteria to determine the type and severity of the ADHD you have. So again, ADHD is also a spectrum. Right. So and I, I feel like yeah. I should try and look into a, a, a better expert, perhaps. Yeah, they really um, need to destigmatize it. Because the thing is, is, I is think autism literally just means that you're not neurotypical in some way. Yeah, man, whatever. I mean. Like, there's, yeah, I don't know. I, th I think there's a lot more mean? of it. Neurotypical just the, is just the majority, the majority. That's right? It. Yeah. That's it. So, so it's yeah. like if you deviate from the majority, that's actually completely common in any yeah. metric, right? Like for instance, if you're if you're a short that's person, so you're abnormally tall. You're no right? longer in the percentile of the average, right? <laughs> you're, you're on the vertically the challenged spectrum. spectrum. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're in the yeah, exactly right. <laughs> it, it, it's like you can either bend down without hurting your back, or you can grab shit on the top shelf. It's like dude, right. you got superpowers according to other people. But uh, uh, it's not a thing anymore. It's called AD. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Um, there where ADD used to be like you'd have ADD and then there'd be like a hyperactive ADD yeah, or now, not. Now it's, now now it's, it's ADHD spectrum. and you have inattentive and hyperactive yep. and mixed. And and I found this out. This was kind of interesting. I didn't realize that uh, amphetamines aren't just used for treating ADHD either. They also use it for mm -hmm. treating some forms of uh, the autism diagnosis. Yeah. So like yeah. Uh, uh, my son's diagnosed PDD NOS, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, he may need uh, some kind of ADHD medication, but so far he's managed it incredibly well. So we don't see there's obviously no reason to medicate unless there's an actual yeah. reason. Right. There's no reason at this point. But there are a lot of people that really struggle with um, if they get too uh, stimulated. Uh, uh, there's a thing that some autistic people do called stimming. And my, oh, my yeah. will also do it too, do where that. it's like, where we'll just tap our legs or we'll tap our fingers on the desk or something. They'll, they'll like straight up go OCD. Like they'll have mm -hmm. to like move things around. They'll get really weird. They'll say things repetitively Dude. parroting. Parroting is probably the most common. Stimming yeah. 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 Like where, where, you know, you'll just see somebody that's, that's, that's door, mine. door, 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 door. And they just I, can't I make noises it. when yeah. I'm like, and I can tell, I can tell. And it's usually, it's usually when I'm like, I'm just vibing, like I'm in a good place, um, you know, just kind of in my head and I'm grooving and, and stuff. And I, yep. but just making noises and stuff while I'm getting the dog's food ready and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you, sir, or are autistic. constantly, constantly having to have my hand, like I haven't taken my meds today cause it's weekend. Um, and like i've noticed it in meetings and stuff so like mm -hmm. my lady got me a, a glass nail file because otherwise I, I pick at my nails and it's like a, it's an achievement that my nails like glass? are, are glass this nail long file? yeah because the the metal ones or like emery like a regular emery board the yeah. the sandpaper fails after a while they but this make is like glass do you have dude, it right yeah there? yeah man it's like and it's the 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 scrubby part is like laser etched it's not it's not like a glue oh. on it's not they didn't glue on something to the glass it's like it's like laser etched and it'll eventually fail but they last a long long time right but glass uh, isn't very abrasive like it it's yeah. sand, basically it's silica right well, so it's not gonna wear off as fast yeah yeah and i mean i got this for christmas is still still going great but otherwise i pick at my nails um and like like even now what you see on my nails if it'll show is like a, a conscious effort uh, cause otherwise I'm like right now I'm, I'm cleaning under my nails. I'm constantly picking out from under yep. my nails and stuff. And even right now, like I have, I've got this screw head <laughs> that I'm, I'm just running under my nail. Cause otherwise you I'll do it more when nail. you're stressed. Yes. The, yeah, like that, that when, would um, be classified as stimming for sure. When, like if, when I come back from GDC, I had almost picked my thumbnail, uh, down to the quick. And that's the mm -hmm. problem. That's, that's what really, um, like years ago was like oh man this is probably not a good thing it was like i would even right now my my pinky nail is is almost down to the quick and it, and it, what what bugs me is it's not even like i can feel the 
the uneven or like the jaggies on the edge of it. And so I'll keep picking at it until um, yep. it'll bleed. And, and even then, like there's something, there's something kind of, uh, uh, there's something kind of weird that, that soothing almost about the pain from that, yep. which is super weird to say, but. Start. No, no, no. Uh, oh, completely common. Dude, completely yeah, common. But I, I, I got a really bad um, infection one time from I, somehow it, I just got a wicked bad infection in my finger. Had to take antibiotics. It was so bad. Like it hurt so bad. Damn, I had to leave dude. work. My finger was like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh God. Had to in, took antibiotics for it. And that was really the click that like, okay, I have this tick, whatever, like this, this nervous yeah energy this nervous tick but i can't i can't keep picking at them like this so i just started collecting emery boards and stuff and then my lady gave me this glass one for christmas and i'll do i'll be doing it in meetings and stuff because they're boring and i have to I can't fucking focus on the fucking boring meeting so i'm sitting and i'll notice because like i'm looking down you know scrubbing at my nails listening i'm yep. still paying attention but it, i have to distract myself in a little bit and I'm, I hope it, it pops in my head last couple of times. I'm like, oh, shit, I hope my boss doesn't think I'm like spacing out or not paying attention because like <laughs> I'll be like this. I'm just. Doo, 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 yeah. Doo, 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 doo. And so I think it, at some point I'll have to explain it to him before. I, before. You yeah, I have the same problem you have with your nails. With well, I, chew, I chew my nails, but I've become oh, sure, so good sure. at it now that they, they look like they're clipped, even though they're chewed. Like I'm, uh -huh. I consider myself an expert at it after all these years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but some people chew them down to the nail bed. Where where it's like bleeding, yeah. but, but here's where my problem is: is I yeah. have an issue where if I get a clogged pore, like a zit or a, uh -huh. um, I'll, I'll I have to pop it. Like I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. live with it being on my body. Like it drives it me feels weird. Nuts. Even though popping it, it's like now I got blood everywhere. It's like right. It's like I pop it, but then the thing but is, after better. I pop it, as soon as it dries and scabs over, I have to dig it again and dig oh, it again. Yeah, and dig it you again. pick at the scabs. I, yeah, I basically yeah, have same. to put band aids. I physically yep. have to put band aids over them. Because if I don't, I'll just pick them and pick them and pick them until it leaves a permanent scar. scar. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've a few like that myself. I'm like poking on it all over my body <laughs> and please like, like that. Yeah, I've like five thousand <laughs> times. So my body was like, it, it just because here's what happens: every time you pick it, your body's like, wait a second, this isn't healing, so it throws more resources at yep. it. Yep. And you'll eventually get to the point where it's like, oh, oh shit, we don't have very much time to heal this properly, so we're just gonna fucking throw a bunch of cells there. Yeah, and, and it, you end up having like a mole. It looks like a mole. You know, you get a little sure, thing where it's like, sure. like a little mole. And Ugh. and sadly, the more stressed I get, the worse it gets. And if I get super stressed, like if my anxiety is absolutely through the roof, I'll yeah. start just randomly squeezing pores and pulling the Oof. hairs out of the pores, almost like a trip. Was it trip to uh, tryptomania or whatever it is? The people that pick the hair, that pick their hairs out. I'm oh, kind of like I that. Know, yeah. I'll do it okay. with body hair. Like I'll physically huh. like pull the body hair out to irritate the pore. Crazy. So I, have to, I have to stop myself from doing or, it because it's not in it's a derogatory a, way. Yeah, it's an impulse too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's just an impulse. It's like you have to actively override yeah. yourself because it's a natural thing. You'll just catch yourself doing it. Like I'll yeah. be in bed and won't even realize until I look down. And it's like something's bleeding, and I'm like, "What the fuck did I just do?" What, you know, what, it's like I still work. haven't I haven't quite got the control over. Is I'll I'll pick in my my toenails too, and those are the ones that bleed the worst because like like the edges for some reason will like come off and it's almost like a hangnail. And so mm -hmm. like a, a pull that I'll pu pull that off, but then it's like, it's still there and it'll bleed and stuff. And let me ask but, you this. Does, does your, you take, is it Adderall you take or do yeah. you take? No, yeah, I take okay. Adderall. So, so Adderall, do you notice that when you don't take Adderall that you do the, the thing with the nails a lot more? Oh, for sure. Like, like I'm telling you right yep. now, even right now. And what, uh, what helps soothe it a bit is I'll just kind of run my fingers on the nails but yeah, if there's like a, the border of it, right? Just, just yeah. But if there's if it's it. not even, or if there's like a weird little bump or a catch on it that I can yep. feel, it an alarm. I have to get my I'm like because I'll keep picking at it. So I have to find my I have to find my nail file, or I'll pick it. I'll keep picking, picking, picking to even it out to feel to smooth yeah. the edge out. Otherwise, um, yeah, I pick it to death. And so, if and any of you quick. in here today feel like you do weird shit and you feel bad for it, just just realize this, don't, it's don't more feel normal bad. than you think. People just hide. Yeah, it. Like, yeah, hundred percent. talking. You guys know me. I've always felt comfortable talking about shit yeah. that, that other people wouldn't. Right? Like Man. I talk about the medications I take that are stigma, but uh, stigmatized. I talk about my childhood and abuse and shit that I went through. I talk about right. my therapy. Like a lot of people don't talk about that stuff. The reason I talk about it is because I find it really therapeutic to find other people that have similar situations. It, definitely it helps it yeah it makes yeah it makes it definitely makes you feel less weird uh, yep. you know like 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 i said i'm on, on different social medias I'm, there's a lot of adhd 
uh, I like the term uh, ADHD. They, they put the A U D H D. And I'm like, oh, okay, for the crossover, right? And yeah, man, to just to just to hear that other people are a little weird too, it makes it feel so much better. I, I always tell people too, like, look, everybody's got their addiction, right? Everybody, everybody. everybody. whether it's a television show or your fucking golf, Food, whatever, drugs, everybody, any TV, everybody's porn. got some kind yeah. of addiction. Like, yep. it it doesn't matter what it is. It's there there is something in your life that you will always turn to for like a bit of soothing, mm-hmm. right? Like. My lady watched trash TV, the Real Housewives kind of stuff, right? That's like her comfort drama, place. Hey, drama yeah. is therapeutic for that very reason. Exactly Just, that reason. The, I, and uh, it's funny you say that because, like, yeah, I know for sure that there's like a either a subconscious or or conscious like comparison of like, oh, even these even these rich people are fucking weird and crazy and like just over the top dramatic and shit. So like my shit is not even exactly. that bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's the saying? Misery, misery loves company. Yeah. Right. But, but, it's, but it's like, but it's oh, like, man. you see somebody who has a situation that's way worse than your own. Suddenly your own situation is oh. not so bad. Right. But yeah. Instance, I used to love, and, and this is, this was a guilty pleasure. I haven't done it in a long time, but like back in the day, I loved watching like the 600 pound, the show oh, with yeah, my yeah. 600 pound my, blah, blah, my blah, thousand whatever. pound life or whatever yeah, yeah exactly like you know these people are going <laughs> to the doctor they can't breathe and they got oxygen shit and i'm like pushing almost 400 pounds now and i'm like why would i why would i put myself through that like seeing where this could go like right. it almost seems like i'm torturing myself but the reason why i'm doing it is because it's soothing knowing that i'm not broken that there isn't something wrong with me that other yeah. people don't experience like what i'm going through is 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 explainable and definable yep. because it's happened it before i'm not alone and yeah. so when I watch that, it makes me feel good, but it also makes me feel bad because like I, I empathize with these people. I feel terrible for them, right? Like I'm not I'm not watching going, oh my god, the fucker's gonna die. Ha lol. Like right. I actually feel bad. I've even shed tears watching this that's, show. So why do I watch it? it? It's because it it connects with me. I can understand yeah. what they're going through on a level that other people can't, but I'm not quite to that level yet, right? Like, but but I can understand it, I can see where they're coming from, and that somehow gives me like comfort knowing. The even and plus it scares the absolute shit out of me. That's the other thing is I'll watch it on purpose just to scare myself so that I don't go further in that direction if I can avoid it, right? Um, but but yeah, it's like why would anybody do that? Like, why would why do stunt drivers watch people like fucking wrecking and dying all the time, right? It's it's like it, that's something that happens. Like, like people that are adrenaline junkies and shit, yeah. they're well known for like watching a lot of content of when shit goes horribly wrong. Oh, I bet and you think it's just to learn from it, but it's the nah. it's, it's a desensitization thing, uh huh. Yeah, it's like they yeah, want to see I as would. much as the worst possible situation so yeah. that everything that happens to them or everything they think that can happen to them is like ex- they can expect it. They know it's there. They know it can happen. They know yep. the severity. So it demystifies it. So they're not sitting there like, you know, 100 yeah. percent looking like, right at what they're going to run into and die. They're like 50,000 things hey. can happen, but I'm desensitized to it because I've seen them all happen. Yep. So now, now I can calmly focus on the objective. Right. I know what mm-hmm. all the all the bad things are that can happen. all those guys made it. Right, it's totally fine. Because if you don't know, if you're the first dude, if you're the first dude, that is the scariest shit. Oh, that's gotta be. If you're the first dude, like like the guy that jumped out of the fucking helicopter or whatever and landed on the net without a parachute, like if you're the first dude to do that, and it's like you don't, nobody else has ever even tried it or even died doing it before. It's like that's got to be like a mind fuck because you're like an infinite number of things could go wrong. But if it happened a hundred times before and there was three accidents and two of them were one way and the other one was another way, then in your head, you're going to be like, well, on average, there's only about two things that can go wrong. And here's the severity of each of them and the likelihood. And so you can kind of work that out in your head and it's not as scary anymore. So <laughs> so I feel like I feel like we all do that to a degree. Like we like I think that's why oh, for drama sure. is so popular. You know, yep. that, that's another yep. reason why I think even like uh, a, a lot of people will develop uh, like pornography addictions and stuff like that, where they get a sure. really unhealthy, like they have to watch it all the time and they just get connected to it. And what that is, is they usually have low dopamine. These are people that basically oh, yes. like their yes. skimming is they have to force a natural dopamine level. And so they're having to do what would be considered extreme for other people to get more than average dopamine. They're having to do it just to maintain a healthy amount of dopamine. Yeah. And so that's, yeah, that's how that's a lot why... of addictions work. So, yeah. And and that's I mean that's why like ADHD people will um like argue almost for the fun of it like they'll just yep. take up the opposite side just because because yep. like De- devil's it's, advocate it's yep. stimulating too I do that all the time it is. like it is. and I try I try to I try to couch it in a sense of like I'm not I'm I'm genuinely not trying to be like contradictory here I'm just like I like the conversation and so we should I just want to like it's stimulating. Yep. To, to keep the to keep going back and forth like if i just say oh yeah yeah you're right 
Yeah, never have an important <laughs> conversation. Never have an important <laughs> conversation when you're angry. Oh ne- man. Never because you will intentionally railroad yourself on purpose. Like you will take a position that you normally wouldn't just to try to piss off the other person Dude. because you want them to be mad like you're mad. And now they're yeah. taking that as what you really believe when it's not. Yeah. You're literally just being extremist. And and then it creates a whole problem. Like one of the big things that I do that 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 I really hate that I'm trying to fix is right. my wife will ask me all the time. She'll be like, "I'll be pissed off or I'll be hurt and really bad, and we'll have dinner or something." She's like, "Well, what'd you think of it?" I'll be like, "Oh, was, I didn't really like it. I don't want to have that, or I don't like this, or I don't like that." And it's just because I'm mad. I'm in a mood, right? And then she'll never make it again. And then I'll be like, "Oh, why don't you make that thing anymore? That was pretty tasty last night." Well, no, you said you fucking hated it, or I was like, "Oh, I was like, ah, oh, goddamn it." No, I didn't mean it. I was just like, I was in a terrible place. Like I was really fighting. That, that was like the worst possible time. So, so now what I tell her is like, if, if you ever, if you want the honest answer out of me, don't ask me when I'm super pissed off or I'm yep. super hurting or I'm in a bad place. Cause that's, you know, honestly, don't, don't go ask somebody who's, you know, suicidal, like, Oh, well, what do you think about life? You know, it's like, they're not going to be in the right frame of mind. Like, right. And, and a lot of people don't realize that, especially if you're hiding it. And that's what I tend to do a lot of the time is I'll try to conceal my anger from other people when, when oh, yeah. I'm angry because I feel like I shouldn't be angry in a lot of cases. Like I'm, I'm angry and I'm like, why am I angry? And then I get embarrassed that I'm angry. So I try to hide it, but I'm still making decisions as if I am angry, but I'm not presenting as angry. So that's really confusing to people. And so therapy has been really helpful with that. It's like, it's like, don't try to conceal. If you're angry, just tell people like, I don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah, that's man. I got to say that's something that um, I'm learning to be better about with with my lady. She likes to uh, like walk away, chew on it, and then like she's so, so she'll, she'll, get, she'll get very 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 like, and then it's really hard to communicate. Yeah, my wife and was like, give me a moment. I need a moment. Just let me. I it. I want to like I want to squash this now. Right? Like I want to. Mm-hmm. I need a resolution. We need to finish this. Same way. Almost I've hurt. learned it's almost painful. Yeah. 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 And like, it's, it's, yeah, I feel there's all kinds of feelings that come with the walking away. Like it's like disrespectful, stuff. but I'm learning. I'm, and there've been a few times where we've been real heated and I haven't let it go. I chase after her kind of thing. Um, yeah. We, we have not, a this, the, the paints a pad picture, not like, oh, no, like no, freaking no, Jack no, Nicholson, no, no. Nobody but like that. I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep follow her. Like she'll go to the room or whatever. And I'll follow her and keep yelling yep. and stuff. That's not cool. And I've, I've, I'm getting better and better about it, but yeah. Um, cause I, and I'm a better arguer <laughs> cause like <laughs> I'm constantly, I'm constantly having these conversations in my head. Like, like you said, like you hide, you hide your anger. I kind of do too. Um, because like if something, if something is bugging me, like I'll try and hash it out, like yeah. in, in my head, like almost like pretend arguments and stuff in my head yep. to kind of figure that. out whether it's even worth it. Like, is this something worth worth mentioning? Worth worth having a fucking discussion, or 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 that could possibly lead to an argument? Yep. And most of the time, nah, nah. That's another like, ADHD it, symptom, by the way. When you're oh, when yeah. you're thinking ahead instead of listening to the other person, mm-hmm. that, that's something that that ADHD people do a lot. Is when somebody's talking to you, you're already thinking about your response before too they slow. finish saying what they're saying. Because yeah, you man. Can't wait, they're taking too long to get the idea out, so you're like auto completing yeah. them as they go. Hundred percent. I all do the that time. so much in the slower the somebody talks or the longer it takes for them to get their thought out. It literally becomes like pain, uncomfortably painful. Oh man. It, yeah. Painful. painful. And so, so and irritating, it, it, in, especially in an argument dramatically. Yeah. yeah. In an argument, dude, I'm like, it, it drives me nuts. Like I get what you're saying. Like I, I'm already there. Like you don't have to keep going. And so like, let me respond now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, and, and it's, it's a, a back and forth. Cause like, Alicia, Alicia's kind of got some ADHD too, and um, but it's like hers, hers presents in a wholly different way than mine. Yeah, and um, reconciling those differences and stuff in how we perceive the world and things like that. Um, yeah, my wife and been, I look at things completely differently. Like it's we are been two tough. opposite minds. On a yeah, lot. yeah. Like it, as she's coming to understand how her brain works, and then it, and then I've lived, I've lived in couple with this for forever like for her she's only just kind of realizing it um and so it's yeah man the the realizations and the co i guess coping and and figuring it out how to work together and things has been it's a struggle but it you know we're both there for each other and stuff the rule that we established around here is that it's the any point in any conversation no matter how bad it's getting no matter how heated it's getting 
we can parlay and go to our go to our corners. Nice, nice. Like if one person says keyboard. like I need to think, like I need yeah. to think, they're paying because because sometimes I'll, I'll I'll get too over the top. Like I just get too animated, and my wife <laughs> will get to the point where she's like she feels cornered and she feels like I'm yelling yes. at her and she feels yes. Like, and so so she'll just be like she's she's like right now I'm just I'm I'm freaked out. I need, I can't think. Just you know I need time. Yeah. And, but the rule is nobody leaves the house. Like we can go to different rooms. We can leave each other around. We can give her space, but nobody leaves the house. Cause I had a bad habit of running away and get my car burning out and just driving off at hundred miles an hour. I'm going to step out for just a sec. Uh, my lady just come okay. back with the groceries. So I'm going to help her ahead. unload real fast. Give me like 10 minutes or so. Top, get, after so I'll it, be right back. get after it. So here, actually here, I can so I'm going to meet this. That. Look at that, man. I look, I, I got a thing set up that actually worked here. I can hide this one in the background. There. Nope. Not that one. <laughs> I can't believe I still have that in the queue. You know what? I'm just gonna leave that up. Here, hold on. I want him to come back and see this. Hold on. Let me, let me shrink here. No, 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 no. Don't, no, don't resize that. Damn it. I didn't want that. Okay, hold on. No, grab this one. Okay, why can't I grab the picture? Here, random image. Grab random image. Move. Her. There it is. Okay, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna take a random image. Come on, OBS. Work with me here. Are right, we gonna take this here? We'll move this over here. We'll just we'll stick that here down here in the corner. <laughs> I just want them to see come back and see this. There we go. We'll just, we'll just we'll, they'll, they'll be a happy little thing down there. Um, and then let's see, can I hide? Where's the other camera feed? Is it this one? No, is it this one? There we go. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so so yeah, now we got ox down in the corner. No, I'm glad that he's going to help her. You should you should help your wife, and and all relationships are better when you help each other to to, to achieve things. So, yeah, pretty much the, the pretty much the rule that we have in this house is if we're super angry, or we're having a heated argument, we're talking about something like that, and it's it just nobody leaves the house. Like like you can go to your separate corners. I mean, if you have to go outside on the porch or something, that's fine, but nobody physically leaves the house because. Um, one time I had left and uh, I found out when I got back, once I finally cooled off and came back like 45 minutes later, I found out that my son was like super, super sad because he thought I was leaving and never coming back. Like because he saw like a heated argument and then he saw me leave and he thought I was never coming back. Like he thought I was gone forever. And so that broke my heart after that. And I was like, no, 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 we have to, you know, we, we, we can't, we can't just like go to another place and make ourselves completely inaccessible, but it's, but, we, but you should always be able to think, right. You should never be forced into a situation where you have to give fast responses because they're not going to be well thought out responses. Um, yeah, you gotta be each other's cheerleader. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I dude, I don't know what I'd do without my wife. Seriously, I don't think I, I genuinely believe that I would not be alive today if it wasn't for my wife. Like I, I credit me making it as far as I have so far to her. Like she has she has balanced out so many things that were severely broken in my life that held me back. And um, and I feel bad because it's like right now I'm going through one of the biggest struggles of my entire life and it's affecting everybody, not just me. It's affecting our entire family and our future. And it, it just it kills me. But she never wavers. She's always super supportive. She's always helpful. She has never never made me feel bad she's never tried to shame me for any of the things that i'm going through or my pain or anything or suck it up just just you know do do your shit or i'm out of here none of that she's always been supportive she's always been my side and so she's like literally my best friend i am married to my best friend in the whole wide world and i absolutely love that i don't think a lot of people get to say that sadly uh hey call me he said i find it hard to get my thoughts out at times same here my mouth gets ahead of my brain that is a very adhd thing for sure what do I hate the most about having ADHD? So here's the thing. I consider ADHD a superpower when it's focused. If you're in an environment with no distractions, like software development, I was real ADHD made me a rock star software developer. As I think long as there was no distractions. I think that's why it clicked for me too. Did you see the, the screen? Like, let, let, uh -uh. Go to the feed and look, look at the screen really quick. Oh, uh, oh crap. Where's my YouTube? Go on, go on, you got to see it before I change it back. Oh, no, no, don't, don't change it yet. <laughs> oh, oh, I want you to see. Oh, God, there's an ad. Hang on. <laughs> Did you see it? No, it's got to get through this ad first. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's such a bad picture. <laughs> God, I should have never gave you that. I forgot that's I so had that. In bad. The, I was trying to hide your oh, camera, and there was God. a thing that said aux auxiliary, so I clicked it to unhide it because I thought I thought it was Ew. your camera. And it popped up, and I was laughing so hard. I was like, I, we got to put that down in the corner. Dude, man, that's like the worst picture of me ever. You know what's crazy about that picture is I have a picture uh, of my dad back in the 70s, and you looked just like my dad. 
like I did not look, be my dad. If if not if it, I didn't he didn't have the fucking the weird nasty trucker beard. But yeah, my dad looked like that too. So hey, I have a question for you. So sure. so your ADHD. Now you said that we both do this. Like on the weekends, you don't take your medication. Sometimes on the weekends yeah. when you're not working. Yeah, sometimes. Right? Yeah, they so, they told so, me it's good to take a couple of days off. Not only that, but do you actually find it useful sometimes to not take your medication? Like what scenarios do you think it's better? To not take your medication are there any or do you prefer to be medicated all the time i prefer to be medicated uh i mean i'm well, me, kind of kind way. of i've 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 only been medicated the last few years a couple like maybe mm -hmm. two or three years ish yep. no maybe a little longer but you know i've been unmedicated far longer so i'm used to it i can tell like holy cow shit gets all over the place like when i'm not um tell me this if still, there's zero distractions and you're playing a video game do you think you're more effective with or without the medication uh, if there's no distractions like it's just you no noises just you in a quiet room with the game on headset on just focusing on the game 100 nothing else around you to grab your attention i say it's about the same okay. i notice i notice that i don't need um it's something be different else going on like like as an example, if I'm not medicated, I'll usually have a show going or something, yep. some other or like my, an audio book or something in my ear while I'm playing playing video games. Yeah, is silence um, uncomfortable? Like like sitting yeah. in front? Yeah. For me, For the, most of the time, yeah. Um, like I've, wilderness? I've done a lot like of you're in the practice. wilderness? That's oh, amazing. Yeah. Like I love yeah. that. But but if it's dead silent where you can hear like the tinnitus ring, like it's so quiet, you can hear almost yeah. your heartbeat. That drives that, me nuts. That drives me nuts. Like when I go to I can, sleep, I don't like it being quiet in the room. I have to have fan noise or some kind of white noise or something to drift off. Otherwise, I I yeah. do not sleep. I'll just sit there and toss and turn. I prefer as silent as possible because if okay. if there's some other noise, like like some kind of ticking, used to be when I was younger, I would focus on like a ticking clock and uh, that would fall. I would fall asleep. But as I've gotten older any sort of noise other than like a white sort of fan noise um, is super distracting. Or I've also found uh, in the last maybe six months or a year, um, I'll listen to audiobooks and stuff like, like the it's easier to ignore sort of, or distract enough of my mind that I can fall, fall asleep. Yep. Um, but, but it's weird too though. Cause like TV doesn't do the same. And I think that's because of the light more than the noise. Like the noise right. isn't isn't bothersome. It's the light, like because because uh, it changes, you know, scenes changing, and so like the light levels are different and stuff. I turn um, the brightness down on my TV to ten. Like you know, I nice. usually have it like at hundred percent. I turn the backlight uh -huh. down to ten about an hour or two before I go to bed, and I find that it helps me get sleepy a lot faster. Oh, by that, having that brightness because right? like I'll be on a freaking couch watching something, and I'll get wicked tired, <sighs> fall yep. right asleep on the couch. But trying to do the same in my bed, no way, can't do it. I'll stay, dude. I'll stay up till until the movie ends and then fall asleep the i'll be way. so exhausted i can't can't and that kind of stuff yeah or or like me i'll usually set the tv timer to turn off in 30 minutes and then i'll just put on some random sciencey thing and i, gotta I do actually that with get my to lady. sleep a lot faster when i'm when i'm when my eyes are closed and i'm focused on the words on the tv yeah if it's quiet in the room then what happens is i focus on all the stressful things in my life yeah. Like, like at the end of the That's, day, it's almost like my brain has to reconcile every problem. And because like we're having financial mm -hmm. problems right now, it's like in my head, it's like, dude, you're going broke. You're going to lose everything. You're going broke. You're going to lose everything. I can't silence it. Like there's no way yeah. for me to just take a breath and go, I'm going to think yep. about this later. Like normal, mm -hmm. like neurotypical people can usually do that. They can compartmentalize. Like, eh. I yeah. can't. There is a noise screaming at me in the back of my head and I have no ability to put my hand over its mouth. It will just repeat um, yep. on loop. And the more stressed and the more I don't want to hear it, the more my brain will do it. 100%. And and but if I have an external sound, if I have something outside saying something, it'll draw my attention to it. It's kind of like music yeah. in a way. Yeah. Like I used to listen to music like when I coded, but I couldn't listen to music with lyrics because if there was lyrics, my brain would try to process what they were saying uh -huh. in the song. But if yep. it was music, it was soothing and it helped me focus and think. But if yeah. there was words in there, I'd focus on the words and that would break me up. Kind of like somebody saying three, five, seven, two words, <laughs> trying to like think of numbers. Yep. Same same kind of thing. But when I go to sleep, if there's no other words to compete with what's going on in my head, my head just grabs the thing that's stressing me out the worst and just loops it yep. over and over and over again. And and sometimes I won't sleep at all. Like sometimes if Ugh. I have like the TV off and I don't have any sound, I'll sit there for three hours 
just looking at the clock every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, I look at the clock. Oh, another, another 10 minutes went by. Another 10 minutes went by. And that'll just happen for like four hours, and I'll never actually go to sleep. All I'm doing is sitting there resting with Oof. my eyes closed. That's it. I don't yeah. go to sleep. And it's terrible. That, that shit catches up with, like, with you really, really <sighs> bad. Uh, James said, what is it like to be on T? Oh, so testosterone. Bro. Are you talking about testosterone? Probably. Oh, yeah, dude. It makes I mean, I mean, my dick's like four feet long now. And like, seriously, I'm horny all the time. No, it's not like that. <laughs> no, uh, testosterone is the thing that I noticed the, the most about it is that it helps with fatigue. So I had really oh, interesting. severe interesting. fatigue. And when my testosterone was super low and I still have severe fatigue, like there's I haven't fixed it, yeah. uh, but it's it's noticeably better on testosterone. Like I put the cream on every day. I put uh, cream on one shoulder and then I alternate shoulders every day. Oh, and um, so I don't have to do the shot every week or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, the creams are hugely effective. Like I went in and got my T levels checked and I'm actually high. I had to like lower my dose because we overshot. Oh, man. And so my T levels were actually high. Um, and you don't want that either, right? You want you want to be in the butter zone because too high tea can cause problems and too low tea can cause problems. So you want to be in that butter zone. And um, and it changes based on your age and a whole bunch of other factors. But being overweight is the reason my testosterone is so low because your body only produces Deluded. so much testosterone. And it's actually the way it affects your body is by blood volume. And the heavier you are, the more blood volume you have. So it dilutes it. And so it's similar to alcohol, right? It's like alcohol is based on your blood volume and the dispersion of your blood. The heavier you are, the more you can drink without getting inebriated. Um, look at Andre the Giant. He used to be able to drink nine bottles of wine in a sitting and not die from alcohol poisoning, right? It's because he just had so much freaking blood, right? Uh, so it's it's similar with a lot of hormones. And so testosterone is one of them, like where the heavier you are, the lower your testosterone is going to be. And what that and that's why people um that are overweight generally present as younger looking. Like, like that's something that universally people will look at people that are overweight and think that they look younger than they actually are. And and I asked my doctor about that because I thought that was interesting. I was like, dude, I got carded for like fucking root beer until I was like 30 years old. Like, why? Why? Why did I look so young? And he's because I probably had low testosterone my entire life. And um, and I even told him, like, I didn't go through puberty until I was 16 and a half years old, which is incredibly oh, rare. Like, yeah, like I was literally like late. I got my driver's license around the same time I actually went through puberty uh Crazy. really late and and yeah, and that's that's a very common thing. You know, it's it, or for, for my family, for, for my genealogy. Yeah. yeah. And he said that that's probably also attributed to just really low testosterone. I had low production to begin with. And then on top of that, I've always been overweight to some extent. And that's also contributed to it. But by having a stable testosterone level, the thing that I noticed that it helps the most with is uh, energy and motivation. Like when when you're when you have all your testosterone in your system, it, it makes motivation a little bit easier. So especially in combination with the ADHD meds that I take and everything, but, but it is a subtle difference. Like, it's not like a lot of medications where it's, you take it, it's just night and day. It's like, you have to take it for like a month to get the levels to come up. And then once it does come up, it's like, you have to like think and compare, like, what are things like now compared to what they were? Because the differences will, will be somewhat dramatic, but it's over such a long period of time. You don't notice the transition unless you compare mm -hmm. it to something. So so you really should like look back like a full month and be like, OK, what am I doing differently now that I wasn't the month before? And you can kind of figure things out along those lines. But yeah, yeah testosterone, good for energy, uh, muscle development. Like if, if you want to yeah. develop muscle, because that's one of the reasons like I had low testosterone. So my muscles were deteriorating really quickly, especially the ones that I needed to support my lower back. And mm -hmm. so testosterone will slow down um, the loss of muscle as you get older as mm -hmm. a man. So so that's that's another a bone density is another big one. Yeah. Um I'm, I remember girl, uh when I was younger at least, um when I was exercising more regular and then taking mm -hmm. um BCAAs, right? Branch chain amino acids with right. um the occasional protein shake and stuff. Um I don't know if this was I never got you know my blood work tested or anything, but I do think that that had a this was also in my like mid to late 20s, so that's probably part of it too. But um over time, I noticed uh, I was hungry a lot, like all the time, all the fucking time hungry. That's more to do with the exercise. But I got I got very horny, like all the fucking time, like all the all the stereotypical manly stuff. Yep. Like testosterone think, will make you horny a lot more. I think it. I think the 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 working out and the, like you were saying the muscle thing. Like I think that helped like boost the testosterone. Yeah, weightlifting um, specifically does drive your T levels up. Yeah. 
So, so your yeah. body notices that you you need more muscle because you're, you know, if you're running your muscles to fatigue, which is what oh, you're man. supposed to do if you're weightlifting, your body goes, oh, we got to make more muscle because you can't lift the thing you need to lift every day. So it adapts, right? It slowly yeah, adapts. Yeah. One of the things is throwing more testosterone into the picture. But your so body I mean, can only create so much muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, kind yeah. of one, it'll help you to build more muscle, but then also building muscle helps yeah. produce more t- testosterone kind of a and thing. There's also Back, supplements. Like, there, there are no oh, yeah. studied supplements that help you build more testosterone naturally without needing a testosterone injection or, or gels. Um, they're just more subtle. You're not going to get like huge full point jumps, right? But you, but right. if you just need a little, if you're like a little low, they can actually make quite a bit of a difference. But yeah, exercise yeah. is big to your testosterone level. What you eat, surprisingly, affects oh, yeah. your testosterone level a lot. Like they yeah. found that people that are on vegetarian diets versus meat diets, it actually makes a big difference. I don't know if it's the iron um, content of the meat or what it is. There, there's some it, substance it comes back around. Meat. It comes uh, back around to the the protein part. Well, I would think it's the it's what? the chemical making the making the proteins you gotta you gotta work to break the proteins down and re re whatever like use to make use of them and stuff so i imagine it's all very very closely related yeah so so red meat more lean red meat and that's going to help boost that stuff up because it's going to get broken down and turned into muscle you need more muscle to to build tea you need tea to build the muscle it all kind of is uh kind of Related. So if you're if if you're trying to boost your testosterone level, it looks like the most important things that all are in red meat and high volume is zinc, vitamin D, and the saturated fat. Those those, those are the three things that trigger your body to increase its testosterone level. Um, but it also says that some soy products uh, contain what is it? Uh, phytoestrogen, estrogen, which is similar to estrogen. However, research suggests that soy doesn't significantly impact testosterone levels. That's good. That's another thing you yeah, have to watch out for too. Man. If you go on testosterone therapy oh, is estrogen God. goes up too. Anytime yeah, of you course. increase your testosterone, your body will create estrogen, Man. more estrogen also. So sometimes if you have to take a lot of testosterone, luckily I don't have to take a ton of it. Like my body reacts yeah. to very low doses. Um, but if your estrogen goes too high, that can cause some very serious health issues. Oh, yeah. Like you want to yeah. make sure that you balance it. Dude, Even trans people so... that are that are changing their drug regimens and they're transitioning, yeah. they still have to make sure that if they go to testosterone, they have to suppress the estrogen. Right. Because if they leave the estrogen at its natural level and they weird... bring up the testosterone, it'll go into like danger territory and start causing serious, serious damage. The whole so... soy estrogen thing is so out of whack i don't know where this i'm sure some bullshit internet thing oh, I'm but sure. when i was working at starbucks years ago there was one dude who'd come in i think he was like a firefighter or something but he was yoked out right dude is huge two it's like six three six four probably 250 big dude right Roar, muscled out and he for some reason like he he wanted to stop drinking like whole milk or something. So he's like, well, I can't do soy either. And like, I wish you guys would do like almond milk or something. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. How come about the soy, man? Oh, there's like, there's just so much estrogen in it. I go, oh, there's no hold on, man. Like, dude, how, I'm like, how big are you? Like, you know, mm-hmm. six something, whatever, two something pounds. I'm like, bruh, the amount of plant estrogens that are in this soy milk right now, you'd have to drink like 50 gallons a day. Like the shit is not get you are. I'm telling you, man, it's not throwing off of your your chemicals from drinking one fucking soy latte a day. I'm telling you right now, like that's ridiculous. It's like four parts per billion or something. Like there's like next, it's statistically zero. Like come on, really? Well, do you really think that guy wasn't on gear? <laughs> it's like he's already he's already controlling all the levels himself. I'm sure. Yeah, right. So. I'm like. You're probably taking some kind of supplements that are going to cancel this all out anyway. Like, dude, yeah. it was just, he was the same kind of guy who was like, he was worried about the radiation from uh, like the fluorescent lights or whatever. Right. He's like, oh, oh man, I saw God. this. I saw this video of this guy taking a, uh, and he even, t- he even called it an EMF, like radio, EM, EM right. radiation yeah, sensor old, thing. Yeah, he's holding, he's holding it up to the, yeah. he's holding it up to the CFL bulbs and it yeah. just bah, bah, goes bonkers. I'm like, oh, I'm getting rid of this bullshit CFL. Hold on, man. Stop right there. You're going to tell me you're going to get rid, you're going to clean out your house from, this was right around when they, they started to like sort of ban incandescent bulbs. I'm like, you're going to tell me you're going to swap out all your CFLs because of, because of radiation, right? I go, you got fluorescent lights in your office or something, right? Yeah. It goes, it's the same thing. It literally stands for compact fluorescent bulbs. The and I go the guy. It was an EM radiation thing, right? EMF, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's what it's called. I go the the ballast, the base of that bulb is incredibly high voltage. Like you're getting more. You're getting you're getting the same radiation off your television. 
being yeah. the same radiation off of the, the high the power lines down the fucking to be shielded right. now like like most of the electronics are shielded like they'll put they'll put a little so, em shield in the thing just because it could be a spark yeah, gap transmitter i'm trying to tell him i'm like it's not plus it's not even ionizing radiation first of all like let's start there okay the difference is that's like you could do the same thing to your microwave your microwave is like 1200 watts that thing is and I'm like, dude, it's I'm telling, it's eight, fine. Eighteen hundred, take up an entire yeah. circuit just by themselves. Yeah, yep. I'm like, come on, man, uh, this is not ionized. This isn't like like uranium. Okay, it's not ionizing radiation. Like yeah. you're you've been bathed in radio waves your entire existence for a lo- and some fairly high powered radio waves all the time your entire life, and you're fine. Yeah, okay, like for instance, you're reading lead paint. Your huh? microwave has a Faraday cage built into it. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there in the fucking window. Contained. But the funny thing is, even even with that, if you have an EM, if if you have an EM uh, a sensor, thing. They, can, yeah. they can pick up the microwave wavelength, and yeah. you stand next to the microwave, it spikes way the hell up. Oh yeah. But but oh, if yeah. you look at it, it spikes up, but not by like a dangerous level. Like no, people don't it, realize it, it's like, oh my god, it went up twenty thousand times or whatever. It's like, but you don't realize it takes nine hundred million times before it starts affecting. Exactly. I'm like, I felt I felt it's kind of silly having to try and educate this because I'm like twenty two. Plus, it's not like thirty five. Non ionizing radiation isn't going to fuck your cells up. You're fine. It's like it's gonna my, my, up. It'll my, warm my you teeth. up a little bit. It'll melt yeah, the candy bar in your pocket. T- make your teeth vibrate a little bit. Dude, did like, you hear about the guys back in the day? Like, do you, did you 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 probably know the story about how microwaves are invented, right? Nah. Oh, okay, so this is a great story. You'll love this. So, a guy in the Navy was they used to use the microwave um for radar for detecting. Oh yes. Stuff. They oh, oh, for the microwave ovens. Yes, yeah, I've heard yeah, this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's like super yes. high power. The, these microwaves. Yeah, they were cooking birds and stuff. Yeah, the order yeah. of like thousands of watts of power directed you know in a focused beam scanning yeah. around you know because because the microwaves bounce back really good the microwave w- wavelength bounces off of everything yeah that's yeah. why we love them in microwaves because the metal walls of the it's microwave just... reflect it like a hundred percent so it's great for radar like for radar yeah. but but they were transmitting so much power through these things that a dude one day climbed up while the tower was still on he didn't realize mm-hmm. it he got up there and he noticed that his the, thing, the chocolate his pocket chocolate, was yeah. getting warm and he yep. reached his pocket yeah, pulled out yeah. and it was a warm candy bar that was melting yeah and he put two and two together and he's like oh shit the the, the thing was he was fine the guy t- took no damage it's not like people are like oh it cooks you from the well, you'd, you'd have to stand no. there for a bit before yeah, you start he melting you there like yeah and literally he would be feeling the pain like he'd be feeling like he'd feel like he was yeah. on fire like he'd literally be cooking literally right so so he got down the candy bar was melted he didn't notice that it was warm though so he started investigating and he's like, he noticed that when he went up there, you know, because he kept repeating it like a dumbass. And I don't think he I don't think he died or had I don't remember I wouldn't think so. him getting cancer or anything like yeah. that. But he went up there and he noticed that it got warm. And he's like, why are we getting warm? So they started doing experiments. They're like, wait a second, microwaves vibrate water molecules and create a ton of friction and heat, right? So they started to experiment with shit like taking water up there and seeing it boil the water and vaporize the nice. water with this huge thing. And they're like, wait a second, the food funny. has water in it right like like everything has some amount of water in it so they're like wait a second we could what would happen if we took this and put it in a box and even the magnetron the thing that's inside your microwave is literally the same thing that's used in radar yeah yeah a focused magnetron beam that just goes around so the same thing in your microwave just on a smaller scale right it's it's like you know it's at 1500 watts instead of 10,000. um but but it's the same principle. Somebody just figured that out, and they were like, well, "Okay, well, how do we keep it from making everybody in the room get warm, right? Like, how do we right. keep it from just just cooking everything in the house? Well, just put a metal box around it. That yep. was it. That's why you see that little Easy. metal grate. Um, when you look through the yeah, front the, of the microwave, and you see the little metal grate. Those little holes in the metal grate just have to be smaller than smaller the smaller than the waves. As long yep. as they're smaller than the wave. The I always thought that was fun. Like, yeah. So so it's it, it's pretty cool and and you know way uh all, all waves are the same like for instance light everything you see right now is technically a wave it, it's it's literally like just it's just a super uh what do they call it like um uh the wavelength is super super small right it's like yeah. it's 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 massively massively small uh but then but then as they come down they'll start turning into sound it's like your ears detect sound your eye detects light but but realistically sound is pressure waves but mm-hmm. transmission mm-hmm. like transmitting sound or transmitting anything data whatever that's just a series of waves like radiation waves that you're transferring through the air and you could transfer them as light right you could literally use a laser to transmit data or you could use okay. an emitter or an antenna that can create that massively big wavelength depending on you know what you're transmitting how much power it is and what you're transmitting through you could pick different things right but then the day it's all just waves right and as long as the thing that you're standing behind 
has a smaller gap or whatever, you know, and it's not penetrated by that wave, it'll reflect it or absorb it. So, so, you know, if, if you want to um, protect yourself from radio waves, the only requirement is you just need a Faraday cage that has, you know, a fine enough mesh that the only thing that's going to get through it is light. Like the really high energy, like super, super high end of the spectrum, but like gamma is going to get through and stuff like that, obviously. But, but the radio waves won't because all the radio waves are way, way lower on the spectrum. But we keep getting higher and higher energy waves. Like right now, what are we up to? Like gigahertz, like many, many gigahertz that we can transmit at now oh, because as processes yeah, get right. faster, we can create tighter and tighter and tighter, smaller waves. And mm-hmm. so, so it will eventually get to the point where it's like, we're just transmitting like super, super high energy photons that are outside of the, the visual range. Like literally you could make a camera that could see them, but we're not going to be able to see them. Right. And that's going to just be transmitting huge, huge amounts of data. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think lasers are used between satellites, if I'm not mistaken. I think Starlink 2.0. Oh, uh, uses I mean, I don't know about laser. Starlink, but uh, I did just see uh, an article about some company selling some tech to do exactly that, to like help speed up communication between different satellites and stuff to, to use lasers. lasers. Yeah, so you can transmit a lot of data with light. I mean, right now, right now in my house, I have a single fiber coming into my house. It's not even a dual fiber. It's one fiber cord. That's it. Same. It comes to my house. It's itty bitty little wire and it can carry right now with the current equipment my ISP has. If I had the money, I can get 40 gigabit service, Yeah, which would be the equivalent of four gigabytes a second of data transmission. That's like that's like faster than like an SSD, like most mm-hmm. normal SSDs. Um, imagine having that connection through this tiny one little strand of fiber. Between me and the yeah. internet, light. Did you see that? Oh my what? my uh my light like turned off, turned on, turned off, turned on. Huh? I wonder what that means. Oh, <laughs> somebody's got your IoT stuff. Did, did, did somebody? Is it, is it, is, was it Morse code? Yeah. Are you, are you controlling my thing? Is L right? L. Speaking of Morse code, have you uh have you been watching any Netflix lately? Uh, a little here and there. There's Why? a new Did show that just came out. It's called The Three Body Problem, I think is what it's called. Oh, I've heard good things. I, oh I, I might God, check this good. out. Uh, based off a book? Uh, Dude, what I, I don't know if it's based off a book or what, but it is mm-hmm. good, man. It sucks you in. I'm, I, I've only got one episode left. We binged the whole thing last night in one sitting. Um, it is a wild ride. Like, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, so I'm no, no spoilers. But you should definitely watch it. Like, if, if you are into um, just complete, just mind fuckage, and you like stuff where it's like you think you know what's going on, but you don't know what's going on, and you like puzzles. It's a fantastic, fantastic TV show. And the thing that I really like cool. about it is it's it's like plausible. It's like a plausible scenario that could happen. Okay. Like 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 from from our perspective, it's very science. It's very science based. And the things that are happening that we can't explain, the show presents as things we can't explain. Like it doesn't try to like magically justify them. It's like it's from the perspective of today, like our technology in yeah. 2024. And so when there's technology that doesn't make sense, that's doing things that we can't comprehend, it takes that position. It looks at it and just acknowledges that, well, this is alien technology. Like this is shit that we don't understand. But yeah. it cool. really, it really focuses on what's the um shit. I can't remember the, the theory uh, where it's like, there's so many people out in the, or there's so many bodies out in the universe. So many stars surrounded by so many planets. Oh, the, right? uh, the Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox. That's it. So, so the show is basically surrounding the Fermi paradox. In okay, like, did, I thought I thought I had heard some about the three body problem mm-hmm. as a mathematical concept, yeah, and it, and okay, it is an alien sort of thing, right? It's about yeah, yeah, it's, it's related to yep. aliens or extraterrestrials. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. That's it's so weird how like I'll have these like these feelings, like like man, this is this sounds very familiar, and then there'll be like all these weird like fuzzy. Shit just like semi yep. yeah like semi related concepts that kind of come in i'm like does this and i'm i'm constantly questioning i used to just like trust my myself um but like sometimes i'm just a really good guesser or i'm or like my brain is barely able to make some tenuous connections to other concepts that like i can't i can't tell if i'm just making it up or making these like leaps in logic automatically and so like Nowadays, I'm very, I hedge if I can't, if I don't have like a direct, like, oh, yes, I know I read this. I know I saw this somewhere. If it's just like, oh, this, this, is, this feels familiar. This feels reminiscent. I, I'm very, I hedge a lot. I'm very, 
conservative in that way. A lot of intelligent yeah. people can just figure things out just based on experiences and knowledge about other things that I'm, are similar. Yeah, I'm a good so, guesser like that. So yeah, it, it's not even really it's educated guessing, right? It's like it's like you're oh, looking yeah. at it and you're saying, okay. I, I know these three things are a part of the equation. There's a fourth one. And just like in mathematics, as long as you yeah. have the other two, you can figure out the third, right? It, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. It has to make sense. Like for as much as like thing, as for as much as stuff that like seems weird and questionable or like, why, why do people do that? People are weird, but in general, like the universe does make sense. Like, like yeah, it, fo it follows it, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, and so like when things don't make sense, that's like, Come this, on now. This There's is how missing. we know we're on the right track is because the things that we have theorized over the last like 30 years, we have proven. Yeah. Like, like oh, the man. Higgs boson. It Dude. was found, right? We literally built like an $8 billion experiment just to find this one. We called it the God particle, right? Because, right. because well, it was supposed to model, explain where mass comes from. Yeah, yeah because the standard model worked. <laughs> we, we created this thing called the standard model of mathematics that could explain everything. Big stuff. Except for light. It, could, it yeah, couldn't the, explain how light was a massless particle. Like, it didn't work. Like, it worked so for weird. everything else in the universe that we could observe, but it couldn't work for light for some reason. So they're like, well, well light apart. has to have mass. Like, it has to. If it's a particle, it has to have mass. But yeah. that mass exists for such an infinitesimal amount of time as this Higgs boson that we couldn't observe it. So they theorized that either our formula is completely wrong, right? It, and it works for 99.9%, .9%, but it's off enough that it doesn't work for the 0.1%. Or more than likely, there's a particle we don't know about that can explain all of this. So they go build an $8 billion experiment or however much it was to build the CERN uh, uh, collider. And sure shit, it found it. Like they, they knew what they were looking for based on what would have to exist to, to fix the problem. Again, they educated guess and they yeah. confirmed it. And we do a lot of the stuff like that, like like dark, the dark matter experiments that they're doing right now, or the not yeah, dark matter, what's yeah. the other one? Um, anti matter? No, 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 it's dark matter. Neutrinos, it is dark matter. Sorry, neutrinos I was and stuff. So, yeah. so yeah, the neutrino experiment where they're literally going down in these caves that are you know like uh, miles under the surface of the Earth because they need to shield from all the particles that the Earth can absorb, but the neutrinos can just go flying right through the Earth like it's not there, like it's just it's just a sheet of paper. So they put these experiments super, super deep, deep in the ground. So and then they have these particle detectors. And if they detect a particle, the only particle that we know of that can go through the planet like that is the neutrino. So if we can see that, then they can confirm that like dark matter, dark energy or whatever exists. Right. Because right, energy right. is transmitting through the planet that we normally wouldn't observe because it's all background noise mixed in with every other particle. But if we can filter out all the particles that we do know about and we can still see one particle or wave, right, particle or wave. If this detector picks it up even once, if it even sees one little particle during this experiment and they can rule out that it didn't come from some emission source that was, in, you know, a contaminant, um, that proves the theory. As far as I know, they haven't found one yet, but but I know they do have the detector. I know that I know they did build the, the dark energy detector that's like underground somewhere here in the United States. Uh, it's a pretty cool experiment. It's like it's it's wild, like how they built this massive, massive detector, like so deep underground. Like the amount of resources and time it took to oh, do that was significant. I love the the uh, the big golden hole in the ground that they've got. I think it's in Japan for um, actually. I think we have a pair. Uh, there's a there's a sep there's a second one. I think in the United States too uh, for neutrinos to capture to, to to detect neutrinos. The inside of that thing is super cool looking. Um, I think we might be talking about the same thing. I think we might be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just if you look up neutrino detector and it's got all these like gold orbs, like these half dome orbs all around. Yep. I don't think they're actually gold, but they. By the way, this is in the, the show. Material. That that picture I just um, looked up. This is in the show. The neutrino detector is actually in. This the is show. so cool. It's like it's super. I think, like I said, I think there's two of them. There's one. I know for sure there's one in Japan. Yeah, this isn't the one like I was talking deep, about. By the deep, way, deep, deep, deep underground. Um, and and it's like it's like half full of water. For some reason, yep. it's like part of that's part of the thing. And cool. it's it, it's to help um, because neutrinos are like this crazy. I want to say almost theoretical particle. I don't because oh, like, no, I, I don't think it. there's been I any direct. It. Um, it's the Sud Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. That's the one that's two kilometers under the ground. And can it's in Canada. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah, yeah the, one, the one that you're talking about, the really big one that looks like a giant room that's like half filled with water. Yeah. That one is also deep underground, but it looks uh -huh. like they filled it with water because water slows down particles. Well, yeah, so, it's so supposed it to help more time to observe the particle by slowing them right. down. Right. Well, yeah, and it's supposed to like help help like figure out cuz cuz neutrinos, I think again are are theoretical uh, cuz we haven't had any sort of like direct observation of them, right. but they're they're all over. They're everywhere. They're all they're, they're 
and they're passing through things all the time. It's such a tiny little nothing that it it just passes through everything. Most matter. It's just all the time, everything going on. And so like the idea is like, event, hopefully maybe eventually this water and these, like these, these spheres and stuff, it's going to crash into something and we'll be able to, um, you know, detect that. Uh, not the article, just because you can. Yeah, right, well, yeah. There's, there, there's. Um, is it the theory that they operate outside of time, or they're timeless, or something? Because they move faster than the speed of light. Something. They're, they, they're, they're like they're it's not, a crazy it's thing. About time. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like they exist in different. Like, like there's. Heavy like we water. observe time with particles, like a particle moving at light speed. Like we know exactly how far it moved or whatever, and that's theoretical max speed. But this particle breaks that rule. And that's why it's so interesting to us because this, this part do with mass yeah. faster than the speed of light, which shouldn't be possible, you know, but it does. And so if it can travel faster than the speed of light and the speed of light is directly right. linked to time, like, what does that mean? Like, does that mean we could go back in time? Does that mean that neutrinos are going right. backwards through time? Like they exist yeah, the due to their low mass or something. It says low mass and lack of electric charge. And like other particles, neutrinos only interact via gravity and the weak interaction, the weak nuclear interaction. That's wow. why they're so hard to observe, because in order to observe the particles and take a picture, you know, like the CERN, the Ooh, collider, so the only cool. way to take a picture of these particles, to basically slam particles into each other and then observe the resulting explosion. Right. Yeah, the so slow, cool. you know, slowed down. And that detector has to be stupid fast. So how do you make a detector that's fast enough to detect something that's moving faster than the speed of light? Well, it's almost like you detect the the effect of it right right exactly exactly it's like but man yeah it says so according to the laws of physics neutrinos must have some mass but then quote only a smidgen of rest mass perhaps less than a millionth as much as an electron so the gravitational force caused by neutrinos is so far proved too weak to detect leaving the weak interaction as the main method of detection whoa yeah there's still so cool man there's still this kind of stuff is so freaking yeah i mean a lot of this goes whoosh way over my head like they're talking about electrons, muons, and tauons. I'm like, okay, I understand that some of this are like subatomic particles or subatomic. Is it like, a particle or a wave? Some would argue. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, and, and really, what's the difference? That's the whole quantum Cause, thing. Uh, right. Because, like, I think at the at the that the real you reduce everything oh, down Johnson enough, we're all a just tachyon that travels faster than. Light. Oh yeah, tachyons I, are the ones that they, they get sent back in time and stuff like that. But like, um. We're all waves, really. You know, matter is just energy vibrating slower, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't I just that, isn't that, the, isn't that kind of the, not move faster than the speed of light. Like the scientific community, the majority think that they don't move yeah. faster than the speed of light. So you're you're absolutely right. Thank you, John. Great correction. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but no, you got to admit though that it's cool that we know enough about the universe now that we can make these theories. These like whimsical theories, like Dude, shit, it just, on and we can create something that can I confirm it. I love how wild. much, how much of like what used to be science fiction is like, oh yeah. Hey, you know that weird thing that like we were just kind of goofing around, like maybe I know some of uh, actually a big chunk of like early golden age science fiction was sort of based on theoretical physics and, and whatnot of the time, but like so much of that was just kind of like, eh, I don't know, man, we're, we're, we're just kind of guessing and like the math kind of works sort of. And to, to, to come so far, like, like I'm sure they must have known that antimatter like is a thing like before we were able to actually like make the stuff and whatnot, but like antimatter in the, like the forties and fifties, again, as a, like a, a mathematical concept, I'm sure was like, oh yeah, there has to have been antimatter at some point. Like there has to have been, um, but to, uh, to come 50 years, 50, 70 years into the future and like, oh yeah, we've made like 700 micrograms of anti-gravity. We're fucking badass like that. We make the stuff now if we want. Or I'm the like, quantum entanglement experiment. How fucking crazy was that? Right. Again, yeah. Right. Cause like you, looking somebody into like some of my favorite, some, somebody in their head, yeah. like did enough science and knew enough Again, about how things work that they're like, Hey, we think that if we're right, we could have a particle in space, yeah, literally in a different gravity field than the one here on earth. Both of those particles change state and be observed at Isn't the exact same microsecond, even though they're in different time frames, different time oh, references. That's so and they cool. Proved it. They absolutely. I, just, I love, I just think it's so neat. And, and it just, it just leads further and further to like, we, we, we don't, 
like we can only perceive such a small bit of of what reality is and and man it's so cool you know what makes humanity yeah mk ultra like, really all the special what makes like, humanity special is that we can invent the things that can that can make up for the senses we don't have so like we can't directly observe radio waves with our eyes or our ears yet we figured out how to transmit and receive them right and we figured out how they correlate to the things we can see in here right yeah and we know yeah. the spectrum we can see whether it be light or whether it be uh radiation the, these waves of radiation we could we could figure that out even though we can't see and hear them so it's like we speculate right we look at something we're like this doesn't make sense we take all the variables that we do know that we can observe and yeah. then we try to fill in the blanks like here's all the things we know to be true now here's the things we don't know how do we use the things that we know to be true to create the things to verify the missing yeah. pieces and then once we have those missing pieces then we iterate build another piece of technology that then goes deeper to figure out okay now we created more questions by getting these answers now let's create the tool to go find those answers and then if we don't find the answer we learn just as much if not more than actually confirming it so it's like right. even if it's a complete and total failure the information that we gather makes the other possibilities more likely and gives us more tools to do a better job of vetting the next one. And so I think that that's amazing, but so this cool. is where AI really comes into its, its, uh, into its own is that throughout history, the things that humans have done, and this, and this is actually very, very interesting. If, if you go look through human history, the amount of time that it took us to get from each major milestone to the next gets significantly shorter with each advance. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. like, you look at oh, us like thousands of years, right? To go from like, you know, huck and spears at each other and like beating each other with rocks or whatever. Yeah. Thousands of years. But then to go from like literally having the first car to having like jets break going into space Dude, and landing on other it. planets. It's that's like it. 100 the, years. Like 50 less than 100 years. years. Less yeah. than 100 years it went from the Wright brothers to landing on the moon. Yeah. So less now they're saying. Years. That's and, and the reason for that is look at the technologies that actually allowed that to happen. Mass exactly. manufacturing automation, so cool. right? Henry Ford's automation yeah. allowed them to make millions of cars where they could have only made thousands before, right? It made that an accessible thing to more people. More people then had cars. More people then, you know, knew more about automotive stuff because more people had it. So it became an expertise. More people got interested in it. More people thought about it and more people so put cool. their brain power into making it better, right? Now you look at AI and AI is kind of crazy scary if you really think about it, because now we've created a way for a computer to stand in as an analog for a human. Not perfectly, right? It's getting better yeah. every day, but but yeah. where the assembly line like really shot us forward, like like the things that we can do today are largely imparted on automation. If we didn't have automation to to fill in these gaps in production and iterating and stuff like that, we wouldn't we wouldn't be where we're at today in the period of time. It would have taken much longer. Yeah. But automation is weird because automation is like what what mass manufacturing did for like the car and for, you know, modern our modern revolution over the last you know 100 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. AI can do that so much faster because AI applies to everything, everything, because a, since AI is a human analog, meaning that, you know, we're designing it literally to to act and think like a human being like that is the end goal is but but much faster right we can throw more power at it. it's like if you wanted to think faster you just give it more resources what's going to happen is theories and shit that were taken you know that we were projected to take 20 or 30 years to figure out now will be able to be figured out in in years or months um we're already seeing it in a lot of fields right where uh like like there was an experiment they did where ai came up with what was it like 17 more elements theoretical elements like like through through simulation and iteration and basically taking all of the knowledge that we have the combined human knowledge trained on particle or uh, on sorry not on particles on uh, uh physical elements it was able to look at those yeah. elements and theorize new elements that absolutely could be created artificially oh, yeah. like like that's cool too and they were like, like the people like, said that they would work if we had the technology today to actually create the environment that would be needed to create that it would exist like like it is something so cool. that could exist in a stable in a stable uh arrangement and yeah. and they and they and it even knew the properties that was the crazy thing is like it didn't just create these new materials it actually could say what the properties the pros and cons of each material would be and you're like how can it do that when it's literally just trying to predict the next word because that's the thing is like everybody says it's not quite that simple but everybody's like oh it's trying to predict the next word it's not really smart it's not really thinking but that's the thing is like it, it doesn't really need to think in the conventional sense all it's doing is looking at all we, we created a mechanism that at the, at the dumbest way of looking at it 
it can look at the entire sum total of knowledge of humanity. Look for the majority, how the majority stands on every single possible thing within its scope of knowledge that it has. And then it can basically go through and answer questions. If you could grab that group of people that happen to be in the right bucket, the majority of people in the right bucket and ask them that question, they all talk to each other and conversed for hundreds of years and came back with consensus. AI can do that in a matter of, of moments. So, so we're going to get to the point now moving forward where, you know, where automation allowed them to build like a thousand cars a day. Once you pair AI with robotics and shit like that, you're going to be able to have basically an AI that creates a better AI. And then that AI is going to create a better AI and it's going to become generational. And what's going to happen is when you create an assembly line, it's not going to be like grab some robots, program them, and then they build a car at the same speed every minute. What's going to happen is every time it builds a car, it's going to learn something from its mistakes and it's going to get better. Yeah, and then the next yeah. car is going to get better. And then every other manufacturer on the planet that's building cars or anything even remotely similar is going to benefit from that knowledge so that they get better. And then all of them are going to share their knowledge together, whether they're building airplanes, cars, building computers, robots, chips. They're all going to share their knowledge. and It's going to get better. And then the mm -hmm. AI is going to make itself better and it's going to iterate itself. We're already seeing that, right? They're using agents oh. to basically look at the code for the AI to optimize the code to create Rolling the next generation AI. of the AI. So we've literally, we're, we're on, we're, we're chasing Skynet right now. Like literally like, like Terminator and Terminator 2 are becoming reality because we are creating robotics right alongside AI. We are meshing them together and we are admitting to ourselves right now that AI has already proven that it's doing shit we didn't think it could do. It's already yeah. coming to conclusions we didn't even think were possible because there's so many Good. variables being computed that we can't even predict what the output's going to be. Like, yeah. how many technologies have we created where we couldn't predict the output? As long as you have the two variables, you can usually figure out the third, right? For some reason with this AI shit, because there's such a huge amount of data and the weights and the, the, the training that you do in the beginning versus the training it does on its own afterwards, the amount of data that you would have to perceive to be able to predict what it's going to do it would be the same as you saying i could i could tell you what the person was going to do if i knew the map if i knew the arrangement of every particle in the universe at this right. exact moment i could tell you what you were thinking and what you were about to do and i could tell you the state of Man. anything because i know what the it, previous state is that's going to lead to it i like it it's uh yeah. it, 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 it always it kind of reminds me of there's two two different stories that did kind of touch on this um and i think they're both by asimov actually the the foundation stuff talking about psychohistory where this guy develops a mathematical model um that's able to source to, to vaguely predict the future but only because it's like it deals with like trillions of humans and across like the entire galaxy and things like that and so when when you're dealing with such large numbers it's easy to guess the movements uh, or predict the movements of masses in that way but also um as part of the like irobot series of short stories and stuff um the at at some point the world like has like a there's like a global government and they kind of turn over a lot of the economics and logistics and and societal decisions to this big ai um and of course ai's um you know asimov's three laws of robotics um you know everybody knows those and so yeah. the like the this big brain machine is like it still has to follow the rules, right? The laws, the three laws, but um, you can't even make it. Started AI noticing jail break for crying well, out loud. No, They're gonna work well, around the laws. That, but the thing is, like, they start noticing, like, hey, the AI said, like, Malaysia it should only produce like 280 million tons of rice, but like their production capacity is like 600 million tons. Like, why aren't they? Why? Why is the AI saying to to produce less than they they? they are capable of and and like they started noticing all these different like things like man they're it's like the ai is making these inefficient or not like fully productive choices and then so they start asking like hey man what the fuck is going on here like why are you doing this and it 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 comes back and says my job is to protect humanity as a whole like and so it, it sort of had developed its own zeroth law they called it that like it was more important to make decisions that benefit humanity as a whole over the long term, rather than just protecting like individual lives in the short term. And, and yeah. the, the AI thing had become so pervasive and like plugged into everything. Like they couldn't just turn it off uh, or, or like unplug it and stuff. So like the humans were just like, well, shit, uh, I guess we just kind of have to go along with it. Cause like, if we're, if we just, do this on our own like we're going to kill ourselves and stuff like we're just 
So and I always thought that was kind of an interesting twist to it that like it isn't always about like protecting individuals in a, in the short term and stuff and like how AI could be would will may eventually get to that point where that's more important the long term like uh you know the long term uh, survival is is like more important that kind of thing yeah. I, like I, I think our biggest undoing moving forward, though, is going to be the people that have the resources to develop and advance AI in the first place aren't going to have the best interests of everybody at heart. They're going to yeah. be greedy because greed yeah. rules everything. Greed and power, right? So their best interest isn't going to be let's replace every human in the in the workplace so that humans can all live a life where they just get to do what they want and enjoy life and coexist, right? They're not going to want that because that would mean that they'd have to come down from their level of life where they have people effectively as slaves that they can pay to do anything they want. And they live a lifestyle yeah. that most people can't. They would have to yeah. give that up for, for the masses to equalize everybody. They're not going to do that. More than likely, what they're going to do is wipe out the middle class and try to create an even bigger gap so that yeah. they make products that are incredibly cheap that the poor can still afford so that they're still making money on the whole just from volume. But nobody actually makes enough money to rival them in any way so that they can yeah. still pay a small amount of money to control humans and effectively have indentured servitude. Right. I think that's a that's a huge problem moving forward with AI is that we're not really thinking about what are the consequences of replacing these people without them having another place to go. Like, for instance, with automation back in the day, automation was a tool. Did it replace jobs? Hell, yes, it did. Like the amount of people that you needed to assemble airplanes and cars before the automated assembly line came along was way more, but it also made the cars more affordable so that more people could afford them. But it also neutralized a lot of jobs, but it created new jobs, right? It created jobs where people were creating the automation and creating the tools and maintaining the tools and coming up with the new methods to make humanity. So it kind of balanced out a little bit. The problem with AI is because AI fits into every category. Where do the people go when AI replaces them in one field? It's like, well, we'll just go start developing AIs. Well, what happens when the AI develops itself? What happens when the AI can actually iterate itself faster than any human possibly could? There'd be no use to have a human. A human would actually just cost resources and slow things down at that point. So, or at least you don't need as many humans. It'll become less and less and less and less. And right now we've already showed that AI can improve itself. There's several demonstrations of this in many papers yeah. that show if you take an AI with multiple agents. So let's say you have, uh, they call them experts, where you have an AI that has basically eight mm. experts depending oh, yeah, on yeah. what compartment of knowledge there is it can you know you can create categories and you have an expert in each field that focuses on just studying in that area but all the age all the experts can weigh in on a, on a topic but but the expert will get a higher priority and a higher weight so they basically still have consensus where they all talk amongst each other and have like this democratic decision making process in the ai that says this is the best answer we can come up with but the expert that's closest to whatever the answer is you're trying to get is going to get more pull so in a system like that where you have consensus and you have all these different entities looking at things from different perspectives, the answer that you get at one isn't going to be predictable, right? But the other thing is it's going to be able to give you an answer that isn't necessarily the sum of the knowledge that the answer came from. There's going to be another component to it. It's going to create new information that didn't exist before because that's how humans do it, right? We take things that we learn, we combine them with theories which AI can generate theories, like AI can actually oh, yeah. do the and guess, the you know, stuff. And guess sure. stuff and try it and test it against knowledge. And now it's even like emulating, like the coding bots are getting crazy. If you haven't seen like Claude three Opus coding makes open AI mm. look like a joke. Like I've been oh, playing snap. with it lately and I'm like, oh my God, the shit, the code that this thing can write is, is just blowing my mind. So, but not only can it write the code, it can actually simulate the code. It can run emulator. It can emulate running the code and actually predict the types of errors that it will encounter and correct for those errors before you ever even compile oh, wow. and run it. But here's where it gets scary is the concept of proprietary knowledge is going to disappear because now AI has gotten to the point where you can feed it straight up machine instructions. You can just decompile an executable, no matter how obfuscated it is feed that code into an AI like Opus and tell it to write human readable code. And it will actually go back and reverse engineer the thing into human readable code that, that would compile back and execute roughly the same so that it'd be like you having private symbols, which, which are something that companies wouldn't ship because it would allow people to easily reverse engineer their products. Now AI can just do this without, without breaking a sweat. So you're going to see all this proprietary knowledge. Like Microsoft's going to regret this in the end because Microsoft's like all in on this AI shit. But ultimately, AI is going to be used to deconstruct and, and steal AI. AI is going to be used to reverse engineer Windows and get the Windows source code, right? I mean, their, their own invention well, yeah, is, is getting it. set up to basically defeat them. 
Yeah. You, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. Cause I mean, just look at, you could totally reverse engineer it. Here's, here's how the OS works or here's what the OS can do now, given what you know about how code works and all of the books and stuff that are around for writing an operating system, you could totally reverse engineer windows like, like that. Yeah. Like it's like, duh, like, I don't know. That's plus I'm pretty sure didn't a bunch of Microsoft source code get leaked a few years ago <laughs> it, anyway. It did. <laughs> like, it did. Yeah. I'm if they don't leak sure, it themselves, AI will figure it out. I'm pretty sure. Like I was thinking it was like windows server 2022 or something like that. Or like yeah. one of those, one of the big, like the whole operating system source code was leaked at some point or yeah. one of them. Like, something like, like that. a lot of people don't know computer but, chips, like the computer chip that's in everything that you own, like everything down to the chips that are in this controller, anything that's a processor, right? Anything yeah. that's a straight up processor is like, designed by a computer like like yeah. humans stopped designing this shit a long time ago like we have input into the system like we'll, we'll look at an architecture and try to evolve it but it's ultimately the computer that's building the blueprint that turns into the chip because you could how many humans would it take to write like trillions of pathways like like trillions of transistors and order them properly and link them all together like it's not feasible like like the the layers that we have in chips and how small they are and how densely packed that these cities of architecture are, you know, at the nanoscopic lit or the microscopic uh, level, there's no way humans could design this shit and draft it anymore. So, so what they do is they basically their input to the system is here's some ideas that we have computer, take these ideas and then run simulations and reorder things and try them until we get a better chip. So you effectively for many years have already had computers creating the next generation of chip and the next generation of chip, just being guided by humans. Right. But you don't really need that guidance anymore because AI now can look at that. You can feed in like the pictures and, and explain everything and just train it on all the knowledge of everything from the beginning of creating that architecture to present day. Give it all that knowledge, all the schematics, multimodal, so it can look at pictures, it can look at text, it can look at audio. Let it use all of its senses to digest all of that data and train on it. And now you basically give it an objective. You say, I want to create 5,000 instances of this AI, each one being a different professional with a different goal. Mm -hmm. And then I want them all to work together to to design the next generation of chip to be as fast and efficient as possible. Tell it which areas it can sacrifice to improve in other areas. Give it like basic requirements for like what you want out of the project and just unleash the thing and give it, you know, infinite amounts of resources and then come mm -hmm. back a week later. And you're like, you've got a bunch of diagrams that they're ready for simulation that you can throw into your simulator and see if they work or not. And if they don't work, you go back to the AI and you say, here's the problem yeah. we ran into. It trains that in, now factors it in and goes through the decision-making process again. And you could iterate that without a human. You could literally just connect the two systems, yeah. let, let it, it run the simulations itself, get the data back and then retrain and reapply yep. until it passes the simulation. And then it pops up and it goes, hey, yeah. we got one. It passed the simulation. And you go in there and you're like, whoa, no human looked at this. This was just computers crunching numbers for weeks. And mm -hmm. you come back and now you have your next chip ready to go out to the foundry to start being ultra lithographed onto, you know, uh, silicon and you're yeah. going to go. Yeah. So Ugh. I'm like, holy shit, that is crazy. Because if you think about that, apply it, with the complexity of a CPU, looking at the complexity of the CPU, do you really think robotics are going to be harder or easier? Mm -hmm. Like creating a robot on an assembly, an automated assembly line would be inf infinitely easier. And in yeah. my opinion, to creating these like microscopic ultra lithography plans and everything to generate a CPU and like build it and implement it and test it so much less complexity. So now what happens when you put all these systems together and you effectively connect them? Not only do you in connecting them would be a job right for a human to do. But do you even need a human for that? Because if you give the AI enough information no. on all the systems involved, it can figure out the most efficient way to connect them. Mm -hmm. So so basically what it comes down to is if you just allow AI to keep ingesting data and observing, you know, everything that we've done and becoming more and more trained and you have enough resources to keep that context in memory. That's the biggest thing, right? Is you need, you need, you know, terabytes and terabytes of memory to hold these really giant models and hold, you know, an infinite number of variables to be able to iterate on something that big. Like you're not going to do that on a computer with a single GPU. Right. But those resources exist, right? Yeah. Like NVIDIA yeah. just released that new, uh, what, what's their new technology they have now that like can 10 servers can do the work of what, like 400 oh, servers did last generation. I did see something about Jensen talking about some new chip or something. It's like a hundred percent AI driven AI accelerated. Like they're all yeah. in on it. Right. And video is going all in on this AI shit. And so the amount right. of iterations and AI, like the number of, of, you know, uh, what do they call it? Like the number of, uh, rounds that it can do in AI, right? Like going through and learning and learning, oh, and learning, yeah. and learning uh -huh. has become so many orders of magnitude better that it's completely destroyed, uh, uh, Moore's law, like Moore's law is dead. 
like completely dead. Like, like, we, like the when you look at AI specifically, it's like the factor of processing power that we've developed between just the last generation and this generation is many orders of magnitude faster. So now, now keep in mind that the next the gener that generation that just got created was largely enabled by AI shortening the development time. So now that happens again, and that happens again, and that happens again. Pretty soon, once you tie all these systems together, and you know humans are going to do it. Humans are absolutely like we're too fucking curious not to. Like, do you really think we're not going to just start like plugging shit into different systems just to see what it can do? Well, yeah. Like, like we're going to eventually get to the point where they give this thing, you know, enough access to resources and enough training that they just sit back and it just comes up with like the most wild, like fantastical ways to like replace humans and make things more efficient. And we'll applaud it for that. And we'll think that's amazing until like nobody has a job anymore. <laughs> but but all the people that still own all the infrastructure and create all the robots, they're making more money. So it's creating even a bigger gap because like the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. But people can still right. afford things because it's gotten so cheap. But then the things that aren't automated yet are still going to be equally expensive, which means now they're many orders magnitude more expensive based on your new income. So it's going to be it's going to this is going to be a tricky shit to navigate. It keeps me up at night like no shit, dude. I think about this yeah. stuff all the time and it really gives me a lot of anxiety. And I kind of wish I hadn't have gone down the rabbit hole. But at the same time, it's like knowing what this can do in the long run like honestly there's a lot of good like i don't want to just look at it as doom and gloom like i think it's going to be bad in the beginning like we're already starting to see that happen with content theft uh uh you know copyrights being violated in ways that you can't you can't legally you know fight it like people are actually using ais now to generate content that is riding that line as close as humanly possible to where you can't be sued and not only that generating the legal documents that you can literally take to court and cite every single law and every single president is the why <laughs> like, yeah like i saw a thing the other day where it's like a dude dude like uh created a a disney picture that he could say he wanted to sell a disney picture on etsy of mickey mouse or something like that and i guess mickey uh -huh. mouse is in the public domain or something like steamboat willie or some shit yeah in part yeah 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 so so he like did a thing where it's like he created a thing that was close enough to steamboat willie to basically enjoy the the copyright not applying anymore but crossing the line in a way that disney would 100 percent go after him but it also created all the legal president that could, in, in all the all the legal documents, everything like the whole shebang that you could basically just give to a lawyer and have them just take to court and file. And it would like immediately destroy their case. Like, I'm not saying that's what would happen. Like the judge, you know, judge sure. is also going to be, you know, he might decide that that's not good or he doesn't like AI or whatever. And he's not going to do it. Or maybe the AI hallucinates and fucks some yeah. things up because it doesn't know enough. But but just the fact that it can do that in the first place and be anywhere, even in the ballpark. That's crazy because in the in the past you'd have to have lawyer. Like, where do fucking lawyers go now? I don't feel bad for lawyers. Lawyers ah. fucking are like lawyers in the United States at least are some of the biggest scum there are because they literally are predatory <laughs> and take all the yeah, money man. out of every situation they possibly can for doing the least amount of work. However, yeah, actually, they're gonna be replaced, dude. They're gonna be fucking replaced because it's like lawyer a lawyer's job is to come up with like the best possible defense it's going to get to the point where lawyers are just using ais they're all going to be using ais to fight their cases yeah and as soon as people well, figure that thinking. out they're going to create systems that don't even have humans involved at all oh man so that, that just popped into my head so lexus nexus is a company that has is like the largest collection of um like legal data essentially especially in the terms of like decisions and things like that they have um they have just a massive database of legal precedent um that's like i think that's what kind of their main thing is yeah. they're just this gobs and gobs of data and in that similar sense i'm like man if if lexus nexus ever comes out with their own like specially trained llm it's it's donezo man they, they would just rake in billions billions people would subscribe to that all the fucking time for exactly that for everything yeah. from a, fighting a traffic ticket to getting off of murder charge because like you do all you'd have to do and i and i, I see an article from lawnext.com from may of last year that they are entering the generative ai fray with limited release of the new lexus plus ai using a gpt and other llms and that's only going to get better and better. Like all you have to do is like feed in it, That could be your lawyer right there. Yeah. Really? Uh, you feed it, you tell it, you tell it your story just as you would with a, with a lawyer, the thing that's smart enough. And again, with like different agents, you could, you could split the load. It doesn't have to search the whole database. You go, Oh, this is a traffic problem. So we're going to pull out the traffic expert agent and we're only going to really look at, you know, traffic law stuff, you know, make it faster. And yep. so you explain, Hey man, I, I, this is here this is, and it man that'd be crazy because like you didn't really you wouldn't really have like confidentiality at that point 
uh in a sense uh, i mean you'd have to come up with new rules because like okay you explain everything to your your ai lawyer and it goes Bzzz! and spits out hey this is how we're going to run this this is how we're going to run the show yeah you know and not only that it's going to be able to look at all the data from the online social yeah. media of the judge the court clerk everybody involved in Ooh, the case i would hope the, not the jail in that sense that I would think be. It will. I mean, you could, you could, right? Because it's going to figure out how to fight a defense because that's available. those are variables, right? The judge is a oh, variable. That's true. Yeah. How so, did so how if did it looks at the judge? Yeah. The judge or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Say the judge has a son that died because... in a car accident, right? He died yeah. in a car accident, and the guy is the guy who's being framed for murder or whatever lost his legs in a terrible car accident, and like, and, and they figure out how to leverage that in a way that makes the judge sympathetic to him, even by like one right? percent more. That could be yeah, the difference, yeah, right? Why not? So I, I don't do. I don't think we'd ever have AI judges, you guys. It, it there's it'd be like Futurama. It'd be, it'd be too. Like, it'd be too weird. The guilty. people, the people wouldn't want that to be. Like I could see eventually where you know you will technically have like an AI lawyer, at least because because really it's just a progression of what's already available, right? You have a team of paralegals or whatever. With a bunch of books or access to the LexisNexis database or or whatever else legal databases and stuff, yeah. you're just you're just trading the human ec- the human researchy part for the for the machine researchy part, and then you're gonna still. Yep. In fact, I would still even want a human lawyer involved to at least like just eliminate you know, the bias against machines or, anything, or just right? to read through it and be like, okay, well, you know, the wording on this is a little funny. Like maybe we're going to make this a little more human to talk like you. I can see where 10, 15, 20 years in the, in the future or whatever it, it won't, it won't be, but like, man. Yeah. It, I see the thing is the more I think about it, the more I like, because I'm trying to find like areas where AI cannot do something and I've yet to find one. I can't. Find, I haven't been able to find a single I mean, category or a single moment, job where AI could not intervene if we just applied the resources to do it right now. Like, like, like we where we are now. Technology. Yeah, where we are now, it'd be a little janky for some stuff. Really, like it, it's not. It's not I that. I mean, humans are pretty janky too. Yet. I mean, there's bad lawyers, yeah, there's bad doctors. So like, it's like, what would the average be like, if the training was good? It's like the. It's like the. Um, you know, it's like the Starbucks example, right? Like we have all the technology right now that you could completely 100% eliminate the human aspect of, of making yourself a fucking latte. And it'd be 100%. better. It would be better. Be it perfect. would be a higher yep. quality. Uh, it would be better for both the company and for the customer as far as the product is concerned. But like, we're not there yet for the interaction part, right? Yeah. Like we're not there yet. Right. It, it, I guarantee it will. It will get to a point where like, you're going to totally enjoy your fucking AI barista or yeah. whatever and because they're cool and like it's fun and and we have a problem with parasocial relationships as it is and so like you're 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 not going to want to put the effort into the conscious decision of like ugh, i don't want to actually i don't want to have an emotional connection with this robot yeah. you're you're i'm sorry but the human brain is lazy you're gonna make that emotional connection anyway like like the more people love their fucking tamagotchis acts, the and more shit. you'll connect with it if, if, yeah if that's just going to happen naturally yeah, like, oh man, I'm I I like the idea of like a Persicom. If any of you have watched uh, either watched the um, the Chobits anime or or have read the manga, um, no TLDR yeah, that shit for me. In the in the future, everybody has a Persicom. It's called it's a personal computer, but they okay. they reduce it to Persicom. But it's like a Android robot that, and some people have like little tiny ones that they keep in their purse, or like right around on their shoulder. Other people have like full size human ones. And also like a personal a, assistant kind of thing that yeah, right. The thing can it's like and it has like a personality and stuff, it's still a robot, but um uh and there's like a vague implication that some people like actually it's pretty overt in, in the anime, and it's probably more so in the manga. I haven't actually read the, the comics, but um that there's like a concern that people are are developing these emotional attachments to their persicoms and, and foregoing human connections and and it, it it kind of presents that as a bit of a problem and it bring, raises questions of like what is life and what is what does it mean to be alive and and human and things like that uh because like in a there's way, we've been groomed to get used to interacting digitally like if you think about it, our generations like i look at my kid and it's like he's on his yeah, right? in vr playing games with his kids in rec room like literally what he'd normally do at a basketball court he's doing the same thing digitally equivalent in a headset if an yeah. AI took control of one of those characters and you didn't know it was an AI, but it's still presenting and moving like a human and talking like a human, you'd have no reason to believe it wasn't. 
Right. So, so to you, because you already know how to connect on that level and that to you, that's very much reality. Mm -hmm. You would be able to befriend and have feelings for an AI if it didn't present yeah. itself. Like if you didn't have that AI biased in your head to begin with, that's going to. Yeah. Oh, oh her, is her, her is another happen. good example. Yeah, yeah. The movie her is another oh, good example of, of, of that sort of like. Um, I mean, I'd hesitate to say parasocial because like, I mean, again, a lot of this stuff ends up leading toward metaphysical questions. Cause like, then you start asking yourself, well, what is it? What, what, how do you, you know, after a certain point, yeah, what is real? The, right? the Turing test doesn't apply, hasn't applied anymore for decades. Um, but then like, so you have like a sort of more advanced Turing test, like how, how do you determine if it fakes it well enough? What's the difference right. then, between exactly. it being sentient and not and alive and we not. observe everything through our eyes and our ears. Our brain never actually you know? physically experiences anything in reality. All it's yeah. doing is processing uh, data coming through our eyes and our ears, right? We're missing a whole bunch of sensory. Like there's a lot of shit to observe oh, that we so much. observe, right? So so why wouldn't you, if you were put into a virtual reality situation where it's like your 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 nervous system is being manipulated? So now yeah. you're seeing what the AI wants you to see. You're hearing what the AI wants you to hear. Why would you reject that? Like, like honestly, if it feels <sighs> and smells and everything's just That's like the question, reality, right? You're accept it as reality. What? Like it's no different. Morpheus asked that question: What is real? If Dude, if you just mean serious. what you can see and taste and feel and touch, then then you're, those are just electrical impulses interpreted by your brain. So the matrix is no less real no, than real. real life, real right? So and even then, who's to say that they actually ever escaped the matrix and stuff? Like, how could you tell? The right, difference? if you couldn't tell you were in it to begin with, you came out one layer. Who's to say there isn't infinite layers above that? You and then again, so know. like, right, we bump into these metaphysical questions that you can't question, you can't answer because you can't get, you can't actually get out of the system. You can't ever actually be sure. You cannot observe it from the outside and stuff. So like, you can only trust what you can see and hear, like, like your brain. Can right? you? That's not even true. But like, well, no, that's true. We trust a lot of shit we can't see in here, right? Through proxy, through other people. Heck, even even if we can see in here, it, it's to not be fair though. To be fair though, I I could argue the point that if you're trusting the other people, what they're telling you, you're still hearing what they're saying through your yeah. ears. You're still seeing yeah. what they're saying with your eyes. So you're still trusting your senses, right? We, yeah, yeah. yeah. At some point, at some point, you have to. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. At some point, you have to just accept it. So if your senses were hijacked. It would be no different than reality. As a matter of fact, you can even explain that today with drugs, right? Like yeah. there's people that fucking take bath salts and like eat each other and shit, like in their mind, in their frame of mind, right there with their nervous system so messed up by drugs, they literally think it's the right thing to do to eat like their roommate. Yeah. That they think is a zombie. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and then they come off the drugs and they're like, I thought he was a zombie because they remember it. Those memories are still there. They're like, Oh, I, I, I thought he was a zombie. Yeah. That doesn't make your any goddamn sense, but it did in the moment. Is your perception is reality. That's so, so if you can be manipulated through just changing some chemical things, well, an AI can be manipulated just by changing some bits, right? Yep. It's like, we're not all that different. We're really not all that different when you think about it. It's like AI is still in its infancy. Yes. But it's like, we have, we are the closest we've ever been to emulating human thought because we've created yeah, a machine yeah. that can come to conclusions Didn't that are they? logical and work that we can't predict that it can come to. That right there makes it basically for all intents and purposes human from our perspective. Didn't they simulate, like, fully simulate, uh, like, a cat's brain? Like, they were able to uh, simulate all of the neurons of a in a cat's brain. I thought it was a, I thought it was a bug, but it might have been a cat. No, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was a brain. I, I know a I saw a brain. Yeah, dark, yeah, this like is in 2009. Oh no, he emulated it like flawlessly and put it onto like oh. a robot and the robot did nope. like all the things that a that a beetle would do or whatever no nope. apparently apparently somebody says it was a scam um that's wrong so, this is so back in 2009 you know? back so, in 2009 so, somebody said that the ibm experiment was a scam uh this was this was a couple months after the talk but this could just be somebody complaining you know pushing back on it so, so Caillou huh. said AI can't procreate. No, that's bullshit. It absolutely can procreate. Of course it can. I've, wrote, I've written, I have, I have personally written self-propagating software. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> of course it can. You're, and especially so, so nowadays. If, if you're talking about nowadays, biological procreation, then obviously it can't. But if oh, you're talking about procreation posh, in that difference. it's creating something to replace itself, that's another an improvement, an iterative improvement, improvement. It absolutely yes, can do that. Of course. And not can. only that. 
not only that, if you couple it with robotics and you give it the physical access to the physical resources, like you literally build enough robotics and you create a big enough chain of robotics, it can get the minerals out of the ground, smelt them, Computer create viruses. them, the thing, move them, Computer build, viruses. The, build the chips, put the chips in, program, and boom, you got little Timmy robot coming out the end. Hello. And little Timmy's going to go back to the assembly line and start helping assemble the other little Timmy's. And as they get better, they're going to create better Timmy's. And it's once a little... you create that chain of custody, that is procreation. Yeah, 100%. and I mean, even viruses as they are now is more of a cloning, I suppose, than a true procreation, right? They self-propagate. But I mean, that's still a sort of procreation, right? They they replicate and spread and replicate and yep. spread. It's no different than real viruses, honestly. Oh, you know what? Just, just you're just eliminating sort of the mutative part. But you yep. can you can introduce that into software. That's not that's not anything like crazy. Here's the thing: they've already done experiments where they've given Love AI that. just a simple objective, a very vague objective. Your your objective is just to improve yourself. That's it. Yeah. And just let the thing Ooh. run wild. And it actually comes up with improvements to itself. It and actually catches very bugs interesting. And itself. I love seeing experiments like that where they they give they'll give like a like a robot or or they'll they'll give the software like the parameters, right? Okay, you, the the software is running a robot. The robot has seven legs and it weighs this much and it knows how to articulate and this and that. Yep. And then it just says, "Go to the red box, like get yourself over there," and and just let it figure it out. And it's so interesting some some of the the crazy solutions that uh, that some of these these models and stuff will come up with. It's very very cool thing, very cool stuff. You know, like, a good topic oh, would man. be Neuralink. Cool. So so uh, much, that's much a weird brought one. it up. No no no. The reason why I want to talk about it is because I was actually I don't trust that slightly, shit. I was slightly surprised. I was yeah. slightly surprised. Now again, we're going by shit that you know Elon's telling us, and the one guy in the world that has it installed. That I'm sure it's to his benefit. To yeah, not man, like a nine minute live stream it. with no with no proper like medical journal, no external like nobody's no nobody yeah. else has actually gotten hands on this guy. He was on. He's supposedly been playing Civ Six all night long, and was supposedly was moving a. Cur a a computer cursor I while on live the, screen the stream cursor and movements and they look like they were predetermined like it almost yeah like right come on macros which is something we can already do with it's an just, external bci so or just like the guy who was controlling the the musk bot folding pay folding laundry and stuff like just right. just over there right. right like i know some people were saying oh they tried to hide it and stuff but like the actual like stream he was right, right there they right. weren't they weren't really being that nefarious about it and and even musk was like you know in the future we won't have to actually control the guy but like I'm just I'm just too suspicious. I don't plus even if they were true, this isn't anything brand new other than the fact that it's something they put in the guy's brain. We've had like little thing, little cap that you could put on people who have like um locked in syndrome. Yeah, I've, I've used and one. they're like I've used to be like, okay, Jim, think up, mm -hmm. up, 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 up. And then and then the little the little thing on the screen goes zzz, boop. Okay, that's going to be your yes. Okay, now t Jim, we need you to think down. Think down, 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 and the little thing goes down. Like yep. we've we've been able to do that for like decades. So like that part of it isn't that great. Like we've been able to have brain waves move mouse cursors around and stuff without a horrendously invasive surgery. So like that yep. part of it is not impressive or or like amazing. Or there me. was a company that used it in tandem with uh, eye tracker. You know the Toby sure. eye tracker thing. Yeah. And so, so if you look at something, the cursor can go to that point because without even using any brain interface, literally just looking makes the cursor go there. So when I was really thinking about it, I was like, yeah, it's cool. This guy can move a cursor around, but he could already do that with an eye tracker, like an eye tracker yeah, man. using Google game game face would allow yeah. him to use like his eyebrows, his right and left click, his yeah. the edge of his mouth. He could use as like a macro, hey. like 20 different expressions could be macros and him simply looking somewhere and doing a gesture would move the mouse there instantly. So I could argue that with game face, he could play the game faster and more efficiently with less I, errors without any surgery and any chip at all. Come on. Stephen Hawking was able to communicate by wiggling his cheek. Okay. Yeah. Like that guy was like almost 100% paralyzed from the tip of his fucking head down to his big toes. And he was like, you know, doing that kind yep. of shit and, 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 and community and was making mathematical breakthroughs. Okay. Like the, the so like the Neuralink thing, mm, we've, heck, we've even gone so far. We've even gone so far as to physically like, uh, jump the break in the, in the circuits 
people yeah. got like low back breaks where they can't move their legs. We say, you know what? We'll just put in a bunch of fucking wires up here and we're going to connect them down here past the broken part. And now you can you move your legs again. Like, yeah, there's already like, a, a quadriplegic guy that they restored his arm movement. Yeah, using that by just bypassing the break yeah. in his brainstem just, using yeah. the digital, digital we, bridge. We, so like some of this isn't that. Heck, again, little halo thing on your brain, on your fucking skid lid and and attached to exoskeleton legs we got people standing up walking out of out of you know again like oh i can't use my legs and and we're able to control robot legs and stuff and so like to me it seems uh it's just a little it's a little extra to be digging into somebody's brain in order to achieve this in my let's, opinion, let's take them. Let's take them at face value. Let's let's, let's just, sure. just for hypothetical sure. sense. Hypotheticals. Sure. Let, let, let's take them at face value and let's say that the guy that got the implant, it really did change his life and he could do things that he couldn't do before. And he really does feel like he says, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and say, Elon, for the first time in his life, he told the truth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it works as expected. Is there other technology available that could achieve the same thing that he obviously never got to try? Like, yeah. like, because the thing is, there is other BCIs, there is eye trackers, there are other ways that that are heavily refined to operate computers by people that are completely paralyzed, like even more so than him. So, so again, is it is it? I want to know what ability it gives him that he couldn't get through some other existing technology that wasn't as evasive as going like deep into his brain with a with a machine. My biggest fear with the thing, though, isn't necessarily like. um what it enables him to do or not it's what happens if it malfunctions sure because that too literally have these like 1100 Man. electrodes that can right now they're single direction they only they only detect oh, right? sure so they like, are but but the goal of this is to have it be bi-directional where they can also send impulses back but here's nothing the thing, keep nothing he never Nothing keeps you from sending electrical signals that. backwards through the thing. That's a software the, limitation. No, but here's the thing. Send exactly that. That's very, I can very push, true. I can push that's electricity backwards through the through a the socket in my wall. Give somebody a seizure, right? Can nothing. Nothing stops me. Nothing stops me from pushing electricity into the socket on my wall. Like that's not yep. that's not how wires work. One directional. <laughs> but, yeah, but I'm just being. No, no, I'm I, just being smarmy. But yeah, <laughs> I'm with you because like. Dude, they, there's already risk of like pacemakers, pacemakers yeah. getting hacked and 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 or insulin pumps and stuff being hacked and, and people dying and things that like actually that. It did happen. There was an insulin, yeah. there was an insulin pump bug that allowed people over the internet to access somebody else's Dude, insulin pump and give them a lethal dose of Yeah. Well, uh, when it's when it's when the systems are monitored by your doctor, the one way or the other, they can get in there and and that's scary, man. So Imagine yeah, you're I'm Civ and you kick some kid's ass and he goes and pays some nefarious website through you know a Bitcoin or yeah. whatever to fucking like shock you through your neural right? interface and fuck you oh, up. Oh man, right? or you get the oh, um what was that? What was that anime um sword art online where it was like a there's like a virtual it was a virtual world MMO and um somebody had hacked the game and they were like frying people's brains from the VR like yeah the the and so why not why couldn't you why not or oh man you don't pay your bill you're late on your you're late on your Neuralink bill now you can't move yeah and the other thing too is that, that i don't get is is i know we said we're going to benefit of the doubt but i can't do it anymore um <laughs> yeah. so, so one here, sentence that's here's it. the thing they want to make it seem like you can you can do all this crazy miraculous shit with Eventually, just these electrodes maybe. all within a postage stamp size part of your head your brain is right? huge you, you're, the yeah. shit that you do is all over your brain, right? It's like, yes, when you yeah. think about something, that might be the place that they found the strongest signal that they could cue off of to do that thing. But it's yeah. not going to be everything. That's why. Like, that's like, why the cap is the way to go because it's got yeah, all the sen- It's got a bunch of sensors yeah. all over, and it can. And quite frankly, in my opinion, the more data you have coming in, a lot of it's going to be noise. But you're going to be able to figure out those, um, the patterns better. Like, like being able to now they can. Oh man, they can scan your brain while you're sleeping and recreate your that dreams. That was crazy. I use an AI. Whoa. That, that kind of thing. Crazy, so yeah. like to me, that is better. The more the more data you can suck up from the wiggles of the electrons in your brain. But again, very crazy stuff because the reverse, the other side of that coin is we can turn off people's concept of morality with a strong enough directed magnetic beam. The same same sort of cap that you're wearing, they can target the right part of your brain and send a beam oh, of, of, of magnetic me. resonance. And now suddenly 
You're a sociopath. You have no you sense of right or wrong. Did you see the experiment where the guy's face was getting his facial muscles were getting all fucked up and it wasn't no, a but response? Not surprised. Not so surprised. they literally just had a, a they they had this super high powered magnet hit, that he had his head in and they were doing this therapy. Um, and it actually is it's it's a it's a actual approved treatment. Like this is an approved treatment for some mental condition. And it's supposed to fix it by hitting you with these huge, like huge magnetic currents it? that go through your head. And so you basically have like a super cooled magnet on either side of your head and it hits you with this like massive magnetic field. And it's supposed to like fix this, like, like fix the symptoms of this condition. I wish I could remember the name of it. I just saw it yeah. a couple of weeks ago. But when they, when they hit the dude with it, his whole face goes eh, 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 like every time they're doing it. And keep in mind, there's no electrodes. It's not a tens muscle response. Yeah, here we go. It's literally just a magnetism and it makes his brain go fucking haywire and all his muscles do weird shit. And he's like, oh, no, no, this, this is normal. Like they tell him this is exactly what's going to happen. And, and he's like, he's like, no, it doesn't hurt. It just feels weird or whatever. But I was like, if they can, if they can take a magnetic field and like literally fuck up all your muscle signals, like what happens if they exposed like your brain to a higher powered one? Couldn't they eventually get deep enough into the brain that it would just stop your heart or stop your lungs from working or sure. cause a fibrillation? Like, no. Yeah, man. Like, so I, I just posted a link to, this is an old, it's an old article. It's from 2010, but this is the, this is the experiment I was talking about. Magnets can alter your morality. Oh, wow. I um, the, uh, and I, I, as always, I encourage you all to investigate further on your own because again this is a really really old article i'm sure they've they've done more from this but um yeah man yeah man the they you can, you can just fucking turn off well if you think about it, again, this is, this is a, the, right? in a sense sort of but this this like this like disables or or temporarily because it, it like it basically i feel like it, it kind of overloads the section of your brain that deals with how you interpret right and wrong. And yep. I it, it like suppresses it or sort of like overloads it in a sense. It's like, it, it fills it sort of with noise, but like, I mean, come on, man, that's, you know what a great and, and it has to be, it's very close range. Like it's not, somebody's yeah. not going to beam you from space. Your brain would explode. The power involved to do that would be now, high. but would it be possible but, later, you know, with like, again, more it has to be energy. very close. It yeah. has to be very close, like like maybe something beaming from your light or something. But because like we're talking about magnetic fields that have to be fairly strong, but also fairly close, like the the interference that would be involved in trying to beam it from from any sort of distance would either fry your brain or or get fucked up just from the air and stuff like that. Like it, it's not yep. like that, but still, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy to think alter that a human state using either direct electrical stimuli right like i mean they used to yeah. back in the day they used to fucking do lobotomies with electricity right they'd shock people and kill parts of their brain yeah, man. and it would completely change their personalities and change who they are like they're no yeah. longer the same person after that and all you did was just shock the shit out of them right right so, yeah, yeah, so if you stuff, really think right? about it it's like you can change a person with electricity you can change a person with chemicals right mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. all these things like like a great example this is ssris right if you've ever been on ssris for depression what they do is they basically even out your neurotransmitters in your brain so that you don't feel highs and you don't feel lows. It basically just makes everything in the middle kind of blase. This is hugely advantageous to people that have huge amounts of anxiety and stuff and always feel like their 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 heart is racing, they're freaking out, they're they're not enjoying life at all. You give them SSRIs, it slows them down, evens them out. But it also means that they can't experience like an orgasm to its full extent. They can't experience pain to its full extent. Like it literally evens out everything across the board. But that could also be dangerous because if you have a person and you're worried about them hurting themselves or hurting others, right? And they're in a situation where that is actually something that's coming into play that they're actively thinking about. And you give them enough SSRIs that suppress that mechanism that starts, that, that causes the panic attack that stops them from harming themselves or harming other people. Like the natural, like this is a bad thing. You could, in theory, change the complete outcome of a situation just by giving them that drug, even though yeah. even though it doesn't seem like it's going to change them that much. It's just kind of helping them relax. It's helping um, them, but no, man. you are changing the way they think fundamentally yeah. by doing that. I've been on SSRIs many times Dude. in my life, and Dude. there was a time where I didn't give a shit about anything. I stopped going to work, yeah. like straight up just stopped, didn't want to have sex ever, like wasn't even interested. Yeah, Could, couldn't get a boner if I tried. Like seriously, yeah. it, but, but nothing Lexapro. freaked me out. Like the house could be on fire, and it, yeah, exactly, yeah. it was Lexapro. Um, I just think like what about like I'd just be like whatever. Soldiers, you know? they're constantly wearing a helmet with all kinds of goggles and electronical shit all over the place. If if you fuzzed something into the into the liner of that thing, 
and suppress their morality enough, they'll kill anybody you tell them to. Not only that, because you, you told them food to. Supply, right? Yep. So, soldiers, you control everything they eat when they're on base and they're deployed. All this, their meals, I mean, it's kind of sleeping, their training. It's kind of what military training does anyway, right? They, that they is true. break down I mean, your, your mental faculties look, look, and look stuff. Look at SEAL to training, right? They only let you sleep, what is it, like two hours at a time and they wake you up and then put you through like massive Some of that's training. crazy, yeah, and, and man. it's designed so that you basically develop an oh. autopilot where you just have this automatic response to do the thing that you're supposed yeah. to do without even yeah. questioning or thinking about it on a moment. because yeah, thinking, thinking is too slow. You just have to do it. I mean, that's literally you know. you're conditioning a person. You're literally changing how they would respond to you. So why not? Fundamentally who you they are. No fear. Do the same thing with fear. Yeah. Yep. You know, oh, if you, you find the right place to, oh, to be with magnets, guy doesn't, guy doesn't, isn't going to be afraid with bullets and explosions and stuff happening all around him because it doesn't actually, does just never feels it. Have you ever you wondered know? why when you go into surgery, as soon as they wheel you into the room, you don't feel anxious about the surgery at all and get up and run out? Why? You're about to be cut oh, on by a bunch of people. Know. Like, like, if you, if I, I was unconscious by that point. I was unconscious. Oh, they, they, they by knocked that point. You out before they drug you in. Yeah. So, so in, in I, I was, case, man, I loved every second of that. I would have loved to have been like conscious, but then not feel any of it. Cause, but I know that I would have been annoying as well. The I last know, thing oh, man, I remember was, was telling them that it's time to get the cutting. Like, like, oh, like I was joking with that's, him, and the guy was laughing. The surgeon was creepy. laughing because I came in there. And I was like, <laughs> all right, let's get this party started. Flay me open. Come on, cut me good. Like, and I was like, this is so out of character for me because I was panicked li- moving up to the Oh, thing. really? But what, ha- yeah. Yeah, what happened uh, is the I, nurse, the nurse like saw how place. anxious I was and she came in and she slipped me out of Ann. Oh, like, yeah. without even telling me, she just stuck it in. Now, there's some ethical things there. Like, she probably should have told me, but but she didn't. She 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 injected me with Ativan through my little IV. And I just noticed that I just instantly got relaxed. I kind of got a little oh, warm sure, sensation sure. overcoming me. And I was like, you know what? This This is everything's OK. Like everything's okay. I still felt sharp as attack. I was like, oh, everything, everything's cool. This is awesome. They start wheeling me in the room. I'm laughing. I'm having a, my fucking gown gets caught on the door and pulls off, and my twigs and berries are hanging out. And I think it's the funniest thing ever. And it was weird to see me go through a state of panic where I wanted to not do it. Like I was like, no, no, no I don't want to do this. And it's because that Ativan drug that they give you. Apparently, they give it to soldiers too, snipers, because it'll stop you from having the fear shakes. Like, like you'll, you'll you'll relax um has a similar uh response like diazepam same same type same drug category and so these things like slow you down and relax you to where you no longer have a fear response and the more the drug they give you the less of a fear response you have and apparently you can get to the point where it's like if you gave somebody a healthy injection of this they would just walk into a situation in the middle of a gunfight and wouldn't even question it like, like they honestly, there'd be no consequences. They would think that it's zero, even knowing they'd fully understand that they could die. They just wouldn't care. And we have Man. the drugs to do that. It's like we yeah. can literally alternate between making you crazy and go psychotic, like with something like PCP, right? Where you yeah, overstimulate yeah. their brain, you make them have a panic response, and they think everybody's out to kill them. You can mm-hmm. give them another drug that calms them down so much that they would literally go and diffuse a bomb with pliers watching a fucking movie, a Hollywood movie on how to do it, and they think that they were going to be fine. Uh, I think though that some of the, it would like it would so it would fuzz you out a bit though too like some of your 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 more like because like because like it's it's they're benzodiazepines right yep. so like some That's of that it. some of your higher functioning stuff is going to get kind of clouded and fuzzed out I would think like you're depending not depending on the amount they give you yeah there there is a yeah, point right? where if they give you too much you'll become uh, sedated because it does it does the way the way it acts on your neurotransmitters in your brain or whatever it does simulate that feeling you get before you go to sleep and you know you when you're groggy you can't really think yeah. straight so so yeah you're right you're not going to be as sharp as attack if they give you a whole shitload of it right you might just yeah like you have to, just lay down have to find like the right balance and stuff right right yeah. and that's why anesthesiologists right they they factor in your weight your metabolism they observe you they even measure how much urine's coming out of you so they know like how fast liquids are, are transiting through your kidneys and stuff like there's a lot of math that goes into like figuring out how to give a dose that gives you the proper therapeutic response without going over or under anesthesiologists are in in many cases are paid as much as the surgeons like because they literally have to get you to ride that perfect line where you remain unconscious you don't remember anything but you don't go too far unconscious and you don't and you don't wake up during the surgery it's like that's a fine line right yeah yeah and so so they're really they have to be really good and it's a dance like they they're adjusting shit as as things are going it's not just a one and one and done either like they're they're there so, like, so they have a drug that makes your memory, uh, your short term memory, just just die for a period of time. I believe it. Sure. And um, it's it's a drug that everybody knows. Propofol. 
So propofol is what they give you before surgery, like when you do the countdown, like 10, 9, 8, and then you oh, wake sure. up okay. and you're in the recovery okay. room and no passage of time occurred. Yeah, That's yeah. Propofol. Propofol does that. So they give you a dose of propofol. It kills your short-term memory, but only after the admission point. So when they put it into your body from that point forward, you have short-term memory loss for the duration that they keep that dose in your bloodstream. So they have to keep giving it to you. So through surgery, but that's what makes it so you don't remember surgery. Like if they did their job properly, you should wake up and have no passage of time, no memory of anybody cutting on you, nothing, right? Your body should just blink and you're there. Yeah. Um, if they fuck it up, however, you can actually have memories of pain, even though you're unconscious. You can, and that does happen. That's a scary thing. Some people even have woken up before um, and remembered things, but, or, or woken up and didn't remember things. Like they gave them propofol, but they didn't give enough of the anesthesia. So they wake up, but they don't remember anything. They instantly that put them back dude. under, but they weren't they weren't Yeesh. really conscious. It was like a, it was like they were on autopilot. Crazy shit, super super crazy shit. But they also have drugs. I did I didn't know this until just a couple of years ago. They also have drugs that can wipe out your your um, short term memory before the drug was administered. So they actually have drugs that they can give you that will wipe out hours or days of memory before the drug was administered. So like let's say you had a traumatic experience, right? And they do have drugs that they could do. now ethically they can't do it because of certain laws and stuff, but they do have the drugs that they could actually wipe out that memory. They could kill those memories that are already established. So you don't remember them. Nice. And, and so the fact that we have that much control, like we've discovered these chemical compounds, refined them, and we know how they work to the point where we can actually control, you know, the, the relative amount of time that somebody loses their memory either before or after the drug is administered. Like, just think about like that level of control that we have over the human biology. It's like at that point, I start to wonder, it's like, what is consciousness? What is a soul that people think about? You know, it starts bringing all those questions into light because it's like if somebody can control how I think, what conclusion I come to, they can take my fear away or give me more fear. They can compel me to do a terrible thing or stop me from doing a good thing. If all these things are possible just with chemicals and electrical stimulation or environmental stimulation, then am I really in the driver's seat at the end of the day? Like, like, am I really this autonomous being that has this purpose that's unwavering and I'm really in control of all of my facilities and nobody can change that? I don't believe so. You know, I, I, I really do believe that we're just products of our environment, right? It's like, it's like how yeah. we're raised and the people around the things we learn and the laws we learn and consequences versus rewards. Like all that stuff plays into it and kind of creates like who we are, but that can all be changed in the blink of an eye by somebody with bad intentions in a syringe, right? <laughs> or, or, yeah. or some electrical probes that wants to fry a portion of your brain or with the Neuralink. That's what scares me with shit like the Neuralink is like oh. if that thing got hacked and somebody could just lobotomize you by just shocking you in certain parts of the brain and taking out those those areas. And now now you're like not yourself anymore. Like they just they just changed like how you are, how you respond, how you think, how you observe the world just by like shocking the shit out of your brain. I mean, yeah. that, that would be a lobotomy. I mean, at the end of the day, they would, they'd literally be fucking with the, the transmissions in your brain. I would even argue that even having the device in there in the first place, just having those fibers in, in, inside of your brain yeah. is going to have some level of effect it on does. the chemistry and the neurons, like the electrical yeah. energy traveling between things. It's like if oh, you jam yeah. a big piece of metal between two antennas, it affects with the signal. So you got to imagine that there's some something happening that we're not we're going to find out long term like we're not we may not find out today or tomorrow but long term there are going to be consequences to this thing existing but i will admit that the guy that got the implant he does seem really happy he does seem like he 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 does seem like he's better off than he was before now again could could he be compelled to be that way because you know he agreed to certain things and agreed not to disparage him and blah 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 or they could take the device out of his head and you know and kick him out of the trial forever they, they have a lot of pull to make sure that he can't say anything negative about it so that's why i take take it with a grain of salt right yeah, but it yeah. does seem like he genuinely you know overall right it does seem like he's happy that he went through with it it does seem like he has a capability that he didn't have before or at least it's a new way of of doing things that he likes that he enjoys um so so if you're somebody who wants to take that risk and you're somebody who thinks that that's a valuable reward and the information you know is accurate like like what's being compelled is you know found out to be accurate and that people are freely giving their responses not being controlled by uh by Neuralink, i think it's a great option i think it's okay for people to have that if they want to have an external brain interface an internal brain interface but i think that it needs to be conveyed to people what the true um, yeah, dude. That's dangers it. are involved here, and I don't think that that's going to be something that's going to be heavily conveyed. Just like with the autopilot, like you look at Tesla and autopilot, and it's like it's never conveyed as, dude, this thing could kill you. 
Like it's never advertised yeah. that way. Like, hey, twelve thousand dollars and get autopilot and the car can drive itself. It's like they never say, but there is a good chance that this thing's gonna turn off one second before plowing into the back of a semi and kill you and your family, or it's gonna hit pedestrians and kill them, and you're gonna be responsible. They don't put yeah. that forward because they're not gonna sell very many cars if they're honest. And I feel like with Neuralink, it's the same way. They're going to say all the good things, but they're not necessarily gonna say anything about the bad things. Yeah. It's like it's like, you know, is this guy, you know, is this guy gonna start developing seizures? Um uh, like another thing too is like how I, I'm kind of curious like how the thing like I, it's, I'm guessing it's charged by that thing that's next to his head like I noticed or maybe that's an antenna for like close transmission or whatever <laughs> but he has a thing that's yeah. right next to his head so you know the thing isn't transmitting like cell phone ranges right, right. Um, but I'm wondering if that also charges it or like you know he has to stick a button on there to charge it directly or something I'm curious how it charges up and how long it lasts on a charge he's got to think real hard he's got to just you know <laughs> it's self-powered he's good he does a, he does his times tables before going to bed and it charges yeah, that up does does bro like fall asleep while playing civ and wake up and his hard drives formatted or he just downloaded like right? all the porn off Pornhub or something Man, like now see that'd be kind of interesting like like the johnny mnemonic thing where like uh you know you can store data? data in your in your Ooh. meat brain would be interesting or being able to pull it out you know what i mean that'd be cool but again like that's that's where like I, I like the idea of like a persicom like a little some sort of little robot guy or or maybe just a, a better you know, uh, phone assistant thing where, um, it's it just uh, that's man. If uh, that's that's a killer, that would be a freaking gold mine for myself personally. Is like a better virtual assistant, where like I can just tell it things and it helps helps me to remember things and tell me what to do in a day and that kind of stuff. Oh, hey, don't forget you got to do this thing and um, you know, I think that, that would be stuff. the least invasive and coolest thing. But I still yeah. think you'd have to deal with the consequences of you would start becoming attached to it. Like in any way, there's no way, right? It'd sure. become like a dog hey, man. eventually. Yeah, and right. Uh, and I'm okay with that. It and starts fucking with it and slowly moving you in the direction of doing objectives that they want. And you don't realize you're being manipulated. I mean, that's certainly a possibility. I mean, you already kind of get some of that with like social manipulation. It's already happening with AI. You know, like, like the or, bias, right? You know, AI bias yeah. is a big problem. Well, and peer that pressure. Like, it gives peer you an pressure answer and whatnot. That, yeah, exactly. You know, that kind of a thing. Um so I mean yes, total totally agree. There the risk there and and whatnot. Though it and I could see where it'd be a bigger risk because of the more positive emotional attachment to your AI assistant. Um, yeah, totally. Um, so it, uh, uh, talk about the XZ back yeah, door. What is that? that sounds, I haven't even heard of that. If, um, is this NSFW? Am I gonna have to close my curtains? Let me see here. Uh, oh, malicious oh, back, SSH oh, backdoor back your XZ. XZ Linux World's data compression library. All right, oh. let's see. This is 20, oh, 22 hours ago. This is brand new. Okay. Yeah. So Red Hat, in all caps, it's a distribution of Linux for you guys that don't know. Stop oh, using man. any Fedora Rawhide instances. Oh, here. I Red found Hat an explain it. Oh, you want to like read like that a, one? Yeah, yeah. And yeah read it that like one. Five. Read that one. So I, I, this is the top one on Reddit. Uh, from nine hours ago xz is a compression utility similar in concept to making zip files its main use is lossless compression for command line utilities which is to say that it guarantees that when it is uncompressed the result is a byte for byte clone of the original data it's used by a lot of important security software and is included as a library for many other utilities a library is just a term used for tools used by other tools uh on 2 23 so february 23rd a trusted developer on the project committed added some code that was obfuscated, not clear in what it does. And since that developer was trusted, that code made its way into the release of XZ that people could install. It's unclear whether that person did it intentionally or had their system compromised or some other explanation, but it doesn't look good. The backdoor part comes into play with one of the main ways XZ is used, SSH. So that's a secure socket something. Mm -hmm. Right, SSH, uh, SSH is, that, basically. is an encrypted protocol between two machines where text commands can be exchanged. Okay, so yeah. they did go on to explain that, allowing a user to interact with the server. Um, it's a very common utility. Blah blah blah. Eli five version. You are having a private text exchange with a friend, but someone slipped into the convo and is reading your texts. Uh, even sending new ones to your friend, telling them lies and to do things they shouldn't, all as if it was coming directly from you. People may have installed a compromised version during the month this was in the wild. However, many of the safer versions of Linux, the kinds that run on servers, take six plus months to include new updates like this. So it's only people who are running the very latest of everything that would have been affected. That doesn't mean someone who installed it was actually compromised, just that they were at risk during the time. So it sounds to me like it, its self-propagation plan was to just mimic you, reach out to your contacts, and convince them to also install the virus. Unknown. Or just, just spreading through the distro on its own, really. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. 
Also, there was a fuzzer that would catch it, but bad actors submitted code to disable it also. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. So, okay, I want the way Guppy from Bobiverse or a system agent from oh, Ready dude, Player One. If you if you haven't if you haven't I recommend the audiobooks for the Bobiverse books. The guy the the narrator for that is tremendous. One of my favorite audiobook narrators. Um but yeah, the, the oh. guppy is like a uh an AI helper because he's basically this guy Bob uh gets his consciousness uploaded into a cube um and in like a thousand years in the future he's he his consciousness is controlling like a a a ship it's this big massive 3d printer ship thing and they're supposed to like go out and like find new places for humans to be and this and that um and then there's all kinds of adventures and stuff it's really really cool really really cool set of books and stuff i think it's it's really fun it's not real heavy sci-fi stuff it's 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 very fun um and the bob the bobs are fucking great um but the guppy part is there's like a it's like an ai butler i think if i remember right that's kind of built into the operating system it's, it's really fun it's really fun i highly recommend it what oh, distro oh. has been compromised not not the linux distro itself but the, the yeah the xz yeah it said it, 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 they were just they were just noting the higher end distributions like red hat and debian are like some of the highest used distributions in yeah. the world and so, but but it affects any distribution. It's the tool itself. It's the XZ yeah. tool. If you have the latest version of it, um, apparently this, this least, backdoor has been in for a month or more. They're saying, yeah, it sounds like from the end about from it, the 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 bad code was was put in there on February twenty third. So about a month. It's been. And if you're compromised, it's a backdoor, which means that most people that would exploit SSH. it would do it in a way you don't know what's happening. So chances are, if you're infected, you don't even know it. Yep. uh let's see do they have a way to detect it like as a signature release now to detect it uh it sounds it says somebody they they're backtracking to a state where he wasn't involved and build back up from there um there'll be some more eyes on the code than before nice thing about open sources you can't hide stuff for long he was found out because a guy wondered why his machine had a higher idle load he checked found ssh using more cpu than before and traced it down to xz then he had a look at the source saw the back door so nobody looked there before shit. because the maintainer was trusted edit he is called andreas frund and is a developer for postgres a database system he wanted to profile some changes in the server that is researching where the program spends his time and so check for improvements for that you need a quiet system. oh so the guy who i think the guy who found it is named on andreas frund. there's been some interesting exploits that have come out lately and like uh, you probably heard about this one at puget did you did you hear about the latest exploit at puget the the one that uses um uh not bios the other thing uh Come the on, logo brain. the logo fail thing yeah 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 yeah. the logo yeah. that yeah where it basically does yeah. a corrupt logo that, that launches trip? arbitrary code isn't that a trip so, so like so that, what is it called the problem EFI? there is uh yeah the so, UEFI. So yeah, your efi is basically like they replace bios as the old system like yeah, nobody like when you boot your operating anymore. system the bios is how the how the hardware abstraction layer communicates to the hardware right through the bios well that's been replaced with something called efi which is basically like the next generation bios that's a standalone operating system with file system capabilities yeah, and where is it? drivers that was a and all kinds of shit. so yeah. apparently there was an exploit Logo on certain exploit. motherboards or certain certain versions of the efi where you could inject the logo when you boot windows have you ever been on a system where you buy where instead of the windows logo it shows the logo of the company that built the computer yeah. that's because or it, the it looks neat. or what? the or the the bios too like yeah, it's the american yeah, mega trends or whatever up on your screen yeah. So that image, yeah. when 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 that's loading during well, when Windows is loading, it goes into the EFI, pulls that image, and displays it while it's so booting. Crazy. So somebody figured out that they could add code to that to arbitrarily point to and run other functions, so they could drop a, a payload in EFI, and then they could drop a payload on the hard drive somewhere. And then while it was booting, before you were even into Windows, like early in the kernel loading cycle, when it yeah, loaded this image, it would early. load the payload off the hard drive, but it would load it in a place where it never showed up under Task Manager. It never showed up. Like, it was because completely running autonomously as a thread outside of anywhere where you could see in Windows. So people could backdoor your system, yeah. run shit, and you would never be able to find it. Like, yeah. it, unless you were sniffing packets at your router and looking at those packets and be like, wait, I never connected there. You never know. It, it happens during the uh, driver execution environment. Yeah, phase. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. That's Exposed crazy. Ox uses Asus. Um, I, actually, funny enough, I do think that that is the board in my computer right now is the Asus board. But I'm agnostic. I 
whatever I can. And apparently, a lot <laughs> of I get the cheap from work, actually. <laughs> so, so most of the motherboards that were vulnerable to this attack don't have new BIOSes because they're discontinued boards that have been abandoned. So there's a and, ton and of people out there with computers that the can't even is, catch this. They can't even defend uh, it. Uh, sort of, though. It's like, hang on. It's like, let's first off how do they get it in there first right okay so uh a hacker creates a fake logo potentially identical to a logo of a trusted device the counterfeit logo is then embedded in a rogue agent masking its true hostile intentions the malicious agent bearing the replicated logo fools the system into trusting it once again the attacker has free reign over the system so how so do they like get a regular virus there? so just like how a regular you, virus but, you run an executable but, on your computer that you download like an email attachment it then puts the payload in efi as a part of executing and then next time you boot your computer, it loads the it loads the payload. But you'd have to, basically you'd have to be using uh like a a a broken or a fake BIOS update. Like this isn't just something that they can just do, right? No, so like, appara yeah. apparently the only yeah. thing you need for this exploit <laughs> is to give administrative privileges. That's it. So so like when you run the payload and it says, Hey, do you want to run as administrator? You just have to click OK because it needs admin permissions or whatever to run the API to write the EU EFI. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I suppose it could just be it could be any any random app or something. Um, the only way to remove it, the only way to remove it is you have to completely reflash the EFI or yeah. the BIOS. You know, they you know they still call it BIOS. Yeah, it'd be a BIOS update, yeah. it because even if you go in and you reset EFI, if you go into like you know the settings and you say reset all settings. Oh, it doesn't remove though. that JPEG. It doesn't. Yeah, no. remove it. So wow, yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's. I mean, at the time though, so I, I was scrubbing through the the support article that Puget Sys has published for it. Uh, at the time, this was God, early early December that this was only been replicated in a laboratory environment and has not been witnessed or reported in, in the wild. At the time, um, so but still very very crazy, very crazy. Yeah, I mean, and then yeah, it says the real fix is to upgrade your firmware. Know. Like you wouldn't know because it, it runs, it, it creates a thread. So basically as Windows is booting, huh. before Windows creates the layer, loads the layer that manages the threads and memory management and all that, it's actually loading this like at the same time it's loading the kernel. So it's completely hidden. It's like compartmentalized. It's running in its own thread. It's got its own memory. And Windows has no way to, to show it to the user. Like if you look in Task Manager, it's not there. If you kill all the tasks on the computer, you would not kill this so one. So weird. You wouldn't even see it under a debugger. That's what was really crazy about this. Even a kernel debugger would not see the malicious code running. Yeah. Just, it's so so th that's what made this thing so scary is it's like, dude, if you're infected, you really have no fucking way of knowing other than running. I guess they released a utility. I haven't tried it yet. I probably should run it on mine and see if I'm fucked. But I don't, I don't even have that feature in my BIOS where it overrides the logo. Um, but I should check anyways. I guess there's an EXE that you run. Which again, you know, I'm sure there's a million infected versions of that tool out there. So people downloading it and checking it are probably infecting themselves. You got to be careful about that shit too. But apparently the detector would look into the UAFI and see if the image contained the specific code that would that would exploit this. Let me see, hmm. let me see if I can actually find like a link to the official. Let's see here. Uh, U, UEFI. I posted, I posted the link to the binarily. Those are, those are the people that at least uh, Puget credits to finding this um problem let's see here so ars technica uefi booting windows and linux devices can be ha oh, even linux too i guess that would make sense because it's not relying yeah, on the hardware part to run anything it's literally creating its own environment and running at boot and then here's uh here's a different link as well for like the precursor to this it's called logo fail yeah uh, okay, I found the tool. Okay, so finding logo fail, the dangers of image parsing during system boot. Um, and the tool, okay, so confirm secure boot UEFI true. Uh, let's see, your chipset should only be used on systems. It should be installed and deployed. Here, let me, here, there's a YouTube video here that's probably of use. Here, share, copy. Here's a video that's if you funny. guys want to want to look into this. This looks like the video that Ars Technica is pointing to, so. Yeah. I don't expect this to be uh, a bad one, but yeah, binary research team investigate vulnerable image parsing components across the entire UFI firmware ecosystem and find all major device manufacturers are impacted on both x86 and ARM based devices. Makes sense. More Again, it, it just is attacking the it's attacking the image parser. Yeah, I, I wonder how many systems have been infected by this. Because I mean, there's a I lot of people that will just run attachments and shit. That's why so many. I mean, in that it. sense, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to see where the tool is that detects this. Logo fail, security impacts, image parsing during system boots. 
Here, how do I detect logo fail? Let's see here. Da, 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 da. How do I detect if I have logo fail? Okay, Man, how this is, your it's, it's from logo fail. Here we go. So, okay, the binary research team, a firmware supply chain security platform company, has uncovered a constellation of security vulnerabilities called logo fail hiding in the unified extensions firmware interface or UEFI uh, that work on ARM x86 in both Windows and Linux systems. I learned something today because I thought this was only when Windows loaded the logo. I mm -hmm. didn't realize Linux was also vulnerable. Yeah, because uh, it's again, it's it's the it's pre OS yep. boot. It's also it's this, been has been, this vulnerability's been in for years. This isn't like a vulnerability yeah, that happened after a certain firmware update. It's somebody was talking network. about. Uh, it says the most famous attack was presented at Black Hat USA in 2009 by Rafał Yotz. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Polish last name. I can't. And oh, Alexander Koreshkin. the secure boot even. So if you have Microsoft right. Secure Boot enabled, it'll walk right by. Same thing for Intel Secure it. Boot. Yeah, it's before that even. Because it, it, they show um, in the second link that I posted there from Binary, yep. um, they show where where the where the attack actually happens. And it's wow. sort of in a bit of a flow chart, sort of. And it's it's pre OS. It's pre because think about it. Think when that when yeah. think when the, that logo shows up. It's before think it, it even before before your drive drive list even shows yeah. up. That that image pops up. Dude, there's 29 separate vectors. 15 of them were exploitable by arbitrary code execution, meaning you're just running whatever's on attached to your email. You inject in there. Um, yeah. And it says it, the payload can also be inside of a bitmap. A GIF, a, bump, a, a JPEG, GIF, a JPEG, PTX, or a PTX TGA. Or TGA. So, yep. so even the different file formats, it's vulnerable. Just uh, any of the it. image parsing, any of the image parsers, yeah. Yeah, once arbitrary code execution is achieved during the DXE phase, it's game over for platform security. From here on out, the attacker has full control over the memory and the disk of the targeted device, thus including the operating system that will be started. So yeah, you're right. It's before it the operating system. in with the drivers. Load. Yeah. Once arbitrary code execution is achieved during the DXE phase. Wow, so a kernel debugger literally cannot detect this. That's why. No, because it's even before that. Control or I guess it'd be target device. It'd be early in the kernel in, in implementation or when it's coming online, when the kernel is coming up, because it's pre it it tags along with the driver in install part, the DXE, the driver. What do they call that? I, I missed the name of it. The driver something execution. No, no, but that's, I think that's only for the injection. I, uh, I think that's to get the yeah, virus in no. the UEFI. I don't yeah. think that's once it, it's, once it's in, I it, think it's booting and bootstrapping the OS. The OS is loading on top of it. Yeah, yeah, because it says it executes malicious code during the driver execution environment phase. So prior to the operating system booting up. Yeah, and I bet you that's, actual, that's probably UEFI. That's probably a UEFI stage. Like, yeah, like probably it setting up before Low it level. loads the kernel. Yeah, loading wow. low-level drivers and stuff for drives and and all and things like that. Yeah. So, okay. It says it says now for some good news. Macs, smartphones, and other devices that don't use UEFI are not vulnerable. Okay. Well, duh. <laughs> uh, most Dell computers aren't vulnerable. That's interesting. Interesting. Uh, if you do custom, have vulnerable custom machines, BIOSes or something, you first need to make sure no one can get into the device Excellent. in the okay. first place. That level of protection means patching your operating system and programs against all known attacks. If you're running Windows, update your antivirus protection. These programs can't stop logo fail but they can stop you from getting malware that will load logo fail onto your system. However, they won't yeah, see, help you if it's already in place. That's the trick is you'd, you'd have to have, you'd have to have downloaded something sketchy that then injects what's itself that, into that. Out. What's crazy is but antivirus yeah. can't even detect it because it's technically no, in the UEFI. It's, it's not in the file system. So when it's scanning the files, yeah. it's scanning memory, it doesn't see it. It's completely. Well, and it sounds it. like, it sounds like it's, it's sort of replacing the, the logo right the, that image file it, it sort of replaces yeah. that image file wherever that may be that's the only way um, to detect it the only way to detect it is to have a tool that cracks uefi <laughs> opens that logo and looks look at, at it to see if the exploit's yeah, go, in there uh could you just wipe your os and reinstall it? no it's not because no. it's, it's not os level it's bios level so you'd yeah. have to which that's that's the recommended fix update your bios yeah, li li literally, you have fine. to flash the BIOS. That's the only yeah. way to purge this. Well, Either... no, you could also fix it by having a, having a utility reflash the original image back into UEFI. Yeah, you can but, uh, you can either flash back. It's like some some motherboards will just have a button on the back that it'll say BIOS flashback. Yeah, you hold that down for ten seconds or whatever, it'll start to blink, and you'll go back to the original manufacturer, like the the one point or whatever manufacturer, whatever yeah, whatever BIOS version came with the board. Yeah. Um, by default, 
uh, and then update to the latest version and that kind of thing. Yeah. This is crazy. I got man. I need to check my shit because I have quite. A I'm way behind on my BIOS. I tell you that right now. I'm, yeah, they I'm, haven't made a new I think, BIOS I think my, over two years. I think my BIOS is two years old now. Here, how, <laughs> how do I know if I have logo fail? Let's hear. Well, um, I mean, you, well, yeah, you man, you download all kind of weird, sketchy shit. Dude, you, should, no, you don't even know that. <laughs> you should be concerned. You know, you know what scares me about this though is most people open, including myself. Like if I'm opening a dangerous binary, I do it in a VM in a VM uh-huh. sandbox. This yeah. would not th- this would bypass the sandbox. Yeah, because since it works on the UEFI, uh, well, no, because that'd be emulated too, right? So, so within um, the yeah, probably the, the sandbox UEFI would probably also emulated. So it would basically you. just infect the emulated UEFI. So it still and then you get scrubbed when you turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so no, I still think you'd be safe if you were in. You'd a probably be okay. Um. So here, so so Puget Systems did the cool write up. You already posted the link to Puget Systems, right? Uh, no, no, I went straight to the where they got it from. Binary. You, you mind if I post the Puget Systems link? Too, no, so no, no that means right, cool. do it. Yeah, Puget Systems does really good stuff of publishing their information. Like, that's one thing I like about them is they don't keep that shit to themselves. <laughs> they just publish everything. Uh, I want to see. Okay, so a hacker creates a fate logo, potentially identical to the logo of the trusted device, which would make sense because it kind of tipped you off. You rebooted your computer and it was a different logo. <laughs> the hey, what is logo that? is then embedded in a rogue agent masking the true hostile intentions. The malicious agent bearing the replicated logo fools the system into trusting it. Once inside, the attacker has free reign over the system, leading to all kinds of chaos. Uh, let's see here. So restrict app software downloads. Beware of unknown apps. See, there's a lot of stuff on how not to get it, but I don't see anything on what to do if you do have it or how do you detect if you have it. Yeah, that's the part is like, like is, I want to uh, find a clear how do I, how like, do I detect it? yeah, I want to find a clear like, how do I detect this shit and make sure that it that I don't have it? Because it's like if you have it, then you need to get it off, right? Right. Uh, so you update update your BIOS. I mean, updating your BIOS would definitely do it, but then you lose all your settings and you gotta go back and redo them and all and stuff, which can be a pain in the ass. Save the profile, um, but let's save see your here, settings though. profile and reload the profile. Let's see here. Well, the truth is, Mike, th- this computer has a bug with the motherboard where it like if you unplug power, you lose power while it's running. You have to basically hit the BIOS reset button anyways. Oh, bogus! I mean, you can you can export those profile settings as well onto a USB. That is true. I, I I probably should do that because I hate having to go in. I, I've done it so many times now that your, I can memorize like the your, 20 pages I have to do. Your original, well, actually, your original Puget Systems USB tools probably wouldn't be compatible with the latest BIOS if we do have a profile saved on probably. it. Probably it would it would likely not um, load. So I do I do notice that like I've done BIOS updates before where my profiles all disappear. Like they'll be there yeah. for some updates and then they disappear for others. And I think that's yeah. just because they're not compatible anymore. Uh, God, I cannot find a freaking tool for just outright detecting logo fail, which is kind of freaky to me. Uh, hey, anybody in chat, do you guys know? I mean, you don't have to post a link or anything, but mm. like, are there any utilities out there to detect this thing? Or is it just like if you have it, you just have to assume you have it and reflash your BIOS to be on the safe side? Because because I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that there isn't just like a straight up, you know, from from the man, motherboard manufacturers themselves. Like. That's kind of fucked up. Like, why can't you just I mean, if you can put the image in in the first place into UEFI, why couldn't you load it and check it to see if that's in there? If the exploits there. That's that's the part I guess I don't understand is it seems like if you could open the image file, you could just look at it and see if the exploits in there um let's see here yeah i'm not finding anything okay here well let me let me me ask ai i'm curious okay here how do uh is hold on here is there a tool i can use to see if i'm infected with logo fail on my windows 11 pc let's let's see if uh if if open ai gpt can okay so it's antivirus well antivirus programs cannot directly stop logo fail they can prevent you from getting mal again yeah it says the antiviruses can't detect it they can just prevent you from getting the exe that would deploy it uh unfortunately there's no current external device specifically designed to detect logo fail keep an eye out for future developments use built-in windows utility to check the health of your system dism no that ain't gonna do shit uh let's see regularly check for firmware updates from your device manufacturer be cautious about your sources of firmware updates consult your security experts yeah there's like nothing dude so like once this thing's in place you pretty much just have to but you don't know if it's there that's the thing is like this is weird well how do you detect it with your eyes you can't that's the whole point is you can't detect it with your eyes that's what makes this thing so dangerous 
like like you it, it won't show up under device manager antivirus can't see it because the antivirus is loaded on top of it this is completely hidden from the operating system so not even a kernel debugger can detect it as far as i know the only way to know that you would have it would be you'd have to break open uefi download the image out of it which you can because you can put an image in so obviously you should mm -hmm. be able to read and get an image out right yeah. um and then check that image like look at the image and see if there's any data in it that doesn't pertain to just the image itself. actually there was i i know um Fiji Systems was actually investigating doing that exact thing, putting having a custom splash screen when the, the computer loads up. Yeah, they should. Uh, like, at the BIOS level, at the BIOS level like that, yeah. Yeah, because it's just a, it's just a file, right? Acor according to this, it says it's just it's a in there. File. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. I don't know where. I, I don't know that you could just like go dig for it. I don't know Let's see. how that How'll would work. It's, it's, but I it is in the package, at least. I don't think you, I don't think it's just like a ping that's that's sitting there on your hard drive somewhere. It's it's embedded in the BIOS code. It's not like a folder in somewhere. Okay, so here I already found an article. So how to change the boot logo in Windows 11? Uh, uh, that's the Windows. That's the Windows boot thing. This right? one's saying how to do it with UEFI though. Let's oh see shit, anymore. that might be something else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stuff. Is it possible to change the boot logo? In case you're unfamiliar, the boot logo for Windows 11 symbol that appears whenever you turn on your computer, changing that logo isn't as simple as going into the settings menu and messing with a few things. To change the boot logo, you have to restart your computer in advanced startup mode, go into the BIOS menus, you have to download the hack BGRT app from GitHub, and then swap there the logo go. in UEFI. This guide will show you how to change the boot logo for Windows 11 computer. It involves checking if your computer has UEFI, which is required, so, so yeah, so this is a tool. Somebody wrote a GitHub utility called, um, and it's open source, so you can go look and see if it has any viral payload or anything. <gasps> that's how they get you. So hack. That's, that's the guy. That's the logo fail right there. Don't do that. Yeah, right. Probably. <laughs> so hack BGRT is the app on GitHub. Here, let me go. I'm going to go look at it. So GitHub, GitHub.com, hack BGRT. Uh, says does not exist as a project. Here's, <clears throat> I just spelled it wrong. Here, let me do a search. Uh, no, I found it. Okay, so hack BGRT, Windows bootloader changer. Okay, summary. When booting on a UEFI-based computer, Windows will show the vendor-defined logo, which is stored in the UEFI firmware, in a section called Boot Graphics Resource Table, or BGRT. It's usually very difficult mm -hmm. to change this image permanently, but a custom UEFI application may be used to override it during the boot. Hack BGRT does exactly that. It says, note, the origin logo is often visible for a moment before hack BGRT has started. This is expected. Please do not report it as a bug. So basically, it'll show the old logo for a, for just a second, <laughs> and then it'll flip to the new one. It says, uh, let's see. Okay, so secure boot instructions. Hack BGRT is not approved by Microsoft. Instead, hack BGRT comes with a shim bootloader, which allows manual, manu manually select hack BGRT as a trusted program. After installing hack BGRT and rebooting your computer, you have to follow the instructions in shim.md to achieve this. The steps cannot be automated. That is the whole point of secure boot. Although hack BGRT is self-aligned with a certificate or self-signed with a certificate, it is not advisable to enroll foreign certificates directly into your firmware. Don't do this. The shim bootloader is maintained by Red Hat. Ooh, and don't do that. It includes a signed copy of shim is extracted from the Debian GNU Linux. Many thanks to the maintainers. Okay, so apparently it uses a Linux utility to do this. Get the latest. Okay, so it says get the latest release from the release page. Start setup EXE and follow these instructions. The installer will launch paint for editing the image. If Windows later restores the original bootloader, just reinstall. If you wish to change the image or other configuration, just reinstall. For advanced settings, edit config.txt before installing. No extra support provided. After installing, read the instructions in shim.mb and reboot your computer. So it looks like what this is doing is it, it the utility runs every time you boot your computer and then it swaps the image in place. That's why you see the old image for an instance. So it doesn't persist. So this isn't like logo fail where it persists every boot. It's basically shimming itself in each time the computer boots. Um, let's see here. So multi-boot configurations, uh, run setup, install the files enabling, configure the bootloader under EFI, hack BGRT loader EFI. Uh, -da, configuration, if you only need one image, just edit splash BMP. Oh, apparently you can use different images for different operating systems too. You can do a Linux and a Windows image that are different. <laughs> That's this cool. is advanced users may be able to edit config.txt. Uh, let's see here. In which case, one is picked at random. The installer copies and converts the images. For example, if your file name is my.jpg, copy to the folder, same folder, set up exe, and the image set, and then set the image path in config.txt to path equals my image.jpg before running the installer. If you copy the image file to ESP manually, note that the image must be 24 bit BMP file with 54 byte header. 
That's a true color BMP3. Okay, so they're saying that there's a way that you can do this directly by just copying it in the UEFI, but you have to have it be a very specific format where this tool will just take any image and make it the proper format. Ah. Um, here, I'll, I'll link this tool if you guys want to mess around with it. It looks like it's highly rated. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's got, uh, let's see here, one branch. So, yeah, it's been for 238 times. It's watched by 48 people, and it has 2,100 stars. So that would, if, if this thing had a virus or some bad nice. payload in the code, they would, they'd be reporting it at that, at that level. So uh, Windows Boot Manager not cool. found a bug that's currently opened against it. Um, somebody's saying it didn't work for them recently. Let's see, what did they say? The real BCD entries are actually not relevant. Unfortunately, and somewhat misleadingly, BCD edit is also used to configure UEFI firmware entries and show them along the BCD entries. This entry, which Windows... Oh, okay. So what it's so you know BCD edit for like editing the the boot order in Windows. Uh -huh. Apparently, it uses that to to boot this utility, which does the EFI swap each time the computer boots, and then it launches Windows. Hmm. So it's basically just shimming itself in between Windows booting up to replace the image each time. So it doesn't look like it's copying the image into UEFI permanently. What it looks like it's doing is on every boot, it's just temporarily overriding it. And then, and then when you reboot the computer, it has to be shimmed and it has to run again. So I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it, maybe it's difficult to, like you said, it's difficult to actually put that image in place. Yeah. That's secure boot. Like it has to be something that's done like by the vendor, so that people don't use it as an attack vector. So maybe this isn't as easy as people are letting on to exploit. Um, but but I'm definitely kind of worried about it now. I'll be honest. Uh, I didn't really give it much thought when I first saw it, but now I'm like. Eh. I don't know, man. This thing's completely undetectable. You know, if you have a fast internet connection, you know, and, and people are using it maliciously, like, you're probably not going to notice the overhead. Uh, okay, what is this? Okay, so Windows report. This is the I'm going to get going, man. Here, too. What's that? I'm going to get going. Oh, shit, yeah. It's time for you to bust out of here, bro. You enjoy the rest of your weekend, sir. Thanks. I will. Happy Easter, everybody. Oh, yeah, it is Easter. Is it tomorrow? Tomorrow yeah. Easter? Damn, tomorrow. Bro, time, time flies when you're not having fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, peace out, bro. Right on, bye, everybody. Bye, bye. See ya. Follow me on social media. Follow him everywhere. Give the man a bone. And then there's one. Although we can probably get rid of that image now. Here, let me see. Where's a random image? Is that it? There we go. All right. Hey, would you guys excuse me for just a moment to go go take a little tinkle time? I'll be right back. Here, let's see. Do I got do I got a music thing on here? No, I don't. You guys will just have to deal with silence for a second. can i live stream me taking a piss no i think that's against the rules wait do i have that same tomato filter on this one too here hold on let me see if i can fix this um oh excuse me let's see edge browser no that's not it Where's my image? Is it this? Filters? No, I don't have a filter on this one. Why, why do I look like a tomato? What's going on? And why am I all pixelated and shit now? Is it going to clear up? Man, I got to find a better solution than VDO. This is, this, is, this is killing me, Smalls. This is not, this is not working the greatest. I'm going to zoom that out a little bit now that we're super, super blown in there. <sighs> Oh, I'm trying to get used to this new monitor layout. It's so weird. Hey, take it easy, GTB. Oh, I think I said that earlier. Oh, wait. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I need to catch up in chat. All right, there we go. Sorry, I was way up high in the chat there. And then there was one. James Shana said, what is the weirdest medication you've ever taken? Like your experience being on meds was the weirdest? It's a good question. Uh, 
Like you talking like long term or short term? Because I'd say the SSRIs are probably the weirdest ones, but they take a long time to kick in. But once they do, it's like you you notice that you just don't like everything's just super mellow and chill and nothing matters and it, it, it kind of ruins you in a way. I mean, it's good for a lot of people. It helps a lot of people, but for me, it just like killed my creativity, made me so I wasn't horny anymore. It was weird. I didn't like I didn't like the way it made me feel. Uh Except for while I was on it, I liked the way it made me feel. But then when I came off it, I realized how I, much I didn't like it. Do I recommend Ozempic? Um, I tried it for a while and had some adverse reactions to it. But as long as you tolerate it well, uh, it's it, you'll lose weight. I mean, there's no question. The evidence is there. I mean, I think for the 14 days I tried it, I lost like 20 pounds. But then I gained back even more after I came off it. Just just be aware that you need to make sure that you have the money or your insurance covers it so you can keep getting it. Because as soon as you come off it, the weight just comes right back. So um, <laughs> sadly, it's one of those medications where it's like you have to keep taking it to, to get the benefits. Because whatever caused your weight gain before is going to just come back once you stop taking it. Uh, but yeah, I've seen people lose 40 pounds in a month, 40, 60 pounds in a single month. Uh, it's not really healthy to lose that much weight that fast, but, uh, Ozempic does it cause it basically just kills your appetite entirely. For me, sadly, it made me really nauseous. Like I already kind of struggle with nausea from like the other medications I take, but it amplified it by like a million percent. Like, so I was losing weight cause I literally wouldn't eat like at all. Like, cause I just always felt sick. So um, so if you want to save some money on Ozempic, just like, I don't know, get, get some castor oil and just take a, take a shot of it every couple of hours so that you're just constantly nauseous and feel sick and you won't want to eat. <laughs> so, so there you go. Weight, weight loss advice. Uh, but yeah, it, it just, it just depends on if you can, uh, how are the screens going? They're, they're doing okay. I mean, they're, they're definitely budget screens. I mean, there's no way to get around that fact. Like, you do get some you do get some color shift towards the edges sitting this close to it so it's not a completely uniform picture um the brightness is only 400 cd squared or whatever whatever they call them not lumens but whatever the cd one is um luminance or whatever 400 uh, so they're not particularly bright uh they do do 120 hertz hdr free sync 4x4x4 four by four by four chroma the color and the black levels are fantastic because it's QLED. Um, so the black levels are very inky. I love that about it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, setting them up, the, the menu system sucks. You have to really fuck with a whole bunch of stuff to get it to calibrate right. But yeah, once you get it set up right and you get it calibrated right, yeah, they're really good uh, nits. That's what it is, 400 nits. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're good. I wish I could get the third screen so that I could get the whole wall going like I had before, but I just, I can't afford it right now, so maybe one day um but they are cheap i mean for the price for the price i can't you know not recommend them i mean they're they're 490 dollars or whatever shipped on amazon and it's a 50 inch screen that's a hundred it does 120 hertz at 4k 4x4x4 chroma hdr 10 uh 12 bit color and it'll also do uh 1080p at 240 hertz which is another thing not a lot of these big screens can do. And those are that's native. That's not interpolated. That's actually input frequency, not not like it doing frame doubling with lag and stuff like that. Also, I haven't done a latency test, but I can't notice. I, I've noticed zero latency using it. It seems very snappy. And it does have a game mode that disables the internal processing. So uh, the only thing you do have to mess with on them is there's a lot of gimmicks with these Vizio screens. Like in the menu system, they have this thing called tone mapping. You want to turn it down to zero. It makes everything look brighter than it is, but it's only because it's changing the gamma curve to blow out all the whites at the top end to shift everything closer to white so that it looks like everything is brighter on the screen. But what it's really doing is just removing all of the depth that HDR normally gives you. Um, and it's dynamically shifting it around. So if you try to calibrate your monitor, it'll just chase this weird curve and you'll end up with like a really fucked up calibration. Uh, just disable it entirely. So just tonal curve, zero sharpness, zero, leave everything else stock, calibrate, and then you'll be good to go. Um, uh, awesome dude. Sad display cal is dead. I mean, display cal still works fine if you're not HDR. If you're doing SDR display calibration, it's still just fine. But I mean, everything's HDR nowadays, right? So, um, so far the best calibration I found was uh, I finally coughed up the ten dollars. Uh, I mean, under protest, <laughs> but I gave another ten dollars to X Right because they decided to stop supporting the i1 display cal or the display calibration utility. 
So then they moved it over to a ten dollar color. Was it called Color Cal or something? Anyways, I paid the nine dollars for that. That one actually works really good. You can go in and just you know select uh, um, what is it uh, 20, 2020 color space HDR ten. Select your white point, hit calibrate, throw the puck on there, and you're good to go. And it creates a either version two or version four ICC profile. Works great in Windows and you know Bob's your uncle. And it'll create an SDR profile and an HDR profile, so you can you know switch between them seamlessly and still keep all your colors accurate and looking similar. Uh. Oh, sorry. Oh, I also found um I also found another really cool utility on GitHub. It's called uh here, let me see if I can find it for you guys. Um if you've noticed, if you're a Windows user, you've probably noticed that when you enable HDR, everything kind of looks weird. Like HDR in Windows 10 and Windows 11 just doesn't look right. Like, you know, the way app that the coloring and apps like video looks fine, pictures look fine. But the way the desktop looks, the way the icons look and everything, the colors just don't look as, as sharp as they as they did when it was in SDR mode. There is a fix for that. Um, and it all has to do with the color space. It's just Windows hasn't really calibrated their color space for the operating system itself and all the controls and everything to look like their SDR when you're in HDR mode. So you just go to uh, GitHub. Yeah, it looks very washed out. Yeah, Kevin Solomon, you got it. Yeah, it looks washed out. So there's a tool called sRGB to Gamma on GitHub. And what it does is it installs an ICC profile that they created that basically calibrates the HDR curve to the SDR curve. So it basically HDR in Windows, it makes it look like SDR, but you still get the highs and the lows of HDR, but it shifts that middle zone so that it looks more like SDR. So when you go between SDR and HDR, the colors still look the same. You just get more range on either end in HDR mode. And, and I find it looks a lot better that way, especially when playing games. And it also gives you that inky black, which I really like. And the cool thing is you can enable it and disable it just by typing sRGB to gamma dot bat, or you can go back and just type revert and it goes back to the old one. So it's, it's, it's nice to jump between, but yeah, you notice a huge difference on the black levels. Like where, where normally when you open a command window, it looks kind of grayish in HDR mode. When you run this, it looks inky black, just like when it's an SDR. Uh, but here, let me, let me send you guys a link to it. Cause I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it works really good. The only problem is it doesn't work in combination with a LUT. So if you already have a LUT and you've already color calibrated your display, which in case you probably wouldn't even need this, um, you can't really use them together. So you have to pick one or the other. So what I do is I have a color calibrated profile I use for when I'm using windows, doing video, doing picture editing and stuff like that, where I want perfect color representation. But if I'm playing a video game and I want those inky blacks and that really, really like uh, exaggerated gamut, then I just go run this before I run the game and then just revert it when I leave the game and it's fine. James Janus said, my main monitor is fully factory calibrated, accurate 4K display and supports HDR. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, sadly, for like $500 for a 50 inch HDR, 120 hertz display. Um, yeah, it's not that close to, <laughs> to any standard. You do definitely have to color calibrate it. That's something they definitely do. Uh, in, in the luminance was quite a bit different between the screens. It was like off by 20 points between the screens. So you can tell that Vizio isn't spending a lot of money on calibration for these things, given their price point. These TVs are more targeted at people that want a fast responding, cheap gaming display that can do 120 hertz in HDR. So, you know, you get what you pay for at the end. Like if I had money like I used to back in the day and I wasn't completely flat broke off my ass right now. Um, I would get, I, I'd get like some, um, higher end LG screens or the higher end Samsung screens, like the higher end Q LED screens or the mini LED screens, ideally. Uh, but no, this, I mean, this, this is a good middle ground for the price. They're definitely worth it. Like for the price, they're absolutely worth it. Cause you're not going to find another way to get, you know, multiple freaking 50 inch, 120 Hertz, or even 240 Hertz at 1080p for doing emulator stuff. And it looks great in 1080p mode too. So, um, didn't Walmart purchase Vizio? Correct. Walmart does own Vizio. I just picked them up on Amazon because it was just easier, faster delivery. And both screens arrived perfectly. They both the no dead pixels that I can see. No, no blatant problems. The only complaint that I really have for the screen is the brightness is super low. So if you have a super, if I have every light on in the room and everything, they're way brighter than my old displays. But my old displays were seven years old and all the backlights were, were burning out. Um, so to me, they're really bright, but to somebody who's used to really bright screens, they're not going to think they're that bright. And the other thing is the color uniformity isn't that good because the viewing angle isn't great because of the type of panel that they use in combination with the QLED. The QLED layer or the quantum dot layer gives you those really inky blacks and really saturated colors. But but just looking at the center of the screen, sitting this close to it, I can see a color, a slight color shift going to the corners 
on a 50 inch screen. So these are screens that you're definitely supposed to sit a little bit further back from. Whereas if it was like an IPS panel, you wouldn't have that color shift problem. But again, you're, you're talking the difference between a $500 panel, and like a $750 panel. It's like 50, you know, $50, sorry, a 50% more expensive or a hundred percent more expensive. If you want to retain like the 120 Hertz and all that shit too. So, you know, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. Um, just remember, you're not poor until you don't even have a TV or a computer. I mean, it depends on how you look at it. So, so everything's relative, right? Everything's relative. So poor could mean one thing to another person and not, not a person. Somebody could say poor is you don't even have a computer. You don't have a house. You're on the, you're absolutely homeless. You have no food and you're literally dying. That's the only time you're poor. But then, then I don't really believe that. Like, I believe that, you know, poor is where you're, where you can't maintain uh, the quality of life that you've had on average throughout your entire life. So if that makes sense. So um, if you can't like afford to, you can't afford a house or you can't afford or, or every month you're, you, you, you have a point where, you know, you're going to be at zero and you're not going to have any more money. You basically have to sell everything just to survive. I, I guess it's not poor, but you're heading there. So, so premature poor, <laughs> let's, let's say I'm going poor. Okay. That'd be more accurate. Uh, James James said my colors accurate 4k HDR display 350 nits was only $450. So your color accurate. Yeah, I don't James. I don't believe that's going to be color accurate for 450 bucks. You can send me the information on the screen though. They might say it's color accurate, but I'd, I'd have to see the full Adobe RGB printout for it and see what the color uniformity is. Cause I, I don't know how the hell you could get any, any size, even, even a 20 inch screen, how you could get a color accurate display for 450 bucks. I mean, a 25 inch Adobe RGB calibrated screen is like $10,000 for like a 20 inch, 20 inch screen. So, um, so for a reference monitor, uh, how, how color accurate is it? Like what percentage of sRGB and Adobe is it? Um, I'm curious because, and which screen is it? I want to, I want to know what the hell screen you got that is HDR perfectly colored calibrated for $450. That's crazy. Calibrate screen expensive. Realize everybody's eyes are different. Priceless. Expensive. Realize everyone's eyes are different. I mean, fair enough. I don't think anybody sees everything exactly the same way. Uh, not good for HDR. Not enough nits. Oh, no, I'm talking about James screen. The one that he said is 4K HDR and it's color accurate. Because not even my Samsung's, not even my older Samsung's I bought were color accurate. Uh, let's see here. Gentlestone said, no doubt. I'm always making myself see the silver lining. I know I need to start doing that myself. You have your family who loves you and you'll never be poor. You're absolutely right. I've got a family that supports me. I got good friends. So, so technically I could never hit absolute rock bottom. Although I never want to say never, because when you say never and you completely discount something, it leaves you vulnerable to it and it could actually happen. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to still see that as a possibility just to scare me away from it, if nothing else. Your good things from L1 Tech Wendell that they are good. Which screen? Did I, did I miss which screen it was? Uh, let's see here. Color accurate BenQ studio screen for 350 bucks. Oh, okay. So BenQ, man, that's a name I haven't heard in some time. I used to have a BenQ projector back in the day. Let's see here. BenQ studio screen. Okay. Let's see. How much are they? Price. Uh, BenQ professional monitors for photo retouching. Uh, let's see here. Where could I find? What, what model number is it? Okay, so BenQ has announced a pair of 27-inch SW series monitors aimed at photographers. How much are they, though? Uh, do, 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 USB slot, hotkey puck, SW272Q, um, color calibrated. Oh, shit, 100% of sRGB and 99% of Adobe RGB? How the fuck? There's no way this is a $399 screen I'm looking at here. Here, let me let me look it up. Let me look up this model number on Amazon. Cuz I'll be I'll be fucking floored. Uh, let's see how much is that? Oh, no, that's a that's a $2,000 screen. 
Okay, let me look up Dave's here. Dave PD twenty seven oh five U. Let me look this one up. All right, twenty seven inch four K UHD IPS. Ooh, nice ICC sync. Oh, and it comes with a calibration report for five hundred and forty nine bucks. Oh, I see one for three ninety nine. Okay, so four hundred dollars. PD twenty seven oh five. I mean, God, that's a steal. I mean, way too small of a screen for me, like way too small for me. I'm just way too used to having a 50 inch screen. But the fact that you can, whoa, 12,001 contrast ratio supports 99% of Rec 709. Uh, oh, but it's not HDR. Okay, never mind. Okay, I got confused with the other guy's screen. Okay, so it's not, so, so this is color accurate for SDR, just not for HDR. That makes a little bit more sense, but still. The fact that you can, I mean, there was a time where you could not get a 99% anything calibrated screen for under thousands of thousands of dollars. So the fact that BenQ makes a screen that you can buy for $399, although this one got really low ratings. Why? Hold on. Let me, let me, I think the seller got low ratings. Yeah, it was just the seller. Never mind. The more expensive one got fantastic ratings and way more sales. So four and a half stars at almost a thousand reviews. Uh, 27 inch 4K UHD IPS free sync monitor, factory calibrated for color accuracy and comes with a report straight from the manufacturer. Uh, 100% sRGB Rec 709, which is just insane. Uh, Cowman and Pantone skin tone valid. Whoa, it's a Pantone validated display. Holy shit. That actually costs extra money to get. AQ color technology, uh, ICC sync compatible with display P3C, the ICC. Sync simplifies the color mapping process and can be completed in one second through the BenQ Display Pilot software. Oh, shit. So it can load an ICC on board. It doesn't need the operating system to do it or the GPU. Seamless connectivity. I mean, damn. Well, shit. If you guys are looking for the ultimate color accurate display for video editing and picture shit, here, there's my affiliate link. Please, by all means, go buy it. I'll get a little kickback. Um, that's That's pretty wild, dude. That's, I mean, I, I mean, because I know my, my friend has a, a 100% um, sRGB calibrated screen that was like $10,000. So it's just, it's just crazy that nowadays you can buy something that's, that's, I mean, granted it is SDR. I have to remind myself that this is SDR, not HDR. Most content now is Rec 2020 um, HDR or what's the other one? Um uh the one where it's like variable it's dynamic hdr uh fuck i can't remember the name of it anyways the, the rec uh, rec 2020 and then the other one um hl oh hybrid log gamma sorry hybrid log gamma so th those ones are a lot more expensive to get that kind of color accuracy but still even for sdr to get like absolute color accuracy where it's like what you're editing and what you're creating or whatever is going to look the same on that screen as as well as really expensive reference monitors that's pretty fucking cool so 4K only does 60 hertz. So, which I mean, honestly, the the higher frequency, usually on the screens, you do normally lose a little bit of the fidelity and you lose a little bit of um, the color depth. I don't know if it's because it's having to refresh it so fast. There's more black frame insertion or whatever that tends to make the screen look a little dimmer. But I do notice that even on these screens going between HDR and SDR, uh the the color is way wider in hdr mode but the overall brightness and sdr at the high end even though it's crushed and blown out it does look a little bit brighter hey thank you retro my bits so james janice said mine is better paid 450 i post the link to my screen in off topic it's currently out of stock though well here let me go look let me go into off topic here on discord scroll down to the bottom so this is the 2700u is that the one i'm looking at right now I'm looking at the 2705. Uh, let me see. What's the difference? Yeah, no, I trust Amazon. That's fine. Uh, oh, wow. Are you going to load? There it is. Okay. So this one is out of stock. So this is the 2700. So this is this looks like it's a lower model than the one I was looking at before. Similar good ratings. Um, is this one HDR? Nope. Rec 709 and sRGB 100%. So the other one was only 99%, wasn't it? So this one's actually 100%. Calibration record, EQ color, Pantone, ergonomic speaker, display port, daisy chain, USB hub. Wow, I've been, uh, <laughs> it's so funny they were still putting speakers and monitors, but I'm like, I got speakers on my TVs I'm using as monitors, so it's not really that weird. Anti-glare screen, high dyne. Oh, 
high dynamic range. Why isn't it listing that up at the top? Okay, I'm a bit confused. You said this one was HDR, right? Because they don't say it's HDR in the title. But here, I'll show you guys the one I'm looking at here. Hold on, let me get a link. Uh, da, da, da. So this is the next screen I'm looking at. This is the one James has. So James Janus in chat, this is his screen. So different model. We were looking at the 2702. This is the 2700. It says it's it says it's a 4K UHD. It doesn't say HDR anywhere in the title, but if you scroll down, it does say that it's high dynamic range under special features. So that's a little confusing. So is it HDR or is it not HDR? Uh, let's see here. Let me scroll down to specs. Okay, 4K UHD. Uh, let's see here. Scrolling down, EQ color, color you can trust. Professional modes, animation mode, darkroom mode. Eliminates needless repetition, custom productivity hacks, low blue light, flicker free, eye care technology, blah, 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 blah. Uh, color tonal control for Mac devices. Accurate colors spark your mind, unleash creativity with maximum comfort. Oh, it also rotates. That's cool. I like screens where you can rotate them vertical and horizontal right out of the gate. Um, I don't see anything that expl other than that one spot. I don't see anywhere where it says this is an HDR display. But then again, it doesn't say the price. But you said you paid what? Five fifty for it? Oh, it does say HDR ten compatible. Okay. So wait, you get HDR for like fifty bucks more? So so this is only fifty dollars. So this screen is only fifty dollars more than the the non HDR one. I mean, it's out of stock, but no, I mean, honestly, 50 more dollars for HDR. Like who wouldn't pay for that? Hey, what's up, Graham? It's good to see you, brother. I miss you. He said, finding good monitors back in the day was tough. Yeah. If you needed color accuracy, the shit was so expensive. Hey, retro, my bitch. Thank you for the $5. I appreciate that. <laughs> Xander, thanks you. I wanted to have a live stream yesterday over on Twitch since I've been gone for so long and I was going to have Xander on there, but I told him, I told him I would only stream if he wanted to stream. Cause I wanted to spend his birthday with him and he decided that he just wanted it to be a special day for us. And I was like, okay, we're not doing it. So, but, but next time I stream over on Twitch, I might have him come jump on and say hi, if he wants to, uh, and you guys can wish him a happy birthday and everything in person. I just can't believe I have a 14 year old boy. Just, I, I still, my brain cannot process that. It's so weird. It's like, dude, he's like two years away from being able to drive a car. It's like, I still just see this like little baby man. Like I don't even, I don't know, blow, blow my mind. Yeah, I used to have Dell Ultra Sharps back in the day. I, I had a couple of the 27 inch, uh, like nine by 16 or nine by, no, nine by 10 or 10 by 16. Sorry, 10 by 16. That really weird, weird kind of middle format. I had two of those back in the day and I really liked those screens. I used them for about 10 years before I ended up selling them. Oh, you paid 450 USD for them? So basically the same price. So what I'm trying to figure out is why anybody would buy the other one. Like, why would you buy the 2702 over the 2700 when they're the same price? And one is 100% Rex 709 and sRGB. Although I guess it's not color accurate for HDR then because they, on they only list the certification for Rex 709 and sRGB, which are both st SDR, standard definition. So um, for HDR 10, that would be listed separately. So I don't know if they're maybe they're not color accurate for HDR. I don't know. I'd have to do more research, but at any rate, I mean, you can't beat the price. I mean, the fact that you can get a color accurate display on any level that has the word Pantone and Adobe in it for that kind of money is just insane. That's absolutely insane. Dave said Microsoft has an HDR calibration tool on the store. If you don't have a hardware calibration device. Yeah, I tried using it. It wasn't too bad, but it wasn't great either. Like, like it allowed, it, it was more of an HDR calibration device for like getting the gamma in play, but not the colors. But but it did it did help me from having the whites get completely crushed. Like it was the first thing I tried before I did my color calibration with the actual puck. And it did allow me to fix it so it wasn't crushing all the whites up at the high end. Like the difference between before and after. At the end, there was a lot more detail, which was pretty cool. Right, Graham? Yeah, Xander was just a little itty bitty guy back in the day. HDR is 400 nits for HDR basic, and then there are higher versions. Yeah, and that's that's what that's what I have with these screens. These screens literally are at the very bottom of HDR. So these screens are HDR10, not HDR10 plus. 
and they're 400 nits. I think I think when I measured it with the device, it was, came out to 403 nits. So so basically, I have to run the screens balls out at 100 percent to get the gamma 2.2 curve to get the the full range of basic HDR. I think to do H to do HDR 10 plus or Dolby Vision, I think you have to have a thousand nits, I believe, to get the whole spectrum or something like that. <laughs> Putch wants his DGAWS back. I remember that back when you hit the little button on your monitor to be like, and the whole image would get distorted and make that loud, crazy noise. I remember having to do that every time I got my speaker too close to my monitor. It would like distort the display and slowly pull the display over and I'd have to a little button. Let's see here. I could have the ability to accept an HDR signal, but displays it as Rec 709 container. Oh, okay. So it's not true HDR. So it takes an HDR signal and maps it into SDR. So it basically can't do all the steps of HDR. Okay, that makes a lot more sense for the money. Because I was like, I was like, I don't know how the hell they can say that it's HDR when it's only 350 nits, right? So that that doesn't make a lot of sense. But still, for the color accuracy, hell yeah. If you're if you're a video editor, because keep in mind, people that edit like photos and videos, they're usually in a light controlled environment. Right. Like you're not going to be you're not going to be editing video and editing pictures in a room that has massive fluorescent lights all over the place because you'll just fuck it up and you won't be able to see the details anyways. So. Um, so most people I know that do like uh, video editing and stuff, they usually turn the lights down in the room, turn down the brightness of the display so that they don't crush the blacks or crush the whites and gives them a lot more dynamic range. Vizio, how did our things get 800 nits, maybe one percent window? surprisingly the nits don't go down based on the window size it's not like oled where you lose a ton of nits the more white that you display on the screen because it has to light up more pixels um it's the, the brightness uniformity is the same whether it's a one inch square or whether it's a hundred percent it's one of the reasons why i prefer uh, me personally i prefer qled over oled uh oled drives me nuts when you take them when you when you have a super bright white window and then it's like gray super bright white gray super white bright gray that drives me absolutely fucking bonkers and the only way to get it to stop doing that is to turn the brightness down so low that you have the same brightness at this window size. You do full screen. So then basically you have to drag the whole display down to like one tenth of its full brightness to get that uniformity. And then it's then you have to be in a light controlled environment. However, I haven't tried um, I haven't tried the C3. The LG C3 apparently is a pretty big step up. So. I know, I know the OLED's getting better. Like every generation, it gets better by leaps and bounds. So for, for all I know, the color uniformity problem isn't, isn't a big deal anymore. 400 nits is sort of HDR. Um, I mean, 400 nits is HDR. It's just HDR 10. It's not HDR 10 plus or Dolby Vision. Because I think Dolby Vision, isn't Dolby Vision require a thousand nits? Here, how many nits does Dolby Vision require? So Dolby Vision, oh shit, Dolby Vision can go up to 10,000 nits of brightness. Uh, professional reference monitors are currently limited to 400 nits of peak brightness. Oh, damn. Okay, let's hear how, let's hear how many nits for HDR10. No, I was wrong. HDR10 is 1,000 nits at, at the high end. Oh, 400 nits at the low end. Okay, never mind. So, so 400 nits is like the bare minimum to get the HDR effect where you can see the steps of detail without crushing the high end or the low end. A thousand nits is to get the whole spectrum. So, um, so yeah, you're right. It's like that's the diet version, right? So HDR10 widely used dynamic range standard has a maximum peak brightness of 10,000 nits. Oh shit! So it can go up right as far as Dolby Vision. Uh, HDR10 content is mastered with a peak brightness rating from 1,000 to 4,000 nits. It's important to note that HDR10 is not backwards compatible with SDR displays. If you're looking for even more high dynamic HDR range, formats like Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus offer additional features, including dynamic metadata, higher peak brightness levels, etc. Okay, so yeah, I guess I'm not, I, I guess I guess I've got like diet HDR <laughs> would be the best way to explain it. Uh but but again, even even at 400 nits, as long as you're in a light controlled room where, where you can drop it down to like an insanely low brightness, you can still get the, you can squeeze that whole range in there or most of it anyways. So, yeah, these, these can't these can't do the, the, these do not do a thousand nits. These only do 400. So so this is definitely diet HDR. However, I will say they're beautiful screens like 
um even with all the lights on in the room like i fired up forza in hdr mode and you can see all the detail on the dashboard with the with the sunspots and everything like that but it's it's not nearly as bright as my samsung in my bedroom like the the 74 inch samsung qled i think it's a q850 model q850 uh it's how much was it is it three thousand nits of brightness or some shit um it's pretty bright it, it literally on 100 percent brightness it makes you like squint even with all the lights on in the room like you squint it's so uncomfortably bright uh q850 nits here samsung 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 q850 nits but the problem with it being so bright is that you get the dirty screen effect and the banding and it becomes more and more apparent the brighter you get so it's kind of a trade-off when you're when you're samsung panels the brighter they get the more that dirty screen effect really shows itself so you got to like find that like sweet spot brightness can be offset in your brain with color oh yeah i mean as long as you turn off all the lights in the room and you drop it down that, i mean that's how they're able to get away with calling it hdr right so so the, the only reason they're fitting the hdr space into 400 nits is by being in a really dark room so that you're much more sensitive to slighter changes and the brightness as a matter of fact, projectors rely on that, right? Like, I remember my first projector I got was only like 100 nits, I think, 80 or 100 nits. It was a ViewSonic a professional projector that I had in my bedroom. And I remember I had to turn, I, I had a pure white screen and uh, I had to turn off all the lights in the room and draw a blackout cloth on the curtains to, but then after you sat in there and you watched a movie for about 10 minutes and your eyes adjusted, it looked incredibly bright. Like, it looked fantastic. Um, but then later on, I ended up getting a Panasonic projector that was like 2,500 nits, I think it was. Uh, but now my, my new screen, I don't do projectors anymore because, screen, in my opinion, screens have surpassed projectors. Unless you're in a light-controlled room where, and you have room for like a 200-inch screen, then I think projectors are still the cat's ass. And I would totally get one if I had the space and the money. But, uh, you know, when you're talking anything like 80 inches or under, like, I really don't think that a projector is going to compete, like, realistically with, with modern LCD technology especially with QLED. QLED gives you those inky black levels that you couldn't get before from just regular, you know, LED backlit panels. Uh, let's see here. Delegion said, hey, Jerry, I just started a project management job in tech. I was thinking about going for an agile scrum training. Do you think any of the training is worth it? Well, I mean, it depends on if those are valuable things that they do at your job. If your company does, you know, agile or scrum, then getting training for it is probably going to be worth it. However, if your team does conventional meetings and you're not the person who decides the meeting format, it's probably not going to help you that much. Me personally, I hate Scrum. I fucking hate Scrum with a passion. It's actually the thing, the, my, my least favorite thing about working at Microsoft towards the end. Uh, but some people, some people like it. Some people, some people think that it's helpful. I don't. I think it's very distracting. VR Gim said even SDR content benefits from HDR displays because the dot on the CRT used to get between 10,000 and 20,000 nits. Interesting. Dave said, no, no, a black and white picture needs to be brighter than the same picture in color to appear the same brightness. And the same picture in the camera. Huh, interesting. Not, not something I've really considered. Um, because, for instance, full white always looks brighter than, than the colored image, right? So I guess that would support that argument. But I guess it would depend on how much of the image is white and how much of it is black, right? So in the scales of gray in between, unless, unless you, because if you, if the majority of it is white and it's in the upper side, it's going to appear very, very bright, even more bright than a colored picture, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I don't think I could have my screens bright all the time at a thousand nits. I mean, your eyes will adjust to anything. That's the thing, right? It's like most of the VR headsets and stuff I wear don't have very bright screens in them. But because you're in a completely blacked out spot, you become used to it and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Your eyes always just adjust to it, though. It doesn't matter how bright the screen is. As long as you're not in a really bright room where you're competing with the brightness of the room and your eyes are adjusting to the brightness of the room, um, the brightness kind of becomes irrelevant after a while. As long as you don't have outside competing sources of light. That's basically what it comes down to. Uh, so I would not recommend these video screens if you were like in a day lit, if, if these were, if this is going in the living room in a bright area, like you're in fucking Florida or Southern California, you got the windows open all the time. I wouldn't say get a, get one of these video screens that only does 400 nits. Like, like you, HDR is basically going to end up looking just like SDR for the most part in your living room. It's going to look washed out. 
Um, but if you have a room that it's like, you know, you just got regular lights on in the room and it's not particularly super bright and your eyes can actually adjust, then, then this, it'll be really punchy and it'll look amazing. Uh, let's see here. Oh, the cones versus rods. Okay. That makes sense, Dave. That, that, that actually does make sense because if you've ever, if you've ever turned out the lights at night or gone outside when it's just a moonlit night, like in the forest and your eyes adjust to the light. Um, when, when you start seeing black and white, you stop seeing color because it's too dim for you to see color. You can only see black and white. The detail you can pick out is actually pretty impressive. Like, as a matter of fact, I know I noticed that every time I wake up at like, you know, four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning and go take a piss and I sit on the toilet in the bathroom and I don't want to turn on the light because I don't want to wake my wife up. So so I just go in there in the dark and it's like I can't hardly see when I open my eyes. I stumble my way to the toilet. I sit down. But by the time I'm done, you know, taking my whiz or whatever and I stand up, I can see everything clearly on the counter. The light coming in from the moon or whatever is like completely lighting up the room and I can see every detail of everything. It's pretty cool. Isn't that why pirates wore patches or something back in the day is to keep one eye always in darkness while it was open so that it was more sensitive or some shit like that? I don't know. I think I saw that on Mythbusters back in the day. Uh, What was I trying to do here? Oh, yeah. Samsung Q850 screen brightness. Let's see if I can find it here. So the Q850T user manual. Uh, let me click this. No, I don't want to download the manual. I just want the answer. Oh, here we go. I'll go look at the Artings review. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and it's eight. It's an eight K screen too. But honestly, eight K is overrated. Even at seventy four inches, you're not going to notice a huge difference between four and eight K if you're sitting ten feet away from the screen. You, you might notice it if you're sitting right up on the screen. Like if I just had one sitting on my desk, like three feet away, then 8K would probably look badass. But uh, I, I run my 8K screen in 4K 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, God, I wish I didn't feel like shit all the time. Oh, Tardis, you like the new camera angle? That's awesome. Yeah, there used to be a TV there. Um, I couldn't afford to replace the third screen, so I just got two screens now. And so where the old screen used to be, I now have the camera and I have the light sitting there. And so people seem to like it. Um, also, I jacked up these screens a little bit higher than the old screens because the old ones, I maxed out the piece amount and couldn't get them any higher. So I couldn't get speakers under them. So for the first time, my screens are high enough that I can put speakers underneath them. And it also allows me to sit up higher in my chair, which is nice because it improves my posture a bit and puts the keyboard down a little lower. So it's not it's not causing me to jack up my shoulders like this. So, so now hopefully I'll be able to hook up the stereo receiver I've had for literally years now and haven't used and get my subwoofer hooked up and might actually have like decent sound up here again. And then I can put my rear channels back here. I've got these infinities that Adam gave me along with the receiver. And then I got JBLs in the front. So I'll put these in the back, hook up the subwoofer. And I should have a little 5.1 surround sound system, hopefully, if I can get that all wired up and working right. That'll be really, really cool. Oh, dude, it kills my OCD IPP. It, it's absolutely murder in my OCD. Am I still using my PlayStation 5? Yeah. Yeah, when well, my hands aren't all jacked up, I, I still absolutely enjoy playing Gran Turismo. I play Gran Turismo every chance I get. Um, I haven't booted it up in probably like a week because I've been having really bad problems with swelling in my hands and it makes holding the controller really difficult. But no, I love Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo is awesome. Although I'd be lying if I said, uh, you know, I haven't been frustrated with it because I finally got to a level after playing it for many, 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 many hours. I finally got to a level now where it's like, the challenges are hard. I'm having to do each challenge multiple times because now I'm doing challenges where you have to stop and refuel and do pit stops and you got to plan those right. You have to get your tire wear and your mixture on your fuel right and everything to even place in the top third. And if you don't place in the top third, you don't complete the event. So I've done some of the races like 12 plus times and still haven't passed them. And that becomes kind of frustrating. So, but last time I played, I luckily got over the hump that I've been fighting for so long. And I finally got to the point where I could beat it. It turned out the entire time I was racing a car that was like 200 points below the recommended entry performance. So I was basically like wondering how the hell I couldn't be competitive against these other vehicles. And it turned out it was because I didn't have anywhere near the performance. Graham said, I used to edit from the waveforms since I can't see certain grades of green and blue it was a great way to guarantee a decent result. I've heard a lot of people do that. I've heard a lot of people color grade off of the curves and not after uh, not, not actually looking at the color. And I also found it weird that a lot of people that do color grading are actually colorblind. I always thought that that was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. 
I was I was like, why would you why why would you get into color grading if you're blind, right? Um, but yeah, apparently, apparently you can color grade completely off the curves, which is just bizarre to me. Like, I, I guess I don't really understand how that works, but I, all the data is there, so sure. Um, let's see here. So, so according to Artings, my screen in my bedroom has disappointing out of the box color accuracy. That is correct. And the thing that I hate the most about it is if I use Windows, like I have, I have my Windows computer connected to it. I can color calibrate and load an ICC profile that gives me perfect, like as perfect color as I can get from that screen. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. However, as soon as I flip over to the in-screen apps for like Netflix and Hulu and stuff, which give you the best possible quality stream, like, cause all the windows apps are like gimped for some reason on these services. They don't allow you to get the full bandwidth stream like you do in the, in the NTV apps. But when I go to the NTV apps, I don't have ICC color profile support and I don't have the right tools to color calibrate the screen like, you know, like the professionals where they hook up the probe and they actually have it programmed the internal settings on the screen and the service menu to get everything perfectly color calibrated. So it's applied to everything and not being applied as a profile in Windows. I don't have that ability to do that level of color calibration. So I really only get calibrated colors in Windows. Everything else, including PlayStation 5 and everything, I just get whatever calibration the TV came with, which isn't particularly good. But I mean, it still it still looks good. Like, I mean, it's still a very punchy image. Um has uniformity issues definitely low contrast ratio for a va panel oh uh, that i didn't really experience i wonder if there's a different it, they might use a different panel in the 70 inch version that was the that was the 60 inch version uh let's see here what about this one 850a soundbar why did they name their soundbar the same model that's weird Oh, man. Well, I'm probably going to start wrapping up here in a minute, guys. I'm starting to feel pretty gross. Oh, at least I got a couple of hours out of me today, which is more than most days. So that that I'm happy with. I just got to start moving a little bit more in this direction. I'm glad that the weather's starting to improve outside, though, because it was pretty miserable there for a while. I'm going to start spending a little bit more time outside, try to get a little sun, sit out there, see if that doesn't help me feel a little bit better. Uh, didn't they change the license on your color calibration thingy so you had to upgrade? I didn't have to upgrade the color calibrator. I just had to buy new software. Luckily, it was only 10 bucks, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I bought the new software, and it does work. I mean, the, the new software that they gave me, surprisingly, it was no fuss, no muss. It just did what it was supposed to do, which is nice. Hey, Kevin, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for the good Easter. Yeah, it's cool. We just got to celebrate my son's birthday yesterday, and then we'll have Easter tomorrow, which is like another holiday he absolutely loves and adores. But I'll I'll be happy when we're through the holidays, because um, I, I don't really do good during holidays. Like I struggle with that stuff, especially when there's a lot of other problems going on in my life. Um, and I wish I didn't. Like I wish for my family I could be like super super happy on every holiday. But it's and and I can I can do a good job faking it every once in a while. But it does eat away at me. I've I have some pretty severe mental problems because of my childhood and everything like that. And they've been really amplified by like just current life situation and health and uh finances and being able to work and all that stuff it's just been it's been weighing on me heavily that's why you guys haven't seen me on twitch a whole lot lately uh but i i gotta figure out how to come back if i don't if i don't find a way to come back we're not going to be okay sadly uh you hate va panels ips all the way <laughs> if, if i could afford ips i'd get ips but i can't anymore but i will say this i will say this the new screens that i do have the two that i did get thankfully uh, to replace the old broken screens that were way worse than I thought. Oh my God, when I put them next to this, like they were so burnt out. Like one of the screens I picked up, it sounds like a rattle. There's like a thousand little lenses from the backlights, the focusing lenses that fell off. They're just rattling around inside of it. It sounds like a rattlesnake. Um, but these screens do look a million times better than the seven plus year old Samsung SDR 60 Hertz. Even though those were IPS panels, so they didn't have the uniformity issues towards the edges. I still prefer these 100% of those all day long. Plus, the 120 hertz alone is awesome. The one gripe I do have, though, is that the DVI, to, sorry, the DisplayPort to HDMI adapters don't support FreeSync. So luckily, I was able to find an adapter that at least support 120 hertz 4K, 4x4x4 chroma, or actually sRGB, not with the compression, not the true 4x4x4. But I got it supported, but no FreeSync. And you, if you try to install, if you try to enable FreeSync on the center monitor, but you don't en enable it on the side monitors, it creates all this weird flickering shit in Windows when you say to apply FreeSync to windowed applications. 
and it sucks. You kind of have to have free sync enabled on everything or nothing, or it gives you like weird problems on windowed apps. Um, so I wish, I wish I didn't have to do that, but whatever. Um, James Shane said how to come back, just sit down and click the stream to Twitch button. It's not that simple, dude. Uh, and, and the fact that you said that probably means I can't explain it to you in a way that you could understand either. So I'm not even going to try, but I wish it was that simple. I legitimately do. Um, but, uh, but I'll figure it out. That's on me, not on you guys. I got, I got to figure it out. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to go try to take a nap. Uh, actually I'll probably eat some breakfast. I forgot to eat. I didn't have time to eat before the stream. So I just had a coffee and it's kind of making me feel gross. Um, I'm going to go and try to get some sleep and oh you were just joking James okay I didn't know my, my bad brother I didn't see a little smiley face we talked about that last stream it's like more people need to like use little smiley faces and emojis and stuff so we know when they're joking because a lot of people are serious when they say stuff like that so it's hard to tell when somebody's joking unless they explicitly show it you know uh but no it's good to know you're joking dude um it's good to see you too Putch I'm glad you were able to show up thank you everybody for the support we really appreciate it I know better than anybody that times are tough and, and shit's getting harder and not easier. Uh, but I'm going to hang in there as long as I possibly can. So hopefully you guys still see me for a good long time. If not, it's been a fun ride. Hey, Joe, thank you for the $20, dude. I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a great Easter, man. We'll have a great Easter. We'll get the, we'll get, we'll send the kid on a little Easter egg hunt around the house. He loves that. And uh, I sadly didn't get to play VR with him for his birthday yesterday because I couldn't hold the controllers. But uh, my hands are feeling a little bit better today. So hopefully take a little nap, um, drink a bunch of water, see if I can flush some of this lactic acid out of my hands. And uh, hopefully I can play some rec room with him tonight. Um, by the way, I'm Barnacles on rec room. So if you if you guys are if you guys play rec room and VR or whatever, just just search for Barnacles. That's me in there. Add me. Uh, I'll add you back. That way, if I'm in there playing VR or something, you guys want to jump in a room and, and you know, run around and shoot people in the face. Uh, we could probably make that happen. Um, Graham, yeah, I really appreciate Joe. Thank you, Joe. Actually, I want to I want to thank everybody because because today today there was sixty three dollars in super chats. And that's actually surprisingly a lot more than we've had over the last couple of tech talks, because like I said, times have been tough as shit, man. I understand more than anybody, but I appreciate every single dollar. Uh, Christopher Rodriguez, thank you for the ten dollars earlier. And I hope your friend uh, gets better who's in the hospital with pneumonia. Tell e Eli we're all pulling for him. Uh, Dwolf's Den, thank you for the $14. Said happy 14th, and, or, ha happy 14th, Xander. Thank, thank you so much for that. I will make sure he hears that. I've been reading every comment, especially over on the Patreons. I've been going and reading the comments to Xander. He loves it. I run out there and I read it to him. And he's like, oh, my God, tell him thank you back. He's, uh, he, he loves just hearing that people even know he exists. It's like he, he lives for that shit. Uh, meet Papa 007. Thank you for the five dollars and another five dollars. He said, I heard this yesterday, it should help. You are more than what you do. God, I that I mean, that's a nice sentiment, but you know, it's the other one is the actions speak louder than words. That's the one that's the one that, that beats the shit out of me because it's like I want to do more than I can, and I, I strive to think I can do it until my body tells me I can't, and then I get really disappointed. I need to stop doing that. Me puppet also thank you for another five dollars. He said, I didn't hear about the article that said. They're working on a new CD that can handle a petabyte petabytes of data. Huh? Let me look at that. What's going on here? Let's see here. CD holds petabytes of data. God, that would be interesting. Uh, let's see here. DVD optical disc could store 1.6 petabytes. Oh, wow. So DVD like optical disc could store 1.6 petabit. Oh, petabits, not petabytes. So 200 terabytes on, on 100 layers. Because if you guys know the way a Blu-ray works is the way they angle the laser, it accesses a different layer. So, so it's like multiple layers and the, the angle of the laser reflects off a different layer so they can have different multiple layers of different data. So apparently we've gotten so good with adjusting the laser that now we can get freaking, you know, depending on the media, we can get up to 100 layers on a single disc, which can, which can hold 1.6 petabits of data. I mean, that's pretty insane. Having 200 gigabytes on a single disc, I mean, so what, four four DVDs would store a terabyte? I mean, that's pretty damn impressive. That's, re that's really impressive. Uh, I love Scotch. Thank you, the $5. Said last weekend at SDF ICF saw Adrian's digital basement. I love that guy. He's awesome. 
and cathode ray dude oh i love cathode ray dude i'd love to meet him i didn't even realize that this whole time he's lived in washington he lives over near seattle um i i haven't been able to get in touch with him though uh because i think he's pretty good at like you know staying detached from random people trying to get a hold of him on the internet and kudos to him for doing that but but i would actually i would actually love to meet that dude i, I watch all of his videos i think i think he he does a great job with his content. I, I quite enjoy him going in depth on like really old technology and really like obscure uh, things like, you know, vintage cameras and stuff like that. And old, old digital cameras, old computers. Uh, he, he's, he's really good at what he does. If you haven't seen cathode ray, dude, his shit's awesome. James said, was Xander sad? No birthday Twitch stream. No, he, he, re he recommended it. I, I offered, I said, Hey Xander, do you want to do a Twitch stream? You know, in, in, you know, we could go up there and say hi to everybody and they could tell you happy birthday. And he looked at me and he said, Dad, I just want this birthday to be us together having fun. And I was like, okay, that's the end of it. So, um, so yeah, I thought that, that was really cool. Really, really cool of him. But we will, next time I stream, I'll see if he wants to come on and come say hi. Because he does, he does love streaming. It's just, I think he really did want to spend his birthday just hanging out with us. Um, that was something he had already kind of committed to. I was kind of surprised to hear that though. Cause usually when I'm like, Hey dude, do you want to come on the stream? He like, Oh my God. Yes. I just, because he wants to show everybody like what he got for his birthday. And so like, he absolutely loves the idea of it. And you know, anytime people give him bits or whatever, he absolutely freaks out and loves it. But, uh, but I thought that that was pretty cool. They, they he was like, he was like, no, I just want to spend this with you guys. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty damn grown up, dude. The kid surprises me every day, every single day. James funny as Xander memory. There's too many. Too many. There's there, there's no one that stands out above all. But I'll just give you a random one that I think is pretty funny. The for for many years, the theme song to Deep Space Nine would wake him up from a dead sleep anywhere in the house. Like it didn't matter how deep he was sleeping or where he was sleeping in the house. If you turn on the dun, 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 he would immediately sit up eyes wide open like a zombie and just stare at the screen. Great. Yeah, that's just that's just one of the random mini funny things, funny memories. And now it's a daily dose of internet. Now any anytime I want him to come in the bedroom, I just turn on a random daily dose of internet and turn up the stereo and it's like you don't even have to turn it up. You have a regular volume. It's like, "Hey, well, today's daily dose of internet." Where he comes running down the hallway and busts in the door, jumps on the bed and looks at the screen. <laughs> so, so it's it, it, it's I call it the call of his people. Because all if I ever if I ever need him to come into the bedroom or I ever need to get something from him instead of yelling, hey Xander, or whatever, and hoping he hears me, I just turn on daily dose of internet and he comes running. I, I should make that the ringtone on my phone. That would be hilarious. Remember, you don't eat a whale in one bite, small steps, getting back on your feet. The pandemic was rough. Yeah. Yeah, Graham, I'm just scared shitless, bro, because I don't think I have enough resources to keep us going long enough for me to get back on my feet at this point. So I feel I feel like we may have we may have burned too much rope and sadly we don't have neither one of us has family to catch us anymore. So it's yeah, we, we got some hard decisions coming our way. But I'm trying to it gave me such bad anxiety. Like I didn't really want to tell you guys about this, but I guess I will. Yesterday I or not yesterday, day before yesterday, I physically passed out in the bathroom for about 10 minutes. I haven't passed out for a long time. I had such a bad anxiety attack that I couldn't catch my breath and I lost I lost my oxygen. I got really weak. And so I sat down on the floor and I woke up completely flat down, face down on the floor after about 10 minutes. Um, felt really weird. I thought I had a heart attack. Um, I went and took my my oxygen. It was at 89, 90% and I was freaking out. And, but I had sinus rhythm on my heart. So my heart wasn't doing weird shit anymore. And I kind of calmed down a little bit. So my oxygen slowly crept up over about the last half an hour. I got up to about 94, 95%, which is where I usually sit. I was still sinus rhythm. No, no weirdness. And, um, I felt a little heaviness in my chest, but I was, but it got better and better throughout the day. And I was, I was okay. Like, so I was very thankful for that, but it's been a long time since I've had an anxiety attack that was so bad that I've lost consciousness. Like it's probably been a good three or four months since I've lost consciousness. And certainly 10 minutes is unheard of. Like I usually pass out and then I just come right to almost immediately after. No, I was out for <laughs> when I woke up and I went out and grabbed my phone. It was like, yeah, it was at least 10 minutes. So anxiety fucks you up, man. Your, your mind, your mind can do so much damage to your body. It's it's absolutely insane. So, no, I'm glad I'm OK, too, because I couldn't afford a hospital visit right now. So um, so but I was worried I went and 
did did what stupid people do and consulted the internet to see like you know what the symptoms were of heart attack to see if maybe i had a mild heart attack or something like that but no after looking at all the symptoms and going back through them and watching a whole bunch of stuff it looked like i just had a severe anxiety attack and apparently it's fairly common for severe anxiety attacks to lose consciousness for a couple of minutes here and there yeah i can yeah yeah kelvin the plan is to sell the sti i'm just waiting for summer so i can get top dollar for it because selling it in the winter time, I'm not going to get that much for it. So, um, but hopefully, I can hold out long enough that I don't have to fire sell it. You know, I want to. I want to try to get. You know, I, I should. I should at least list it. I should consider listing it here pretty soon. Uh, Super chat isn't working for me. Just to let you know, I've sent you a present on PayPal. Oh man, you're a sweetheart. I appreciate that. Here, let me see. Let me see if I'm logged in on my phone. It might require me to log back in again. Here, let me check. Let's see. Let's see if it'll log in here. You gonna, you gonna let me in? Let me in. Hold on here. Um. All right, it's gonna let me in. It's it's thinking about it. Hold on. It's making me jump. <laughs> I hate iPhone sometimes. It's like it's like it didn't know my password. Then I open up passwords to get my password. And then I go back after copying the password. And it's like, oh, hey, we found the password in your keychain. It's like, why didn't you find it before I had to open the app? Go find it and copy it. All right. Hold on. It's doing my little three factor authentication because I have to have a million factors of authentication now. All right. It's it's thinking. It's thinking. Oh, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate it. 20 bucks chin up dude you're awesome man you're freaking awesome i, I appreciate that so much dude here let's give you a roll. That, that means a lot uh, i'm gonna give half of that to my son for his birthday uh graham said are you still wearing a smartwatch to track your stats sadly i wasn't wearing it then i should have been it was on the charger if i had had the garmin watch on it would have recorded the entire thing including my not just my oxygen but also my rhythm um, that would have been really valuable, actually. I need to start wearing that thing all the time, 24-7 again. Uh, didn't realize it was hurting myself that badly. Oh, you stopped drinking two months ago now and your oxygen levels went way up? Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I don't drink anymore, period. I, I had to stop drinking because my liver is messed up. The doctor, the doctor said that my liver enzymes are like way up and it's actually concerning. They wanted to biopsy my liver. But that would have required like a total of like five visits at $250 or whatever copay per visit or 90 to $250 per visit, plus the copay for the imaging because they do the imaging separate from the visit so that they can double bill insurance and all that shit. And I was like, man, I don't have thousands of dollars to spend to biopsy my liver just so you can tell me that I need like some fucking expensive medication or some other thing I can't afford. Like, that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's like, it's like, yeah, I go to the doctor and get the x-rays that tell me that my SI joints are completely fucked up, but the treatment for them is $500 every three months to get injections. And I can't afford that. So, so it's like, what is the point of me going and getting the imaging done and spending the thousands of dollars to get the imaging done to confirm that what I already know is fucked up and broken and then not being able to afford it. Same thing with insurance. It's like, I have to pay $1,400 a month for insurance that I can't afford. And now I have no money for the co-pays to actually use the insurance. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it's it's good that it's there for like an emergency. Like if I'm dying and I need to go to the hospital like immediately and it's like a million dollar, I need a surgery that night or whatever. Like if I didn't have insurance, they would just let me die. Um, so it's good for that. But it's like you can't really use it to improve your quality of life unless you also have the resources in addition to that. So it's just stupid. Our medical system's really fucked up. The less money you have, the more acutely aware you are of it. Hey, Astario, thank you for the $10. So thank you for all the laughs you've given us over the years and the useful information. I appreciate that greatly, dude. He said, there's actually a new therapy called TMS therapy that was found to cure depression. It's really a new breakthrough. Much love. Ooh, I'll have to look into that. Dude, I'm all, I'm all for looking into new treatments. The problem is my insurance just sucks and like everything has like massive co-pays. You got to spend $6,000 in co-pays before they start picking up the whole tab. It's just, it's stupid. It, it should be illegal for insurance to be laid out the way it is, especially as profitable as they are. Like when you look at, insurance is like the second most profitable thing behind pharmaceuticals in the entire united states out of like every industry it's like how the, like obviously there's something fucked up when they're making that much money like it should be a thing where it's like they make money sure but it shouldn't be like 
such an obscene amount that there there's no way for anybody to benefit more from it than they pay into it. It just, I don't know. It's stupid. James said, as somebody with ADHD, I hate the stigma where everybody thinks you, you just can't focus or sit still. I wish it were only that ADHD sucks. A stigma where everybody thinks you just can't focus or sit still. I mean, I, I, I don't focus or sit still anytime, even, even medicated. I still, my, my leg's been hopping this entire time. I've been live streaming. I always have a leg or an arm moving or something. I have to move. If I stay perfectly still, it's very uncomfortable. People can think whatever they want though. Make app on the phone. If O2 drops, give alert and send text to wife, etc. Um, I'd have to see if I can do that with my Garmin watch, like the Apple watch might be able to do that, but I use a Garmin watch that, that has an onboard ox oxygen sensor, but you can, you can program apps for it. I should, and I did program like a watch face for it. I should see if there's an app I can program for it to do that email thing. Cause it does use the internet connection on the phone. So you can write an app that utilizes the internet connection. You just got to be careful. You have to write efficient code, though, because I don't want it. It has a battery and a solar charger that can go for like, you know, sometimes weeks without recharging. But if you write a shitty app, like I wrote a watch face that wasn't efficient at all. that had like an infinite loop in it and it ate the whole battery in like 24 hours. And I was like, well, that's not very great. Dave, I will. I'll tell Xander happy birthday for you and let him know. All right, guys, if you guys are cool with it, I think I'm going to go ahead and take off um and go and try to get some food oh here i want to make sure here i want to thank everybody else too i love scotch thank you for the five dollars and making us aware of the xz backdoor that was pretty crazy so if you use a tool called xz on linux you should probably go look there's a backdoor apparently that could allow somebody like complete remote access to your machine that you know you may not even be aware of as being exploited and it seems to be distribution agnostic just if you're using the latest version of the xz backdoor this this vulnerability has been in there for months uh retro my bits thank you for the five dollars and the happy birthday to Xander. Joe Taji, thank you for the 20 bucks. Said, hey, bud, been lurking. Hope you and the family have a great Easter. We will, brother. Thank you so much. I love Scotch. Thank you for the $5. Said, last weekend at SDF, saw Adrian Digital Business. Oh, yeah, I read that one earlier. Dude, that's awesome. I would I would love to go there. Um, uh, so, wait, SDF. What, is that uh, open sauce or is that something else? SDF, ICF. I'll have to look up what that is. I don't think I'm familiar with that event. And Historio, thank you for the ten dollars. I appreciate it, brother. Um, all right, I will. I will catch you guys later. I'm gonna try. We'll see. Because now I got the camera and the light set up. I finally got the monitors up on the desk. That about destroyed my back over the last couple of days and laid me up. Uh, but now that I've got this set up, I should be able to go live on Twitch now again. So hopefully tomorrow. It's going to be Easter, so probably not because it's Easter, but we'll see. I'll try, but Monday, definitely, I got to start streaming again on Twitch, even if I'm just dead. <laughs> like, like I just got to push the button. I just got to go, and I just got to face the music, and, and you know, I got to go out fighting. So um, so hopefully I'll see you guys on Monday. So I got I to gotta get back on that bike, no matter how scary it is. Uh, I love you guys' faces. Thank you for everything. You guys, you guys are absolutely amazing. Um. And it's been a hell of a fun ride with all of you. And I hope we get to continue it for some time more. But ultimately, the, the world's going to make that decision for me, sadly. But uh, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I'm going to try. I'm going to fight my ass off, though. Like, sometimes it might not look like it. But behind the scenes, I'm, I'm definitely push, pushing my limits. All right. Peace out, guys. I'll see you next time. Later. Oh, and happy Easter, by the way. Huge happy Easter. I'm not a huge religious guy, but... Uh, rabbits, candy, and boiled eggs. Sign me up. Love all of it. All of the above. <laughs> all right. See ya. Love you, Graham. Take it easy, brother. I hope that I hope that RTX 3070 is treating you well, brother. I'm glad that I was able to help you out with something for once. You've helped me out a lot over the years, and I'm glad I got to return the favor in some small, small amount.